Sorry, I'm running late. Um, my stream deck updated and decided that, like, fuck all of your settings. <laughs> We're just resetting them. So love that for me. I can't unmute or mute stuff manually now. Um, or I have to do it manually now. Whatever. Um, how are we doing? How's our Friday? Happy Friday, everybody. Um, Moonchild, no, my hair is the same yellow. It's just up because I didn't want to heat style it, so... Ooh, thank you, Lupine. Switching to live chat currently. No, please don't tell me that I'm super quiet. I don't need that. I don't need that in my life. <laughs> I am rejecting your reality. Ugh. All right, hold on. Um, okay, that's the correct microphone. I don't understand why my stream deck had to do this. Like, why? Why did you have to update and ruin all of my things? I did not need that. Okay. Let's try that. How's that? Is that better? It's probably an OBS thing. Yes. Thank you, Rowan. <laughs> R.I.P. Mickey. Yes. Uh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I have purse. <laughs> Ah, thank you. Oh, Christine, that's valid. I'm so sorry about the struggle bus. Um, okay, so is the audio in Discord fine or no? Okay, 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 okay. You guys can't hear me. Um, Miss Mothman, if you can't hear me, um, you can try leaving the Discord room and then coming back. Sometimes that fixes it. Um, <laughs> I know. Yeah, it's too late. It's still quiet. Okay, let me try to fix it again. I just don't want it to be all of a sudden, like, loud as fuck, you know? So, we'll try that. How's that? Testing, one, two, three. Okay, I'm glad the audio on Discord is fine, at least. So, it's not my microphone. Um, It seems like it's probably OBS and or my fucking stream deck, which is so rude. Yes, it should automatically update. Like, why are you not updating? Like, hello? I straight up don't have uh, the option to mute anymore. Yes, Eric, I am on live chat. 
the same? Oh my god. I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna lose my mind. Okay, hold on. Let me see what this is about. Um, I wonder if it's OBS that I have to close and reopen. It should fix itself though. Here, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's just like go ham. We're just gonna like turn this all the way up <laughs> and see what that looks like. And hopefully that will fix it. It says that my audio is like peaking. It looks like my audio is about to be in the red. So that should be fucking loud as shit. So let's see how that goes. If there's no difference on that, then like truly I don't know what to say because that's that's like fucking all the way up. Oh, I love it. I love that we didn't change anything. And somehow <laughs> stuff is all different. It's so cool and good. So cool and good. Oh, it is better. Okay. Well, that's good. Love that for me. No change for me, but it sounds fine. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, my God. <laughs> I hate it here. Um... <laughs> Nothing changed and everything's blown to shit. Yeah, that's literally always the issue. Oh, every stream ever. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. So cool and good, man. Yes, I want to replace that. Help me fix this, Elgato, you assholes. I love that my stuff just like stops working. They're like, you need to update your stream deck so that it works better. And then I'm like, fine, I'll update it. And then they're like, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no more fucking buttons for you. No more features. We know you spent money on this stupid thing. It doesn't work now. Uh, do, do, do. My first time catching you live. Uh, is it Miss Dave? Miss Dave? Thanks for coming. I'm glad you caught the live. <laughs> and the printer runs out of ink the morning the printer is due. I saw a meme like in college uh, that was like talking about printers and how, um, you know, if you need to print something on a, an important day that you can't, <laughs> you can't let your printer know because they can smell your fear. And like, <laughs> I never related to something more. It is the moon. Mercury is in retrograde. <laughs> Mark, yes, we did have memes. We had memes in high school and college. Um, yeah, Mercury is in retrograde, so I'm chalking it up to that. Like, with love, Mercury, eat my ass. <laughs> Leave me alone. I just want to be left alone <laughs> to mind my own business, that's all. But no, for sure, we should just remove the things that I use to fix this. I wonder if I could just download a new plugin, probably. Um, hello, happy Friday. Hi, Lenny. Hi, Courtney. Printeries are the printeries. Printers are the mercury of the office. My friend recommended me an astrology app where you can add people and see your signs that are compatible and stuff. Ooh, that's fun. Lupine, I like that. Excuse. Ooh. I feel like I need to sneeze. And I'm gonna try not to. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah, good call. If you want to receive a gifted membership, make sure that you have gifts turned on. Uh, the bot just shared the link for how to do that in the chat. So uh, make sure that you have that little toggle on. And if it doesn't work, then it's probably because your account is uh, like branded account, which YouTube doesn't let you receive stuff for. I don't know why. I don't make the rules. Um, hi, Mars Cap. <laughs> With love, Mercury, eat me booty shorts. <laughs> Olivia, if I could make booty shorts merch, I would, because that sounds really fun. Um, B -b -b, is it because both printers and horses enjoy breaking themselves to make our lives harder and more expensive? Listen, Natalie, I don't have any experience with horses, so I can't necessarily vouch for that, but I have a lot of experience with faulty technology that I can uh, assure you that's definitely the vibe. And thank you for the five gifted memberships. Thank you, friend. Okay, so Simi, uh, Nugget is Dizzy, Chelsea, Amanda Holmes, and Jamie Allen. Welcome. Welcome to the McNugs. You guys are one of us now. Thanks to Anne. Appreciate you. Thanks for the gifted memberships. I can't believe you beat Joe to the punch. 
Um, it do do do. Might need to do. Oh yeah, if Discord is having a time, you can try closing it for real, for real, and then coming back. Sometimes that helps too. Oh, you guys, I have to tell you, I'm tired. I'm eepies. <laughs> Eepy eepies. Uh, but it's fine. We're going to make it through today. I am really relieved that we're not doing bingo. I'm not even going to lie to you, which also update, by the way, if you didn't know, um, we are not doing bingo this week. We decided to suspend bingo for the like somewhat foreseeable future uh, because it's overwhelming. It's a lot. So me and the mods are taking a break from bingo. Um, we are just watching the show like normal this week. So if you want to hang out with us, then you can hang out with us. But we're not doing bingo. So uh, with love, thank you to everybody who's played. Obviously, bingo has been really fun. And we do want to come back to it. We are going to come back to it eventually. I think it just makes more sense for, first of all, a show that is easier to run bingo on, like Love is Blind. Um, but also that like doing it every week without fail, I think is maybe a bit much, you know? So um, I have a heating pad on my shoulder because it's still not getting better and it's making me nice and toasty and extra sleepy. Oh, I'm sorry about your shoulder, Lou, but I'm glad that you're... Um, taking care of yourself. Joseph, <laughs> thank you for the five gifted memberships, Joe. Leo, Catastrophe. I am pretty sure that's what your username is. Courtney, Fabian, Alexandra, um, and somebody else that flew by. Oh, no, I think that's it. Uh, welcome to the Big Nugs. Thanks, Joe, for the gifted memberships. I appreciate you, friend. Um, bingo is fun occasionally. Yes. Uh, breaks are lovely. I think so too, Captain Case. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, yeah. Uh, Moose, we talked about, <laughs> Moose, we talked about doing bingo for finale episodes or for reunion episodes. Um, we also talked about potentially doing bingo for, um, just like specific shows, depending on like what the vibes are. <laughs> Uh, but we'll see. I think especially for maths, it's hard because not everybody is familiar with it. And so we don't have as many easily predictable moments like we do with Love is Blind. Um, so it kind of turned into like me making the bingo card with like no input, which is really labor intensive because <laughs> um, it's not like you can just put, you know, like enough um squares on there for one bingo card because if you do that then everybody wins you know um and i can't have 200 people win bingo every week <laughs> i simply cannot afford so yeah it i think it just makes more sense for a show that is like you know more well known but uh absolutely lapine we're always flying by the seat of our gnts <laughs> yes mark exactly there's not enough tropes from week to week uh, we should watch The Circle next. I have actually only watched like half of one season of The Circle. I didn't just like it though. I, I did enjoy it a little bit. Oh my God. My chair got stuck on the stupid carpet in here. Um, do, 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 <laughs> insert, but no one, my brain, insert the opening song to The Lion King. You know, fair. That's valid. We do, do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love is Blind is definitely more predictable than Married at First Sight, I think. <laughs> I can't stop yawning. <laughs> Luckily, I have purse. I am such a menace, you guys. I'm sorry. It's just so fun to say. Like, it really is just very fun, and I enjoy it a lot. Um. Okay, that's rude. That, that won't let me put that there. All right, hold on. I'm going to actually try to fix this right quick because it's going to, like, really bother me. If I can't put this here. So let me see if it will let me choose. You know what? We're going to try something. Hold on. Hold, please. No, no, don't do that. Is the volume not working? Why is the volume not working? Why can I not hear anything? Hold on. I think it's because my thing is fucked. Oh, I'm going to be so mad. Okay, there we go. Is it working now? No. Oh, my God, you guys. We're going to have to actually fix this. All right. Hold on. Um, Because <laughs> my stream deck, when we closed out the last stream, I mute uh, everything so that I can disconnect the stream in peace. And my stream deck updated while uh, Firefox was muted. And it won't let me undo it. 
So <laughs> I can't unmute it now. So I have to figure out how to add that back. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So everybody just uh, amuse yourselves. <laughs> I know. <sighs> The vocal stims, uh, Lapine, the library of vocal stims is really off the charts at this point. Okay. Um, audio. Firefox. Okay. Thank you, Elgato. I don't need you to remind me. Oh my God. I don't need you to remind me that I have to not be on mobile every time. Okay. Like, with love, Elgato, your user interface is, like, really not the best. Um, <laughs> Kipper Lily Copper Kettle is such a good one, though. <laughs> Especially that it just devolved into, like, complete nonsense. Joe, thank you for the five more memberships. <laughs> Excellent timing, Joe. Good distraction. Okay. Um, let me see plugins. Here we go. I'm not on mobile, Elgato. I'm going to actually punch a hole through my computer if Elgato keeps doing this to me. Can you just let me look at the stream stuff? Okay, hold on. We're just going to close this since it's committed to showing it to you guys. Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes... I remember that I could just be like at home watching silly little cartoons and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> that's interesting, isn't it? <sighs> okay, audio controller. Yes, I've already signed into this account. I swear to God. Can you please just open this in the stream deck? Thank you very much. I know, Hexen, I feel that. Thank you. Taking you to the stream deck. Okay, let's see now. Can you please work? I don't understand why this is not working for Firefox and it's like actually making me mad. Okay, we are just gonna close this and this and this. I feel like it's probably not gonna actually count because I still have the stream open. Sorry, what? Not sure if you're aware. Um, Hold on, but we can see your screen. No, I know, Mark, yeah, I um moved it. Uh, pay no attention to the stream deck behind the curtain. Yes, exactly. Lapine! <laughs> Three months I'm beginning to show. Welcome! Or I guess not welcome, but thanks for being a McNug for three months, my friend. I appreciate you. Today's going so good so far. Like, so, so good. I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm having a great time, personally. Are you guys not enjoying yourselves? You don't love watching me troubleshoot stuff in real time? That's not your favorite? <laughs> uh, I've never heard of Elgato. This is very interesting <laughs> to me. <laughs> it's supposed to make my life easier. Um, and then they were like, mm -hmm, we're going to update this and uh, actually make your life like much more difficult. So, okay, let's see if I can just add like a fucking button because it won't let me add it to my fucking um dials for some reason so okay that's not the right one i truly do not understand like where this thing went wrong or why it just like won't let me mute firefox but like that's super cool <laughs> i know unfortunately my account is likely branded so i can't obtain a membership cobble i'm sorry i know you've had issues with that in the past it's very frustrating that it does that I don't know why it's this way. Okay. I don't want an OBS volume thing. All right. Let's try to unfuck this, I guess, a different way. If this takes me to mobile one more time, I'm going to lose it. Okay. Try putting that there. Can we put this here? No, no, not that one. You know, I would like to be uh, less annoyed about this than I am. I would, um, but I just don't foresee that in the cards for me today. I have to be honest. I'm being kind of a hater today and I'm fine with that. Okay, there we go. 
can we just not be annoying, please? Oh, this is the one that doesn't work no matter what. Okay. Let's see if that works. Excuse. Basically, everything's going right so far. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's going so good. <laughs> it's been so much fun so far. I'm loving this. Okay. Nope, still not working. I'm going to lose my fucking marbles. <laughs> Woo, that shit's so fucking annoying. God damn it. Fuck you, Elgato, for real. <laughs> I hope whoever's fucking job this is at Elgato skins their knee today. I really do. <laughs> because truly, go fuck yourselves. Ooh, that shit's so annoying. God damn it. That shit's irritating. Okay, volume mixer output device there is no reason for that to okay there is that that should be working <laughs> Ooh, elgato is a company okay there it's working christ alive that should not have been that difficult um <laughs> there's ever a day for nonsense it's friday that's fair mars cap okay i have fixed it jesus fucking christ <laughs> what a fucking nightmare and also a special fuck you to Elgato for updating my stream deck and making some of my plugins fucking unusable. Hi, Beth. Welcome to the McNugs. Thanks for joining. <laughs> no, no, not fucking sponsored. I don't think they would ever reach out to somebody with as small of a platform as me for a sponsorship. But if they do, the answer's fucking no. <laughs> because y'all are fucking irritating. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Eric. My membership baby is due. What <laughs> should I name it? Obviously, Frog. That's the only choice. Okay, let's see if this is working now. Mm? Is that the right one? Yes. Okay, great. Great, 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 great. Whoo. Wow, wow, wow. What, what a journey that was for us all. I'm going to have to figure out why that's all fucked up later. Um, hi, Christine. <laughs> I'm throwing a tantrum because my uh, volume wouldn't unmute itself and it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, consider a fuck you the equivalent of a shout out, honestly. <laughs> I'm gonna write them a strongly worded email after this stream is over. <laughs> okay, wow, what a fun time. Love it for us. All right, we're ready to watch the show at least, so that's fun. Ooh, I'm glad I figured that out before um, trying to press play later after all of our vamping. Um, let's try to unfuck the vibes, you know? <laughs> we all missed you and were upset. Yeah, that's what it was. We were all just swearing and punching the air because we were sad that you were gone. Hi, Patchouli. I'm not able to stay very long today. I'll be re-watching the replay later, but I'm happy I made it for at least a little bit. We're happy you made it too, Patchouli. Thanks for coming, friend. We appreciate you. Um... Do, do, do. Watching the Fallout TV series. Show me that no one looks cool taking off a jumpsuit. Okay, true. But also, what are our thoughts about the series? Try not to leave spoilers or anything, obviously. Um, but I have only seen the first episode because the gore stresses me. But Aaron has watched a lot of the episodes and he's been really enjoying it, actually. Yes, Fabian, exactly that. That's the vibe. Hi, Allie. No, you did not miss anything except for technical issues. Technical issues um yeah absolutely <laughs> scout it wouldn't be a stream day without first that mickey fights technology and the group derails everything uh entirely too accurate <sighs> joe dumb Ugh. is the gorgeous woman from yellow jackets in fallout i don't know i don't know what yellow jackets is so i don't know if i have i am the best person to answer that um do 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 hi danny thanks for coming mercury has been screwing me over all week <laughs> currently getting ready for the dentist because my crown came off evelinda that's awful i'm so sorry i hope that your dentist appointment is easy though hopefully that goes to plan 
my husband watched i have no interest valid alexandra yeah it's it's just the thing we talked about this with the horror movie stuff um but i struggle a lot with like not being affected by media and like gore especially it's like really a button for me uh, <laughs> if you don't like gore don't watch yellow jackets duly noted um i love the show but the gore is a lot i had to turn away at some points oh yeah yeah nero um lapine that's you right i swear to god i feel like i'm losing my mind i just saw your name change lapine i hope that's you because if it's not there's somebody on our mod team that's not meant to be um i was like why is there a wrench next to that person's name <laughs> okay okay <laughs> lapine i was like <laughs> oh no i can't deal with any more technical difficulties and also who are you <laughs> um i love horror movies just not interested in fallout that's valid oh they both mean black rabbit got it got it got it okay <laughs> i feel like i missed the gore there maybe my threshold is too high valid oh okay um let's see here if you don't like or don't watch monkey man but everyone else please watch it's so good all right that's fair enough also hi pterodactyl pie i didn't see you come in <laughs> thank you aaron uh i can't handle the visual gore but if it's like a podcast or a book oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i can't stop yelling oh my god it's because i didn't take adderall today i'm pretty sure new bingo square lapine slash nero gives mickey a fucking heart attack yes um i didn't announce it my one-year-old birthday as a mcnug oh shit mark did i miss yours i'm scrolling all the way back up hold on scrolling scrolling there's eric's um lapines full of trap you've been a member for seven months how bonkers that uh that was the last episode of fantasy high um okay that's joe gifting five memberships mark i didn't see it i'm sorry and i didn't see it where is it did i miss it i feel like i'm losing my mind oh 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 there it is <laughs> now i'm one year old <laughs> mark thanks for being a big nug for one whole month and congratulations on starting your fourth trimester my friend <laughs> um hello i snuck in <laughs> Do, do, do. I love that the mods are on Remind Mickey of Live Chat Duty. Yeah, always. Because I'll forget every time. Oh, thank you. Turn off your pie. Oh, my gosh. My tattoo is new. I was going to show you guys, and then I forgot because my uh, technological issues. Look it. I got tattooed yesterday. It's kind of hard to see. Isn't it so cute? We love her. It does fucking hurt, though. I won't lie to you. <laughs> She's a wee bit sore. But it's fine, you know? Thank you. Um, Fallout isn't horror at all. It's a silly video game antics just with gore. Yeah, that's the thing. Is it's not like a horror movie. It's just, like, very gory. I know it's so good, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um joe uh, thank you for the five more memberships renee hannah banana olivia danny b and erica and pterodactyl pie welcome my friends welcome to the big nugs thank you to joe natalie thank you for the 6.99 i have to share my pride this week i found all my horse's bones studying anatomy and equine massage just learning very happy i was like found them where natalie <laughs> congratulations though my friend i'm happy for you <laughs> um if anyone hears from facts tell them i said i gotta go okay spongebob square pants we'll tell them um uh, thank you baby and i can't stop yawning and it's going to kill me um but i feel like when a tattoo just like fits it's like a good sign you know like when you don't really notice it it feels like that's a good sign about it just being thematically um consistent you know have you watched bottoms would you consider it gory i have not leo i don't know what bottoms is i think i feel like y'all have recommended that show to me more than once um let me think shows that i have struggled with are like mostly anything on amazon so like the boys couldn't do it 
Um, Gen V, I did like okay with. Um, obviously, Fallout, I struggled with. Lapine, thank you for the five <laughs> gifted memberships. Rachel, Little E, Michelle, Hunter, and Natty. You guys got uh, memberships. Welcome, my friends, to the McNugs. The tap placement is great. Thank you. I think so, too. I am meaning to do a um, tattoo tour on Discord, Patreon, whatever, eventually. But I want to finish my sleep because all of this, like, this obviously is, like, the actual tattoo stuff. And then we have more that we're going to add. But after we get all the imagery done, then we're going to black out the background. So it will be, like, the inverse of this tattoo. So they'll be sort of, like, complementary and opposite in ways if that makes sense um so i want to wait until it's all done because it's not i mean it's a whip you know it's beautiful but it's a whip and i feel strongly um about <laughs> doing a tattoo tour once it's all done bottoms is a movie oh okay got it yeah i don't think i've ever heard of that <gasps> christine uh, you booked an appointment to start your second sleeve i'm so excited for you when it's the um when's the appointment christine uh do, 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 do. thank you mark don't forget to like the stream you guys one of these days i'll have enough energy to get my next tattoo alexandra that's very fair uh. <laughs> y'all we're never gonna make it through stream if i can't stop yawning joe thank you for the five more memberships uh aaron stanley zara andrews um andrews i don't know why i said it like that uh, Mago Del Rio, Prairie Artemis, Minxie Pixels. I think that's it. Welcome to the McNugs. <laughs> Thanks for coming, you guys. And thank you, Joe, for our uh, gifted members. We're growing our little family. Um, someday I'll get my second sleeve. I've been sitting on a rabbit themed sleeve for so long. And I think that it's one I could live with forever. Yes. Uh, Lupine, I relate to that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, thank you, Joseph the Generous. <laughs> Are we still watching maths? Yes. Um, I had to go feed animals and I just see Mickey stream up on Discord and not the show window. Oh. Oh, because I closed it. That's why. Sorry, maybe. Because I was trying to un uh fuck some stuff, so there it is. I fixed it. Um we are indeed watching maths though, just without the bingo half of the equation. Yeah, don't forget to hydrate. I did mean to fill my water bottle before we started. And I did not. So it's only half full. What can you do? Y'all, my hair is so frizzy back here. <laughs> we are really having a time. Every time my membership expires, I get gifted a new one. <laughs> okay, little E, I love that though. Uh, Aria's like, go fill it. No, it's okay. It's all the way downstairs. And I don't want to walk downstairs. Do you want to take a moment to fill it? Y'all are very nice to me, but also I feel like we overestimate my, um, <laughs> I was going to say something fucked up, like my, uh, motivation. <laughs> Thank you, Aria. We can use it as a bio break before we get started. Oi, I probably should fill it, honestly. What time is it? <laughs> Okay, we've been streaming for 40 minutes. Honestly, just entertain yourselves for two minutes. I'm not even going to put the BRB on. I'm just going to leave it and I'll be right back. Like literally right back. <laughs> hey, I've been listening to old pods because I'm three episodes behind and I'm at work. I'm allowed to listen to pods while working as long as I watch the dogs. Ooh, Shadow and Maximus. That sounds like a sweet gig. But also, thanks for watching the pod, friend. Uh, okay, I'm going to go get water. I'm literally just going to leave you guys for like two minutes maximum i am gonna put you on the brb though because that just feels rude to leave you with the camera <laughs> no i'm not going piss girl i'm just getting water i'm just getting water girl okay we are back
Hello. Ooh. Uh, I'm out of breath from running up and down the stairs. It did take me slightly longer than two minutes, to be fair, but it's because I made myself a coffee. Behold. The lifeblood of Snod. The church would cease to function without it. I like to put a little lime juice in water with ice. That sounds so good, little E. Um, Jade, there is no bingo for today. We are just watching the show um, like normal. I know, Christine. Microdosing today because I forgot my Adderall. Um, do do do. <laughs> Snay men. <laughs> No, Joe, <laughs> I was fucking around. It is our communion wine. I saw a TikTok a while ago of somebody saying, like, what would your, like, body and blood be? Uh, you know how the Catholic Church does communion? And the body and blood of Christ, they make you eat your little cracker and, and drink wine. Um, and I feel like ours would be chicken nuggets and coffee or soup. <laughs> soup, probably. Yeah, chicken nuggets and soup. Um, or alternatively soup and coffee, depending on, uh, your thoughts. I heard a serious tag after Mickey, what? <laughs> after Mickey said the snitch would cease to function. No, that's not how tags work. <laughs> Mark, I wish your name was longer, Mark, because I feel like, like when you have to like tell someone like instead of Tim, you call him Timothy, you know, but like Markethy just like doesn't really have the same ring to it. <laughs> um, why not all of them? That's true. Uh, Lou, that's an excellent point, is that it could just be all of them. <laughs> Soup is both the body and blood of snot. <laughs> I date him. I'll take this soup. No coffee for me. Okay, maybe that's what it is, right? Is that we just have different options for the body and blood of Christ to suit many dietary needs. <laughs> so for some people, the coffee is sufficient as the blood of snot, but for other people, soup is a, a, a acceptable alternative. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Hold on, I missed it. A little E. Let me scroll back up. Um, mini cheeseburger and margarita. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, oops, ouch. The body and blood. <laughs> Nice. Is a Capri Sun in a Lunchable? You know, Marcus. Actually, Joe. Yes, that's very um, adept. I should probably just go with that. <laughs> Aaron, yes, the Church of Snod is in, an incredibly inclusive place. We're accepting of all uh, walks of life. <laughs> Soup is the body and the blood, yes. Please don't call me Marcus. <laughs> okay, taking it back. <laughs> We're sucking those words back into our mouth. Nobody ever call Mark Marcus again. <laughs> or we'll have words. <laughs> Mark's defer is pretty funny. Travis, I won't lie. Uh, yeah, Mark's defer is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, I think coffee is a soup. That's definitely true. Oh, Tatum, we're just joking. Um, the Discord memes a lot about our love for snails being a church. Um, and so we make funny little jokes <laughs> about um appropriating things from the catholic church because you know fuck organized religion <laughs> um yes <laughs> the snurch of snod says trans rights a cap free palestine free the congo fuck the patriarchy among other things <laughs> absolutely yes Oh, Patchouli said, I watched a video earlier this morning about how eating snails or slugs can give you a life-threatening parasite. Yeah, Patchouli, because that's, uh, uh, <laughs> I was going to say sacrificial, sacrilegious act. It's Nod's way of punishing you. <laughs> work is crazy. I am back again. Oh, Allie, I'm sorry. Work is wild. I hope that it quits being that way soon. Don't they know that it's Friday? That it is the day of fuckery? Mm -mm -mm. cost of living and I got a job offer I couldn't refuse oh did you move hold on let me go back up uh do 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 I miss living on the west coast oh my plants thrived oh okay you know that's totally valid <laughs> but patchouli am I wrong am I wrong <laughs> oh no the sushi places are closed to be fair it is kind of early though 
Um, homie one Kenobi, you got a job. Oh, congratulations, Fred. I'm excited for you. I hope it's one that you enjoy or that at least values you. I thought my last Nearite snail died, but it turns out they were just lonely and they reappeared in the fish tank when I put new ones in. Wait, that's so cute, little E. I love that. What are we creating a poll about in Discord? <laughs> Wait, Markopheles is so good. Markolomew. I love all of these. I love all of these. They're all so good. Markolomew is my favorite. <laughs> Markolomew it is. Next week I get to road trip. I love a good road trip. And that's so fun. Aaron and I love road trips. Road trips are a vibe. Yes, Tatum. Friday for fuckery. Exactly. It's Friday fuckery day. We're here to fuck off. <laughs> There's no serious vibes happening. I already harshed the vibe complaining about <laughs> my technological difficulties uh, this morning. So moving forward, today is a day for silliness only. Hi, Raspberry. We're just vamping, hanging out. Took several hours to look for a job that would be interested in, and there was literally nothing. Oh, Emma, heartbreaking. I know that feeling, my friend, and I'm very sorry. We new boot goofing. Yeah, exactly. New boot goofing. <laughs> Captain Casey, yeah. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Um, I have way too busy of a day ahead of me to leave for my birthday vacay tomorrow. And of course, I left way too much for the last minute. Wish me luck. Oh, Jess, I'm wishing you all of the luck. And also, like, I see you. That's always me. People, like, judge Aaron and I because we don't pack our stuff for, like, trips and stuff until, like, literally the day before. And, like, I just don't understand, like, how are you guys packing your stuff, like, days and days in advance? Like, first of all, I need most of that shit. I don't have duplicates of all my stuff. Like, um, but also, like, I have stuff to do. Like, there's so many things going on pre-trip that, like, sitting down to pack a suitcase until, like, the last minute, basically, is just, like, not a realistic expectation for me. <laughs> so, I see you. I... Personally, I'm kind of that way. Yes, exactly. Uh, Captain KCDS said, plus, I don't know what me will be on the trip. And like, I've never related to something more, especially as a gender fluid person. I'm like, I don't know. I need like three outfit options for every day. Because what if I spend the whole time feeling mask or if I spend the whole time feeling femme or I spend the whole time with like doing a mix of those things? I don't know. Like I need options. I need options. And like it really depends on how I'm feeling. And like what about the weather? Like, yes, I always overpack, Jade. Yeah, the prepacking thing is so confusing to me. I don't understand how people do that. Mmm. Spam musubi is so good, Alexandra. Also, this hair is driving me nuts. Um, I'm a carry on girly. <laughs> it's a sickness. Allie, I don't like how. Also, to be fair, though, I think part of this equation is that because I'm a plus size person, my clothes are just bigger, right? So like me trying to fit stuff into a carry on is just like, that's not happening. <laughs> I will not be able to fit nearly enough stuff in there because, um, I overpack as we already established, but also because my clothes take up a lot of more space. I just don't travel for more days than I can carry. I used to be that way, but I mean, you know, first of all, uh, as I've gotten fatter, my clothes have gotten bigger, um, less and less fits in a suitcase, but also my body hurts more. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Um, I can't eat it because I can't eat seaweed. Oh, that's sad. Uh, Alexandra, I'm sorry. I always marvel at how much room men's boxers take up in a suitcase. <laughs> so much fabric. Yes, Allie. A hundred percent. Also, too, the idea of like folding underwear in a suitcase could not be me. I know. I know that this makes me annoying and kind of a gremlin, but I just shove them in there in handfuls <laughs> because like I don't want to fold my undies. That's so much work. What do I look like? Like I'm in the military or something? Yeah, for packing or for the dresser. Yes, yeah, neither. Okay, thank you, Mark. Folding underwear in a suitcase is wasted time. I feel so seen by this. <laughs> I'm a diehard carry-on only girly, but to be honest, it's mostly if it's under eight hours, uh, it's a drive. <laughs> okay, fair, Olivia. Especially in the U.S. too, when like, like living on the West Coast is easier because our highways are just like super, like they cut right through a state, you know, so it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> Allie? Yeah, I think we are. I think we are a community of undie crammers. <laughs> Ooh, that's really funny. 
<sighs> when I stay with my parents while my husband is deployed, I legit just grab a handful of shirts, give me some other shit, and cram that shit into a bag. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. As you should. <laughs> Snundies. <laughs> Ew. That's terrible. It ends up getting unfolded anyways. Yes, when the luggage moves around. Absolutely, Courtney. And also, like, putting stuff back, it's just, like, it's not going to work. Because I also am, like, particular. Like, I have a thought process for getting dressed every day. So I, like, pull out a bunch of stuff to, like, figure out what's, like, getting worn with what, you know? And so by the time I have actually chosen an outfit, I've basically completely unpacked my entire suitcase because like I always it's always like, oh, you need stuff at the bottom, you know, and like now all my stuff's everywhere. So (laughs) I'm not not fucking wasting my own time. I roll my clothes when I pack them. I feel like that's a nice compromise, Rowan. Like I can appreciate that. Um, I have a different fold technique for different types of underwear. Really, Caroline? I feel like I would grow so frustrated by that, like, so quickly. I admire your tenacity. <laughs> Absolutely an undie crammer. Oh, I saw someone on a parenting group ask how people fold little boy briefs, and I was like, uh, <laughs> like everyone's underwear chore is it just a sea of unmatched socks and inside-out undies. I mean, yes, <laughs> it should be. that's really funny i have sensory issues so i try on multiple things and then i change my mind baby and yes especially when you have like a go-to like i i do this with socks where for a while i'll have a go-to pair of socks and sometimes you try them on and you're like oh (laughs) these are not it today and so then you have to take them off and put on a different pair and it's just like a whole thing it's very um time consuming the process this is, this is also why I can't be bothered to fold anything because I know that I'm going to waste my own time by trying everything on. So I have to save time somewhere, you know. I got a cool waffle organizer for my undies so they each have their own little cubby and I can grab them in the drawer. <laughs> that's really smart, Allie. That's actually a really good idea. I should do that. I'm not going to, but that's a good idea. <laughs> um, I'm really particular with folding. Like, if you've seen how to fold Instagram posts. Um, oh, shit. Hold on. It just flew away. I'm whack into that. <laughs> I try everything on and then refold. So my life is very hard. Monkey, that is such a commitment. And I admire that. <laughs> I really do. I kind of keep random underwear in places just in case of emergency. <laughs> okay, Jade. I kind of relate to that, though. Also, like, what activities are we doing on the trip? Yes, that matters. Hiking underwear is not the same as, like, lounging underwear. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a universal truth. Okay, are we ready to watch this show? We've been vamping for, like, an hour. To be fair, a fair amount of that was me swearing at my technology, but... um, I have one brand of socks I'll wear now. I should really get rid of the rest. (laughs) Shenanigan, I'm kind of that way where most of my socks are one brand but some of them are like for different things like i have short little like little kids sneakers and the socks that i'm most comfortable wearing are too high and like too bulky for those so i have like thin little baby socks for those shoes so i have like specific uh (laughs) specific socks hex and moon i don't think there are specific hiking I mean, i'm sure there is hiking underwear for people who are like super into hiking um but what i mean is that like if i know i'm gonna be like exercising then i'm not wearing underwear that's like meant to be cute but not the most comfortable you know um there's like a thought process for me from a sensory perspective of like what is going to be most annoying to me uh and <laughs> which is gonna be like the most comfortable for me uh y'all should see the way i'm sitting right now <laughs> why autistic frog are you doing something strange i knit and crochet so i've been eyeing getting one of those projects but double duty wait what are we talking about knitting and crocheting stuff in the discord because that sounds fun please show time <laughs> okay yes <laughs> all right all right all right all right um i have to go to this meeting now i'll be back in 30 to 60 minutes depending on how many fires there are to put out joe i am wishing you the no fires to put out energy for your meeting uh thanks for hanging out with us <laughs> Undies that are absorbent will prevent chub rub is my go-to for hiking. Yes, little E. That's a good call. Okay. <laughs> X and Moon's like, I was like, what? Yeah, I don't think they make them specifically for that. I mean, they might, but. Okay. Now that I'm going to sneeze. um, We are watching episodes four and five today. I'm trying so hard not to sneeze on stream. 
Uh, we're starting this episode at zero minutes and zero seconds, but we'll likely fast forward. So, uh, oh, also, <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys your feedback about this. I recently, in taking my continued education courses for my license, I, um, first of all, I took a course about uh, neurodivergent neurobiology that was very interesting and I loved it, except that they wouldn't allow me to watch the course at two times speed like I normally do. Um, which was hateful. So I downloaded a browser extension um, <laughs> that speeds up video for like when you don't have the option on the source material. So how do we feel about me speeding the playback of this up? That means that those of you who are trying to sync your devices at home, that your time is going to be off because mine will be playing faster than yours. Well, unless you want to download the browser extension too, you could do that. But um, how do we feel about that? Are we okay with that? because like it's my preference to speed it up but if y'all have like really strong feelings about it then we won't obviously um who's talking about crocheting i just made the cutest little octopus oh low battery lifestyle that's so fun emma said speed it up <laughs> okay that's one two three yeah that's a couple of votes for speeding the playback up do 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 give me speed hell yeah uh zoom through it speed it up okay <laughs> bed uh we're gonna watch it at 1.3 to start with and we'll see what that is like if it's too fast let me know if we feel overwhelmed then i can slow it down or if it's too slow let me know i can speed it up so okay we're starting at zero minutes zero seconds uh on episode four of season 16 pressing play in three two one Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Ten courageous singles took a daring leap of faith in order to find their happily ever after. They married okay. as complete strangers. We Last time, our couple recap. shared... The we're skipping it. Okay, we're at one minute and 43 seconds, and it also reset the speed. I knew it was going to do this. Okay, one minute and 43 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. And tonight, our honeymooning couples continue to grow closer. I will not have sex with you on the pool. I'm a gentleman. What else do you want to know about me? What's your favorite sexual position? Am I your dream wife? Ooh. So far. <laughs> do you love me yet? <laughs> I've never been in love. He could possibly not fall in love with me either. And that's scary. Are you ever afraid to kiss me? I don't really vibe with redheads or like gingery features. Mm -hmm. And not to say you're unattractive, it's just that's what you are. This is Married at First Sight. The intro music sped up is way more of a vibe. Oh, they're going to Jamaica. Our first night together on our honeymoon. So far, so good. Slept great. He snored all night. Okay. I don't snore. First coconuts freshly chopped off the tree and cheers. Cheers. I don't even know how to. I brought a purse, a bathing suit cover up, I have our koozies. I've got sunglasses. This might fit you. This is, Wait, is this like a magician's hat? <laughs> How do you have so much gear in there? It's day one of the honeymoon. Has and while most of our couples are purse? waking up in paradise, one couple is still making their way to Jamaica. We are in Jackson. We are leaving finally, the, the research cation. The research cation. And finally headed to Jamaica. How did your research cation go? It was great. I'm glad I'm here to support you. Thank you. Our hope for all the couples is that they'll use this time away like from the distractions of everyday life me? to continue to bond and get an... Hold on. We're just going to check something. Did we watch... Like, did we skip an episode or something? Am I losing it? Because I feel like we watched the whole... Oh, did we just, like, skip the end of this episode? My crazy <laughs> slumber. Yeah. Wherever he left. My dogs like. Did we not watch this last time? Am I losing it? Can somebody please remind me what the hell is happening? It does feel like there's something. Yeah, okay, thank you, Hattie. I feel so validated. <laughs> um, this is already a lot. <laughs> yes. What's happening? I feel like. I've never watched the show, and just based on the intro, I feel like that's the right choice for me. I need commentary from wonderful people. <laughs> uh, little E, that's very valid. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, I don't think we did because I remember thinking last week, oh, I guess we are done. What? I just ended the stream last week before we finished the episode? What's wrong with me? Hello? <laughs> that's so weird. Why did we skip this? 
I'm so confused. And a bunch of men said creepy misogynistic things. In your defense, it was a long ass dream. Okay, thank you. We watched this part. That's what I thought, Cass. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, Jess, there's normally like a brunch and like a whole like after the wedding situation. Um, it was something like that, but I'm not sure. Oh, it was, you're right. It was two weeks ago. Yeah. That's why I'm so confused. Okay. 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 All right. We're, I guess we're just going to start with this then. I'm going to rewind by 20 seconds. Um, I guess we didn't watch this. Now I'm about to go and watch my own playback to be like, Mickey, what is wrong with you? Um, yeah. Cause we just chatted last week. I feel like we watched this. But we're going to, um, it's at 1.3 speed. I'm going to put it at 1.4 just so we can kind of zoom through this. All right. We're at one hour, 17 minutes and 53 seconds of episode three because apparently we didn't watch this last time. I don't know. We're going to press play on this and see what happens. Uh, pressing play in three, two, one. We get ready for bed now. I think so, yeah. Thinking of beds, I was very curious. Do you let your dog sleep in your bed? So he has the freedom to sleep wherever he likes. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, I sleep with the bedroom this. door open, so sometimes he sleeps on my face or chest. Sometimes he <laughs> sleeps in the living room. Sometimes he sleeps in his crate. I do the same with my dogs. Like, usually Coda sleeps on my left side. Has to be my left side. What side of the bed do you sleep on? I sleep kind of on the right side. Ooh. I can switch. It's all good. He still has to be on my left side, so he'll try to get over okay. there. But I have a king-size bed. It's huge. So. Okay, that's good. But I just wanted to get that view because I know everybody's a little different. Yeah. And sure. my dogs shed a lot, so curious. But again, it's a habit that I was willing to break for you. So. <laughs> that is so sweet. So, but I think you're gonna love them, and I'm excited for you to meet them. I know. Hi, I'm Katie. That yeah, our it dog is. Family. I know. I got it done yesterday. <laughs> Talking about our dogs really yeah. got you excited. <laughs> no, I just want to kiss you. Oh. Okay. I'm a stranger today, noises. and now I'm just like getting ready to go in bed with him, and, like do some kisses and snuggle. But I'm excited because I get to wake up next to him too. I mean, can you please unzip my dress? Yes. The slow mo shots of them on the dresses makes me so happy. I feel like we watched this last week. She's awesome to kiss. Like, it's just, it feels really natural. She's got like a really awesome personality for sure, which, you know, sometimes with someone that's very beautiful, you don't fully expect to have the personality to match it as well. So just looking forward to like yeah, kind of building yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, on. thank you. Hi, hubby. Okay, yes, yeah. Hey, yeah. And then she has like so little natural. matchy pajamas. Hush. Oh, I'm so annoyed that my mute button doesn't work because I have to do it manually now. I'm so getting used to this. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> also, can I just say that I would lose it if someone just. This is not the wedding day I always imagined, around. but this is more perfect than I could have I mean, ever that is kind so of the whole. I'm thrilled you were at the other end of that aisle, and then I get tattoo. to cuddle you and kiss you. Okay, I don't. We don't need the music. I saw falling in love with him. Period. I, I can see it. This is the start of my lifelong love story. How many B-roll shots of them going to bed do we need? Like this season on Married at First Sight. Okay, yes, yeah, that's it. So good, I'm about to blow. Oh, it. Literally, it's just the recap or the preview. Okay, hold on. Literally minding my own business. What you literally You should be done. Yeah, that's it. Okay, I feel so bad. <laughs> because what the hell was that? Hold on, we're just gonna exploratory. Mission. I really want her. So tonight we sail on the deal. Um, no. Oops. The time frame on. Oh. Is this is smooth. And tonight, our husbands and wives okay. will meet with their brand new spouses, family, oh. and friends. You think he's hot? I think he's hot. Yeah. Did you In show order to learn the... more about I'm the person so they just married Were before heading the off episode? on their honeymoon. Why did you want to marry a stranger? Oh, I'm warm in here. Are you truly done with that situation? You see that it just isn't working out for you guys. Don't drag it out. I'm in this for the right reasons. And you can tell me anything you want. I just be louder than one. Oh boy. He is a nice guy. So I know. Maybe we are. accidentally hit. Oh, we got a gift. What is it? Tomorrow you'll be heading to Point Luca, Jamaica. Oh, nice. We are not. Okay, we must have just hit the wrong Taiwan. episode. What? This is Married at First Sight. 
I guess we just hit the wrong yeah, things are looking up. Oh, I could touch that. So bizarre, but whatever. Okay, yeah. First night as a married couple. We're gonna like rock. After a long day of celebrating with their friends and family, our newlyweds finally have some alone time together. Okay, hold on. Yeah, I guess we just hit <laughs> the wrong episode. Um, we're watching episode... Oh, I'm like, what episode is this even? Hold on. Episode four. Oh, yeah, we were on episode five. That's so bizarre. Okay. Uh, so we were officially watching episode four long now. Time together. We're at two minutes and 55 seconds. I am going to put it at 1.3 speed again um because you guys voted on that and i feel strongly about it so um does the control m work to mute the tab maybe the thing is that because i click back and forth uh between things sometimes it'll be the wrong tab um so it's like variable but we'll see um do 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 okay i love the yellow in your hair thank you tatum uh, ba -ba -ba. I hate the music though. <laughs> Same, Maddie. Um, no, Astro Girl. It just it was at one point one point three speed, um, but then when we switched episodes, it went away. So it's at one point three speed, which is the same. So, uh, all right, that's it. Let's keep going. We're at two minutes and fifty five seconds on episode four of season sixteen. Pressing play in three, two, one. We're hubby and wifey. Hubby and wifey. We're dead tired. Dead tired. Today was really everything I imagined it to be. We're here. We made it. We made it. While sex may be at the top of mind for most couples on their wedding night, Carried over for the our threshold. couples who just met hours ago and are still practically strangers, it's a little more confusing. Well, we, well, you gotta hold your dress. We're holding hands, though. However, they are husband and wife. So if sparks are igniting, it's their call. I hate that they clarify that as marriage. if it would ever not Thank be you. that. Like... In what world would it ever be okay for the experts to speak definitively about somebody else's sexual activity? It's such a weird thing to say. Okay, you. I'm glad the night is ending. I mean, I had a great time. Like, this has been a very joyful moment. For us. Uh, yeah, for us, for our families. Like, it was everything. Yeah, it's definitely been like, the day I've always imagined. Like, Hi, Allie. This was the couple picture. that was, was worried like, about baldness. When you walk down the aisle, Describe. I was speechless. Like, let's make it work. Like, I'm, I'm coming in wanting it to work. It's a lot. And As opposed to wanting to fail? looking for it to making it work. Why you, why you do that? Why you just, what was that? Because I'm just taking it all in. Like, it is a lot. Like, I want to continue to get to know you. I want to know things that you love or what makes you sad. We still have to get to know each other. I agree. Oh, bye, Amanda. So... We're definitely gonna do that. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Ready to Can I have a kiss. <laughs> I gotta wait. You have to wait. Huh? Yes, you have to wait. I respect you. Okay, thank you. Let's get me undressed so I can get in the shower. Yeah. Can you help me please? That was really Thank you so much. You're welcome. I still want to ease into things. Um, I know sometimes like a kiss can make someone want to do something else that's intimate, maybe sex. I don't know what else it will lead to, but well, in the purity culture, I don't want us to happening. get into that and get sidetracked from getting to know each other. But I mean, we have to have the chemistry and the emotional connection. He has to get to know me. I understand. Thank you. It's not, it's not my experience. Hold on, let's be clear. Um, I think it's very valid to say like, I'm not comfortable with you because like they literally just met each other, right? Um, but I do think it's important to acknowledge the seemingly competing statements that are happening here, the conflicting statements that are happening here, which is that she said up to now, she has been avoiding kissing him because he didn't ask. And then he asks and she says no, right? Which again, like that's totally valid and fine. But I do wonder to what degree there is just a like, mismatch here in regards to like attraction or um interest you know for them and i i don't know that that bodes well like this show is kind of formulaic sometimes in the way that like when folks don't have a comfortability off the bat usually that doesn't lead anywhere good um you don't have to kiss someone that you don't want to but she's still committing the slippery slope fallacy yeah cobble jen a little bit um which again, like, it's not about 
that being bad necessarily, but I think it is also helpful in relationships to just be more transparent about the actual reason that we're saying no to something like that, right? Um, if she is genuinely not attracted to him or she doesn't like his breath or, you know, she just feels uncomfortable or, you know, whatever, like say that, you know, rather than saying, oh, well, it was because of this. And then that thing happens and you're like, well, well, now it's something different, you know, <laughs> like a transparency and an openness about the real reason that you're choosing to put that boundary in place is so much more effective and helpful. You know, it also helps people to understand each other. Um, the most relatable part of this whole thing so far is the cleaning up the petals montage. Okay, we talked about that earlier. I just said something like offhandedly about it earlier. The couple that just like threw them on the floor, like I'm a messy person, but could not be me. I would be so stressed. Like, no, because even if I'm not the one to clean that up, like someone has to clean that and that feels rude. I'm going to scoop them and put them in a little box or something. I don't know. Raspberry, yes, kissing on camera could be super uncomfortable, which again is super valid. But I think, again, it would just be more helpful um, for the folks that are actually in relationships to be like transparent about that. You know, like I'm just not comfortable yet. And like, that's fine. Just say that, you know. A grackle just hopped into my middle of the duck loaf circle. <laughs> what? I'm assuming you mean like a bird, right, Natalie? Okay, let's keep going. Uh, six minutes, one second, pressing play in three, two, one. Patient that we will possibly have sex. And I'm okay with that. The moment we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Because I respect the way boundaries. that I could never sleep in a row. And we're married, but we're still strangers. Oh. I, even alone. I forgot to turn off the light. Oh, okay. I'm already asleep. <laughs> but also, as if they don't have camera crew in there, like, okay. Okay, here we go. No, I don't know. You pinky swear. I don't know. This I don't think. Have you ever been told that you snore? Maybe, like, an occasional. Okay. I'm more Like a drunken snore? Or a, snick, a sick snore? Yeah, maybe. Really quick, Dominique is the one whose mom signed her up for the show, and McKinley is the one who talked about his ex just, like, getting engaged while they were still in a relationship and leaving him. Uh, okay, six minutes, 49 seconds, pressing play in three, two, one. Maybe. I'm more notorious for talking in my sleep. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about, do you snore? No. Um, I do, like, toss and turn a little bit, though. But I, I, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm I did bring my body pillow. Night. You have a body pillow. <laughs> Is this, like, our divider? It's just, like, there. To snuggle. Maybe. Well, what else is it there for? I mean, like, right. what do you use it for? <laughs> I typically like put it between my knees. Okay, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? What okay, is it there so for? I gotta get out of the stress. Are you ready to? Do you need assistance? Please. Yeah. Oh boy. Another slow mo shot. If you just like get it down a couple, I think I'll be okay. This last one. Here you go. I just would like oh, to good. note that I'm they excited. never do this for the men. Oh, quick. Wonderful. There's never an invasive slow mo shot of the men getting undressed. I'm very attracted to my wife. I think she's incredibly gorgeous, sexy, very satisfied with not only her, her physical appearance, but you know we've had the time to chat. Satisfied. And, uh, there's more than that already. So I'm just excited to pick her As ear on certain committee. things and be a gentleman. See what happens. The fuck? Is it crazy that I'm not really nervous? <laughs> there's a glimmer in your brown eye. Yeah. You know, I'm not just gonna gross. like force anything or rush anything. I'm more so just like go with the flow. So we'll see what happens. Where's the body pillow? Oh, OK, you got it over there. <laughs> well, we made it through today. We did. Um, we got the body pillow. We'll see. You know, sure. I'm a cuddler, but we can have the body pillow and uh, you know, take our time and see where it goes. OK. Oh, Emma, I'm I'll get so the sorry. Uh, I'll get them. I got okay, them. I got okay, the light. OK, OK. We'll see you in the morning. OK. It feels right, so really awkward that they <laughs> film all of this. I know the way the men talk in the show gives me the ick too. We got the sun stuck in the days. You got this car, let's get away, let's get okay. away. Thanks, it isn't pretty nervous. Yeah. Feeling a lot better now. Oh, I'm, I'm at peace now. I'm good. Cool. But you was happy with how everything turned out. Yeah, it was, it was worth it. It was worth, it, was worth it. it. You know. Also, body I'm pillows are just cozy, Alexandra. Thank you for the experts. Thank you for you. you know, today was definitely a day to remember. Yeah. Oh. It's late, and it is. I'm going to need you to unbutton me because it's a lot Natalie, of Natalie, it's okay, so I need it. Again, the invasive, very, shots. I know her dress is really pretty. Oh, thanks. 
All right, you know. ready to go. Okay, thank you. I'm attracted to my husband. I feel like my husband is attracted to me. So I feel like we have very good chemistry, but. It definitely feels very vulnerable to take all my makeup off, put my hair up, be in pajamas. The only way he saw me is like done up, looking like a Barbie basically. So it's a little nerve wracking to strip all of this down and for him to see me, you know, in my natural state. I'm excited, you know, I'm just looking forward to my first night landing in bed with my wife. I mean, last night that I woke so up solo. Cold. Tonight, you know, I have a wife to lay next to. Do your makeup. But I'm tired. I'm, I'm honestly just been a long night. Dress. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that she's tired as well. And she just really wants to lay down. Um, but you know, if she has other plans. I guess I can muster up some energy. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody leave. I just don't like the way that they even wear. You like my evening wear? I know the pedals. It stresses me that they're just on the bed. How's the first cuddle feel? First cuddle feels great. <laughs> yeah, I got a bed, I got a wife. Life is good. Life's good. I have a bed, I have a wife. Leap. Ah! Is that a good leap? Oh. Okay. Oh, isn't this nice? <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> exact same thing. Sailor boy. We made it. We made it. Mm. I'm excited about today. Me too. What we've accomplished. Yeah, I feel like done. it couldn't have gone better. Our family's melded. It was crazy. Like there wasn't an ounce of awkward. I expected awkward. I expected a so lot worse. So awkward. <laughs> wasn't at all. This is amazing. Cobble's Jen, there's a lot of fixation in this and show. where we're at and the sure. shoe. I don't understand I like that it. Clint is peaceful, he's comforting, he's super easygoing, he's able to calm a room um, while also bringing it to life, which is pretty cool, and he's pretty easy on the eyes. So I can definitely see a start to a future with Clint. You have exceeded every expectation oh. of the best case scenario that I could have thought. That's so good. And today could have gone I mean. so wrong. And I'm excited to what tomorrow brings. If the today fuck went does that well. mean? That was super sweet. I am too. So Eves, excited. Thank Cheers. you for the five gifted if memberships. Hold on, we're pausing. Uh, Morgan, Amber, Depression Expression, Shy, Max Mars. Welcome to the Big Nugs. Thank you, Eames, for five gifted memberships. Um, also, hi, Gems. Uh, I don't think. Did you just get here? I feel like you just. I feel like you just did. Thanks for coming. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. Oh my gosh, thank you. Morgan, welcome to the McNugs. Okay, I thought so, Gems. Hi, thanks for coming. Uh, do, do, do. Okay, let's keep going. 13 minutes and 24 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Button. These buttons oh. stress. Allow me. Because <laughs> you're going to have to unbutton it's me. It's time. In a little bit. <laughs> Time to get out of it. I literally have no idea how this even works. <laughs> it's like a secret treasure. Helping my wife out of her this wedding dress is sexy. Like a touch of heaven. I've got this figured out. Amazing. To like see her back exposed a little bit more and revealing a little bit more. That physical attraction's there. And I'm excited to explore Good. that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna take my dress off. Yeah, the way that he speaks about her is just off-putting. Things have just fallen into place, and my kisses with Clint, I feel like, are a little sensual. He's super sexy. The total 12 out of 10, babe. And I'm super excited okay, to get take it back. They did weird <laughs> shots of Clint. That attraction is, uh, it's Clint real. should have and a warning. You both feel it. Yeah, it's definitely there. And so, you know, you're supposed to kind of consummate the marriage first night. If it escalates, like, game on. All right. Are you ready for that? <laughs> I just don't like the way that he talks about things. Yeah. Also, let's be clear. No one is supposed to do anything on their wedding night. Like, that's made up. That's a made up expectation. Here we are. We just woke <laughs> up our first night together as husband and wife. And we're <laughs> married, officially. Ring. Dueling ring. <laughs> Bring power. Yesterday, our couples were legally married, and this is their first morning waking up together as husbands and wives. First night together. That's so stressful. Can you imagine? Success. Just cuddle all night. <laughs> now is the time for them to start figuring out who it is that they have just married. You know, okay. person that we asking, like, let me let me have some of your food off your plate. Sometimes. Are you going to share? I will. Okay, great. 
on a scale of one to ten, how would you rate my cuddle game? Oh, you're, you're about a nine. Okay. Cuddle game's at nine. Trying to get to a ten. <laughs> Okay, Gina and Clint. Good morning. Good morning. How do you sleep? Oh, this is the salon woman amazing. Woke away. <laughs> it's three hours. Three hours of beauty rest. <laughs> do I look refreshed? You look your best. Yeah. How are you feeling about everything yesterday? I'm um I'm still in shock and awe. <laughs> Last night sleeping with Gina was like it just felt so natural. Can we just get a knock? Somebody's at the door. Is it breakfast? Might be might be grub. Get Let's breakfast. All right. We did not have sex last night. I definitely wanted to have sex last night. Um, you know, I'm a guy. I'm, I'm definitely uh, at sexual prime. So yeah, I wanted to have sex. She's beautiful. Oh, Why wouldn't I? Gross. But if we have kids, like they'll look back on these moments and they're gonna be like, dad went after it first night. And that's not what I want this to be about. I want it to be like, we have a solid huh? relationship and we're doing things for the right reasons. What is your... Sorry, what? What did he just say? Okay, there's so much for us to unpack there. Wow. Uh, first of all, the like doing this for the right reasons. What does that mean? What in the purity culture fuck is that? Uh, the purpose of sexual intimacy for people who feel an interest or a calling to that is mutual connection and mutual pleasure. There's not like a right or wrong way. For people to be interested in sex, the idea that you would just, that like sex is meaningless or bad because you have it too fast is so very much a product of purity culture. But also the idea that you would disclose to your children the timeline in which you became sexually intimate is so odd and weird. You don't need to. You don't need to do that. That's not a conversation that anyone needs to have with their children ever, I would say. That's just like... <laughs> purely unhelpful it's not like listen let's be clear about the fact that parents ideally are going to be educators for their children about the safe and appropriate practices in regards to sex and intimacy should their kids find an interest or a calling in that um, especially in regards to things like consent and boundaries and like mutual respect and joy right that's important that's a part of being a good parent is having those conversations and being able to do that in a way that isn't unnecessarily sensationalized and doesn't communicate an attitude of shame being a sex positive person um is is like important for uh, like ideal development um as far as like human development is concerned and also <laughs> do we get do that in a way that isn't again sensationalizing or like being lewd especially about our own sexual activity like there's no world where you need to speak in a graphic manner about your sexual activities with your spouse to your children that's just like Natalie, that was perfect timing. <laughs> Thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Um, DC, Hope Martin, Angela, Cassette, Misguided, Kelly, T, Josie, uh, hi bye, and Elsie, welcome to the Big Nugs. You're one of us now. Thank you so much to Natalie for that because <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Um, yeah, the other thing about this that I feel is important to address is the, like, <laughs> yes, mark that face exactly, um, is the, like, I'm a guy, so therefore I wanted to have sex. Like, this heaps so much unnecessary judgment and shame and pressure on everybody involved in this situation because the truth is that it does not matter what somebody's genitals are what their gender identity is what their gender expression or presentation is none of that has any bearing on somebody's interest or desire to be sexual and it also has no bearing on their ability to be mindful or respectful of other people's sexual boundaries this idea that people with penises are just like like driven like that like a motor uh in regards to sexual activity is so incredibly harmful and also not true right like this is not inclusive this is disrespectful this is again this is also a part of um a lot of pressure that gets heaped upon folks like cis men for example um that contributes to things like sexual dysfunction to a lack of sexual intimacy to a, a level of discomfort and shame and fear in regards to sexual intimacy and also emotional intimacy right the message there is also that like you should only be interested in sexual pleasure and not emotional intimacy or closeness and that's not true that robs people of what is actually a really important part of relationships so like 
generally speaking, all bad. Like, I hate this. Please stop fucking peddling this belief. I don't think anybody in this community believes that, but like for what it's worth, speaking um, in a way that doesn't uphold these norms is powerful and important. You know, language is powerful. Language matters. The way that we speak about the world around us does very much influence the way that we feel and think and interact with ourselves and with each other. And so just like being mindful of that language is really, really important. I Yes, just it's all oh, so bad. Um, we watched the documentary Tough Guys a few days ago or two weeks ago in my anthropology class and these gendered notions of sex and power cause real social harm. Yes, Cobble Gen, absolutely they do. Oh, it's so upsetting. Uh, just yuck. Um, I've never felt more uncomfortable. Um, I don't know if you want me to read that out loud, Clussy Warlock, so I'm not going to, but I see you, friend. Um, okay, let's keep going. We're at 17 minutes and two seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one like morning routine i'm i'm a like 5 30 6 a.m okay i'm up i have energy right yeah. first thing in the morning i'm ready to go yeah that's I'm how happy. i am my brain like i'll wake up with like a list yeah like, i'll like start doing my like to-do list right yeah <laughs> but even now like for the honeymoon and everything i left my work phone there it was like the first time i left everything so yeah. um this is gonna be like the test where i can slowly start like losing a little control it's been hard to give up some of that control? It is, but it's also like a relief. You know, for me, I just want to be a, a good leader and I can't be a good leader if I'm stretched thin in like every part of the business. The experts, they were even like, Gina, are you sure? <laughs> like you've got a lot going on. And I was like, you know, I need to do something personally for myself. And I know that's like the one thing that I'm missing is someone to share it with. So um, I'm excited to lose a little bit of the reins. That's great. Yeah. Things just couldn't be going better, honestly. Like I think we both feel super comfortable. We can just have easy conversation. So I'm just excited to continue on our journey. Yeah, I, for what it's worth, the work-life balance there is a little concerning to me, but also like it's a hard thing, you know, um, being somebody who, you know, like we don't really have staff for the work that we do, right? Aaron and I are like the staff. <laughs> I won't lie to you and pretend like I am in a position to speak from a high horse about work-life balance <laughs> because like I'm kind of not you know but obviously like from an educating point of view it is important to have a good work-life balance where you're not responsible for everything in your business all the time and like you know having an anxiety about not being directly available for work and things like that is generally speaking not a good sign about our work-life balance so like it is important to do and also again like I just feel that it's important to be transparent <laughs> and like I'm not saying this is a person who like has it all figured out because like I very much do not and I feel like that's an important like disclaimer I guess um mm -mm -mm. okay okay <laughs> it's shaking its ass in my face is a wake-up call is cuter than whoever this person is you know Mark I don't disagree with that excuse me Mark Colomew I don't <laughs> disagree with that Okay, uh, 18 minutes and 24 seconds. We're now watching um, Kirsten and Shaquille. Pressing play in three, two, one. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Still a little sleepy. We're really talking to each other sleep. I know, and I was trying to listen to you. You was like, I was in the end. I'm like, I hope I remember. Oh, that's like, sweet. You just drifted off. I did. <laughs> I did feel comfortable sleeping next to Shaquille. I mean, it didn't feel like we were strangers. I think breakfast is here. Okay, are you gonna get it or you want me to get it? I get it. Okay. <coughs> Roll over. Oh, good. Like oh, oh, we did not have sex. I know everybody wants to know. No, we did not. We still have a lot of conversations to have and just having that energy to make us feel more comfortable. I had fun dancing yeah, with you last night. Oh, yeah, we were a vibe. Yeah, I really did. I was talking about our wedding was amazing. It was really different. Like, I it think we amazing. had a great time, but I think our families had an even better time. They did. Like, it did not feel like we were strangers at all. It's I'm just nice. happy because yesterday was everything I imagined it being. And it's like a Cinderella story. You get to the end of the book and you're just like overjoyed of how the, the story ends. But in this case, the story is just beginning. So what are your like nighttime routines? I noticed that we both wear glasses and contacts. So do you like shower, brush your teeth, take your contacts out? Like what do you usually do? Yeah, I have to be clean before I go to, before I lay in my bed. I try, I try to take out my contacts. I don't always. A face wash, just 
Can you brush your teeth all? Oh, oh yes. I'm a teeth person. Like, I love the dentist. <laughs> I wanted to be a dentist at one point because I love teeth. Not really I really that. Teeth. Just real quick for what it's worth, if you wear contact lenses, please try to take them out at nighttime. I know that's not a realistic expectation for everyone, but it is really important to take your contact lenses out because really scary things can happen to your eyeballs if you just have contact lenses in them all the time. Um, flashbacks to Jimmy. <laughs> Hi, Little Rex Hero. Late joining, but happy to be here. <laughs> Ready for the mess. Us too. Thankfully, so far, there hasn't been too much mess. Um, oh God, Samantha. Yeah, that is stressful. Yeah, I, I'm not a dentist person, but you know, like I respect when people do have a good relationship with the dentist though, because I am a little envious of that. Part of the reason that I don't like the dentist is because I don't. So, <laughs> uh, okay, 20 minutes and 16 seconds pressing play in three, two, one. Um, sometimes I brush my teeth at night, sometimes I don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what the hell? <laughs> I don't either, so I can't judge her. So you were snoring like crazy last night. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, how'd you sleep? I slept good. I slept wonderful. How did you sleep? Um, I slept good. I don't feel like I got a lot of sleep, but... Was it the body awkward? I don't think it was awkward. You felt comfortable? I felt comfortable. Okay, we good. snuggled a little bit. Yeah. The body pillow stayed on the far side, which was nice. <laughs> Everything's been pretty natural, you know, even from the few kisses that we shared to, you know, getting in bed, uh, sleeping through the night. All right, we got the room service. He sounds like he's wow, talking about a baby. Full spread. We did not have sex last night. You know, we cuddled up a little bit. I think we were both exhausted. And, you know, it's not that I'm trying to rush. I want her to be comfortable. It's her decision. And, and we'll see where it goes. So far, so good. Oh, potatoes. This is you. Oh. Listen, I'm just going to be a nitpicky asshole. I appreciate the respect that this man is trying to bring into this interaction and also for what it's worth when we frame conversations about sex from this dynamic that you know i'm up for whatever and ultimately it's her decision it conveys this this value about sex being something that men take from women right and i'm using binary terms on purpose because this is a much more commonly associated dynamic in hetero relationships between two cisgender people um and i want to encourage people to get away from this because the thing is that sex is not a decision that the female partner makes or that the partner with a vulva makes right this is a decision that we collaboratively as a couple as a team as a partnership are making about our collective comfortability with intimacy with physical touch with like sexuality um and also that we are going to come to our own conclusions about separately and that we need to practice open and transparent communication in respect of one another's boundaries around, right? Like this idea that like, oh, I'm being such a gentleman because I'm just letting her decide, like A, puts a lot of pressure on her because first of all, now what you're doing is putting her in a position where we're not having sex unless she initiates with you, which can feel very intimidating because societally speaking, uh, folks that are targeted by misogyny will feel a lot of shame usually about being the initiator um and also what you're doing is is basically conveying this attitude that sex is something that i'm going to take from you so long as you're willing to give it to me and like that sucks that's just like a really gross way to view sex because it also conveys this attitude about sex and intimacy being a currency which is yucky you know like if you're a person who um is comfortable with being sexual or intimate with your partner before they are, say that, right? That like, I'm comfortable with it, but I want us to have a conversation about like what that looks like, you know? Like I want to be able to check in with each other, uh, like generally, like for the future, but like, you know, especially if it's the first time that you're having sex with someone, it's important to be communicative about our boundaries and not just like, oh, well, I'm good for whatever. So like, whenever you're ready, you tell me, like that sucks again yes yeah, yeah 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 it is kind of like a frat bro energy um that too coda um and it reinforces the idea that one only one person's pleasure excuse um only one person's pleasure matters which is uh also a really harmful byproduct you're correct um sometimes if you suspect your partner might intentionally hide their preferences to accommodate you assure them that you want their happiness more than personal gratification yes well and cobble gen exactly this is why having an open discourse about sex and intimacy again if that's something that even matters for you in your relationship is so critical hi risky we're 21 minutes into the episode we are like a little behind today just because i had some technical difficulties and then also we accidentally clicked on the wrong episode so um oh mark happy wife happy life is 
truly one of my least favorite fucking phrases. I agree with you. It is one of the most problematic pieces of advice ever. Um, doop, 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 boop, boop, boop. If both, uh, it's both you and your par- partner's decision. Um, the like her decision thing makes it feel like anytime they don't have sex, it's her fault. Yes, Jess, that's such a good point because that also is part of the issue here is that when we frame sex in this dynamic where the male partner says, I'm, you know, good for sex whenever it's up to her. But if we're not having sex at the interval at which the male partner has decided that's acceptable, um, then now we're heaping blame on in this case the wife which is not fair right if you're not willing to be a communicative partner and express your needs then it's not someone else's fault for not reading your mind and it's also not fair for you to leverage this judgment at them because like oh well I'm always up for it like you're the one who tries to like withhold it from me see how this dynamic turns into like a weaponizing of sexuality it's gross and it treats it like a currency yuck um except for Oh, are you guys talking about the weather in Texas? Yeah, the weather is like really, it's starting to get hot, you guys, and I'm not looking forward to it. Don't lie, we're running completely high because of me. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's Travis's fault. It's not my fault. Could never be me. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. 21 minutes and 21 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. We have the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I would say for knowing someone for, you know, less than 24 hours, like, we're getting along great. He is so nice and so sweet and very thoughtful. I do feel like there is a connection there, and I just can't wait to see where it goes. Are you a big cook? <laughs> Are you a big cook? Well, since I live by myself, mm-hmm. uh, I don't cook as much because it's just me. Right. But, like, yeah. I can cook pretty good. Okay. Like a, a lemon pepper salmon or, like, a baked ziti. All like new a fry-up fish. Spaghetti. Yeah, because you're catching all the fish. Steak. Oh, I have a freezer full of catfish that I caught and, like, cleaned myself. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever had catfish. Really? Really. Yeah, I fried Isn't some that, up. like, fairly common? I am the country girl at heart. I don't mind getting my hands dirty, getting in there, doing some stuff, and I expect the same for him. I hope he's okay with that. That really doesn't feel like reaching for the stars. Like, I live in Arizona, and it's fairly common for people to talk about eating catfish. Mostly because <laughs> like there's a job judgment. there. Oh, yeah, same here. It's but. It literally gets... But you get used to it just being everywhere with you at all yeah. times. So. But we have to take advantage of our dog hair-free bed for a few days, though. Oh, We're, first morning Aaron and I do that all the time on vacation. <laughs> it was a great feeling waking up to my wife. Rolling those around things in where the I've been bed. I've used to waking up by myself for so long. And I almost forgot what it felt like to literally be with somebody and embracing them throughout the night. How are you with um, food sharing? What's your oh, stance on? very good. I have married friends who legitimately fight about it. I'm like, I don't care. I don't really I mean, hopefully that that's all. not the case with us, and that fights are few and far between. <laughs> so, yeah. But again, I, what our I first know. Fight's gonna be. I don't know. I've known each other for five minutes, so that Probably tracks. Late. Or like, did we talk about lateness? Are you, do you run late? Are you late to things? Really quick, this is again, just me being a judgy and nitpicky asshole. I would be willing to bet big money that this man is going to be the like, we're better than all the other couples, man. Like I'm calling it now. There's going to be a situation incoming where this man does a like, oh, we're so much better than everyone else thing, except that that's probably not true. Hi, Danny. Just popped in a minute ago because I took a nap um, when the show started. (laughs) Danny, I hope you enjoy your, your nap. I will often order one thing and my partner orders something else specifically so we can share. Eames, yes, all the time. This is the way. If I can't decide what I want to eat and Aaron is also kind of on the fence, then we'll just order the two things that we're stuck between and then just split it half and half. Like, why would we not do that? That's just like the way. (laughs) Yes, yes, Samantha, this is the way. Exactly, Allie. Then we get to try all the things. Yes, especially if we order like two entrees that are opposites and then like an appetizer or two. And two separate drinks. Now we've tried so many things on this menu. And and we'll probably have leftovers too. Like what a blessing. I know, Fabian, I'm hungry now too. Okay, uh, 23 minutes and 40 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Not really. I try to be kind of early. Oh, I have to but... our first bite. <laughs> you know, I give myself like an hour to do something and I need an hour and a half. And in my head, I'm like, you can get it done. Oh, Scout, that's so sweet. It shouldn't sweet. be because of makeup because you're a natural beauty. You don't Thank need it. So when you woke up this morning, I was like, wow, very beautiful. Oh my gosh, I went crying to my eyes. That was so sweet. <laughs> he makes me feel more special than probably anyone ever has. It makes my heart very happy. Almost to the point where I don't believe it yet. I'm like, is this real? I think it is. I think 
I know he's very genuine and sincere, so I think it's finally me accepting Yay. what I deserve from someone who is also deserving of my love. Not love yet, yeah, but, but you, you know, have known each other love for five seconds. Actions, so don't worry, we're not in love yet. Oh, yes, her Tyrannosaurus uh, skull tattoo is really cool. Really quick. Again, I know that some of y'all have been annoyed at me for talking about the like incel vibes that are happening with Chris here. This is another thing though, right? The like, you don't need makeup um, or like you're a natural beauty so you shouldn't wear makeup. Like it's, it, this is so very much framed from the male gaze because the attitude or the underlying belief here is that in this case, women wear makeup for men, which is not true. Right? Like the, the many, many ways that like folks of varying gender identities present them themselves and choose to like express their personality, their identity, their gender um, have more to do with us, right? It's a way for us to feel at home in our bodies. It's a way for us to express ourselves, to be creative, right? Like especially makeup is like legitimately an art form right? The amount of effort and time that people put into especially like special event makeup looks or when somebody is wearing like vivid colors or something that's like more artistic in nature is like genuinely impressive and like it's not for you, right? It's not for men. And so this attitude of like I'm such a nice guy because I'm releasing women of the expectation that they have to wear makeup, like it's not about you. It's not for you and you're not being nice. You're not being nice. You're actually just being really dismissive and you're choosing to to not see the value in what is actually a very artistic and creative um avenue for self-expression right you're saying you're centering yourself in this situation as if to say like oh this is about me and for me but because i'm so nice you don't have to wear makeup so like you're welcome danny thank you for the five memberships i'll read them off in a second um but just so i don't forget um but what you're actually doing is assuming that everything that women do is for you when that's not true if you actually did love and appreciate women you would have a vested interest in understanding why they do the things that they do and celebrating the things that are artistic and creative and interesting and like a hobby for them but that's not what this is and this is very much the incel thing of like women don't appreciate good men because i tell them they don't have to wear makeup and they wear it anyways and like yeah because it's not fucking about you dude it's just it's a red flag if you notice this happening where people say this stuff to you repeatedly about like, I don't understand why you wear makeup. You're so much more beautiful without it and all of this stuff. And it's almost like antagonistic in nature. Red flag, red flag. Talk to your safe people about that and like keep an eye on that shit because it's just, it's not, it, it can very much not bode well um, if it's in tandem with a bunch of other red flags. Okay, hold on. Let me go back. Um, boo, boo, boo. Okay, <laughs> Danny, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Little Rocks Hero, uh, River Willman, Arian, Leave, Mackenzie, Leave, Eve, <laughs> Mackenzie, welcome to the McNugs. Thank you, Danny, for growing our fam. <laughs> and, um, uh, adding more, more nugs to our Happy Meal. Um, apologies for the poor timing. Never apologize, Danny. Um, absolutely finish your thought. Thank you, Danny. Also, thank you, Joe, for the five more gifted memberships. Uh, Candice, Alby, Art Creator, Lita, and Pizza. Pizza Eggy is such a good uh, username. <laughs> welcome to the McNugs, you guys. Welcome to all 10 of our new uh, McNug friends, and welcome. Thanks for the gifted memberships, my friends. I appreciate you guys. Okay. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the purpose of makeup is so I don't get washed out in professional photos. <laughs> you know, that's very valid. Definitely prefer to hear you're always beautiful. Yes, biological clock. But also too, like I, this is, okay, I'm glad you said this because this is great advice that like it is entirely possible to validate your partner um, being attractive or beautiful or valuable or whatever um, without it conveying this like you shouldn't do this thing attitude you know like you can just tell your partner like you are like so stunning all the time right like that energy is so much more helpful and also more validating right like celebrating and appreciating when your partner has achieved like a beautiful makeup look and then also celebrating and uh uplifting when your partner is just being themselves without makeup on much more valuable, much more helpful, and conveys a greater respect and appreciation for who that person actually is. Yes, Litterbox Hero. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, I mentioned that I made a joke 
Um, that the thing that makes me angry is misogyny. My dad basically said, I think you put yourselves in circles where you see that more. I don't think that's as common as you think it is. Oh, Captain KCD, I disagree with that. And also rude. Um, mm -mm -mm. Katie, yes, exactly. I don't think the add-ons are qualifiers. Exactly. Okay. Um, 24 minutes and 44 seconds. <laughs> Pressing play in three, two, one. About to catch a vibe now. No, I don't want that music. Thank you. Okay, this is Jasmine and Eris. Such a fake wake up. Good morning. Good morning, husband. Good morning, wife. <laughs> How does it feel to wake up as a whole wife? It feels great. I was glad yeah. I woke up and you were still here. <laughs> right. <laughs> cuddle, cuddle was approved. Cuddle approved. Yeah, just having my wife, you know, laying next to me, laying on me. It felt, it felt good. It felt natural. Okay, I'll get the breakfast. <laughs> She fell asleep, you know, laying on my chest. So that was the hottest, like most steamy moment of the night. Nothing crazy happened. So, so you got some swine over there. What? You talking about my bacon? Yeah. It's not swine. It's bacon. It's very swine. delicious. No, I bet it is. I actually miss bacon. Like, I don't eat it, but I still love the smell and I still remember how great it tastes. So you enjoy that for me. <laughs> I definitely will. Why does so he eat you bacon? Like, looking forward to like going and meeting with my Ooh, family. Yes. <clears throat> Harris yeah, has never like, been in a relationship. Cool last night. I'm sure they went and thought of plenty of questions <laughs> over the night. My husband today will be meeting my brother and my father. So having their stamp of approval is very important for me. Yeah, so I think your meeting will go smooth with my mom. Val, I mean, I feel like she was like hesitant to have some reservations about this whole process, but. She expressed that to me last night. Yeah. I thought he was crazy. No, this just came out of nowhere. He woke up one day and he was getting married. This just seemed like a little over the top or extreme. Val hasn't been like all the way on board with this process, but I would hope she'll be more accepting and you know things will be great because I do want her in my life and in my wife's life. How are you? No. Okay, we're doing best the each spouse thing now. individually to sit down with their brand new in-laws and friends in order to gain some insight into who it is they just married before they head off to their honeymoon. Best friend in law, what's up? Okay, thank that? you for the five that? gifted memberships, you goof. Also, I wonder if that means that I can gift them. Hold on. It won't let me. It says that I'm supposed to be able to gift them once a month, but I can't. Rude. <laughs> thank you, Pumpkin. More than a Mormon podcast. Kai Feitler? Fight I do this every time. Isasaurus, Jennifer Hill. <laughs> Um, and Hannah B, welcome. You're one of us now. Thanks for joining the McNugs. Or I guess, like, welcome to the McNugs, anyways. Loki ick that they seem to use my husband and my wife so much. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there's, like, a novelty to it for people, to be fair. Also, hi, Pumpkin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just gifting five more. Wilma, Mick, Indy, Savannah, and Anna. Welcome to the McNugs. You're one of us now. Thanks to Aaron. Thanks, Pumpkin. Thanks for the 10 more McNugs. Um, <laughs> no, you can't use that emote, pumpkin. Rude. Uh, Aaron is so sweet to us. He is. Yeah, make sure you have gifted memberships turned on, you guys, if you want to receive one. Thank you. I think you gifted last time. Oh, did I? I feel like I haven't been able to do it in, like, forever. Ugh, whatever. I know. Aaron is leaning into it. <laughs> Calling the IRS. <laughs> Eric, rude. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll let me. That's so annoying. That's fine. Okay. Um. Oh, I don't know what that was about. Okay, we're at 27 minutes and 16 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. I think that I was with y'all today. No, yeah, Aaron's had, just uh, in the busy. YouTube chat. A 24 hours. hours. I know, right? <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, how are y'all feeling? We're good. How are you feeling? Yeah, We're still in time. Yeah, so we slept good last night. We kicked it off instantly. Like, we had great conversations the entire night and still this morning. And we had a conversation last night about him being so busy. And I'm like, well, will you have time, you know? For you. For, yeah, for me. Because yeah. that's important. I don't want to be married to someone and, they, and we never see each other. Or oh, he's no. tired and won't be able to spend time with me. Right. I'm very supportive and I'm very understanding. But I don't want to be too supportive and too understanding to where we're. Right. Yeah. It puts yeah. you in the background. Yeah. It's a fair. I'm going to tell you, Shaquille. Limit. One thing that just is not settled for me is making sure that you are intentional about this marriage and Kirsten. She was very intentional about this process. 
She wanted to be married. She wants children. So I just want to make sure that this is what you truly believe was the means you had to go through to find your wife, to be married. And I just, I'm not quite settled right now with where I am. I would agree. I didn't seek out this opportunity. I saw the ads. I saw the billboards and everything else, and I was like, no. But it kept appearing. Like, this is what, I think our lives are the preordained. For me, it's kind of like, it just fell in my lap. Seems like everything is coming to you. What if Kirsten doesn't come right to you? What if she doesn't warm up right to you right away? What happens when y'all get back from the honeymoon and she's super reserved? What, how do you plan on dealing with that? She doesn't land right in your Bye, way. Punky, love you. I think it's all about balance. Okay. Like, we're learning each other. Even though our families mesh together, we may not mesh together. And we have to build that bond between us. I'm hesitant because we don't know if it's, I want to say the right things, I want to show up and be the guy that I want Kirsten to be instead of being the real Shaquille that we would never know because, you know, he's a stranger. You have to be very careful of who you let into your heart. And so um, she will be a little hesitant and slow, but as you be consistent, she's going to bloom like a flower, but you're going to be the driver in that, how you show up for her. Yeah. I don't know how you feel about that interaction. What are your guys' thoughts about it? Hi. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Did you get some rest? Some rest? Yeah, Little Rock Zero oh, saying. A little bit. <laughs> Hold on, pause. Liquid Soap said I have to go, but in case Mickey doesn't know, uh, Nicole talks about abuse she experienced when they go on the honeymoon. Ooh, thank you, Liquid Soap. Okay, Julie noted. Um, there'll be conversations about abuse happening once they get on the honeymoon. Um, yeah, I resonate with... Kirsten's family being protective and you know I think like the family brunch thing is also for a lot of people it's like the opportunity to say here's what you need to know about this person um but it was kind of intense like that was kind of an it felt a little bit interrogate if e whatever um yeah i feel like i would be caught off guard by that i feel like i would be put off if somebody spoke to me like that when i didn't know them especially um mm -mm -mm. i hate people talking about who i am like how about you let me tell people how i am katie that's valid that's very fair okay uh do, 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 do. pikachu are you guys sharing pikachu memes in the <laughs> discord chat all right Fair enough. Uh, River Woman said, I think I might hop out. My anxiety can't deal with that one right now. Um, I'll pop back in after, though. No worries. I don't know if it's happening right now, to be clear. So just be careful when you pop back in because I don't know uh, specifically what timeline timeline we're looking at. But OK, 29 minutes and 59 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. How are you guys feeling? Pretty good. Still nervous. Yeah. How are you? So what far, I'm, I'm very happy. I'm eager to learn more and good. Uh, you know, dive into all the things about her and tips and tricks and any advice you guys have for me. I just want to hear more about you. Yes. Have you ever been engaged or anything before? N no, I've never been engaged. How in the world did you get away? I mean, there's so many women out here that's hungry for men. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had a couple serious relationships. I have been a bit of a rambler in my, you know, 20s. Um, got into my 30s, took, got into more of my career focused and I am where I want to be, you know, in life. and. I think that's where I'm at now and what makes me ready. Um, I am looking for the real deal. So have you ever dated um, a young lady from a different race before? I have mostly dated a uh, white and Latino woman. Mm -hmm. I have gone on, on dates with black women. Honestly, I just haven't had a lot of uh, return luck on that side, wow. so. My concern is the racial thing. Yeah. Dominique is used to dealing with it, but it might be a new challenge to Mac. And that's the reason why we're asking these questions, because we want to make sure yeah. that he will stick by Dominique through their lifetime. That's very valid. No, none of that. There's so much music in the show. Hello. We eat men. How are you feeling? <laughs> Tired. <laughs> I am about to have brunch with Max family. I had conversations with them last night and his mom was a little hesitant. I mean, no one really wants their kid to marry a stranger, but his mom I won't like answer she, any questions she bullies, that she has. She I want the them mom. to know that I'm he's in good hands. So have you gotten much time to sit and chat with Mac or just? Not as much time as I would have liked to have. We did talk a little bit last night, like once everything was over and done with, he said, you guys said he was shy. <laughs> I have not seen that no. at this point. Oh, that's good. That's amazing. That's no. it for sure. He's like comfortable around you. That's awesome. Yeah, so he's good. being a little sassy. <laughs> <laughs> so good. 
but now everything's been really good. My expectations really have just like been so highly exceeded. Oh, that's great. It's nice to hear. So like, why did you want to marry a stranger? My mom signed me up initially. She's like, you know, just watching this, like I think that this would be like a great fit for you because you take relationships very seriously and, and you deserve someone that's wholehearted and committed. And I definitely came into this thinking like, if my spouse is as committed to this process as I am, then I don't see a world where it doesn't work, you know? Well, That's like, not how that I, works at all. I just found it to be nuts. <laughs> it's a little warm in here. Is it just me? Well, all you can do is you can have hope. I mean, you can't say yes. I know it's good. They're gonna make it. We've only known her like five minutes. Obviously, I mean, he hasn't fair. been here that long, and everything he knows is in Michigan and yeah. his support system. What would you say if he, one day he said, "I want to move back to"? Michigan? I was just about to ask you guys. Um. I think that'd be a little tough, honestly. My mom's like an hour and a half away, and you all are so far away, so that would be tough. Whew. It's giving emotional uh, incest. Well, looking there. What's up, guys? Hi. Good. Good to see you, Izzy. Hi, good to see you. How are you? Okay. That was off putting, I'm just going to say. How's everyone feeling? Hey, Tom. How's it going? How's this whole experience been for you? So many things have gone through my mind in the past two weeks. Like all the emotions are just yeah, she said all it, over the place. It's a little warm the crazy here. negative, the super high expectations. Like as soon as hold on, sorry, pause. Um, on the side of the groom and his mom, it seems like the yeah, this is Boatman. But the previous interaction was McKinley's family and Dominique. But it seems like McKinley's mom has a level of attachment to her son that she conveys like a. I don't know, <laughs> hostility to, uh-huh, yes, Samantha, it's giving boy mom. Yeah, like a hostility towards Dominique that, you know, I can understand a hesitation and a frustration and, you know, skepticism about married at first sight because it's not a good idea, right? Um, I want to be clear that I'm not supporting the concept of the show because it's bad. Um, but I think there is a way to express a skepticism, um, a fear, an anxiety or a distrust that isn't quite so antagonistic towards the person in particular, you know, <laughs> because they're right. They have known her for five minutes. And so because of that, it seems really odd to come right out of the gate being quite so antagonistic towards this person that like you don't know her, you know, you can be frustrated and annoyed about the concept um, and have beef with your son for making a choice that you don't agree with. But to like, well, what are you going to do if he doesn't want to move home? Or what if he, if he wants to move closer to us? Like, I don't know. We know each other for five minutes. Like, we haven't figured out any of that yet, you know? Yes, exactly. Bianca Boop in uh, Discord said they could express fear about the process without pointing it at the participants, which is exactly the energy, yes. Okay, we're going to rewind by 10 seconds because I was not paying attention. So we're at 34 minutes and 29 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Through my mind in the past two weeks, like all the emotions are just all over the place. The crazy negative, the super high expectations. Like as soon as I saw Gina's, like it alleviated so much of that anxiety that I had. She's the whole package. She is. She's so cool. Oh. Now that you've you know been in a room with Clint and probably seen him with certainly his jacket off. <laughs> you think he's hot? I think he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's interesting. So my like typical. <sighs> trait like physical is like tall dark handsome uh i've just never been someone that's been like immediately attracted to lighter hair like even blonde like or ginger hair in my last relationship he was like he had blonde hair and a red beard yeah. and it was like one of those things that the physical attraction it wasn't someone that i was immediately like that's the one right but the personality like everything made him so much that more attractive. comes back and grows yeah. on what could be a potential problem i mean you seem like super chill yeah yeah but what could okay. be a problem like during this adventure that would maybe make you shut down or create any type of problems where you'd be like, all right, this was nice, but bye. If we're just hard-headed and we're not trying to discover each other's viewpoints, things mm -hmm. like that, no, we're gonna run up against, you know, some some issues. There's gonna be some conflict. Just natural. Yeah, yeah, but it's how you deal with it. And so we're gonna just talk it out. Clint, he's, he seems great so far. Um, we'll know more as time goes on. <laughs> okay. I see one red flag. They're so similar. <laughs> They're so, I don't know. I do feel like this, like, oh, we're just gonna, like, talk it out. Like, okay. That's like such a low bar. I don't know. Like that's not impressive. <laughs> it's just like such a nothing burger answer. Um, mm -mm -mm. Hold on. Why is the 
Is that me or why is the night bot triggering the overlay command? Am I losing it? I feel like I'm losing it. Um, anyways, I, it's automatic. Okay. It's on a timer. Oh, okay. I was like, who keeps triggering the overlay one? Um, I lost my train of thought. It doesn't matter. Let's keep going. <laughs> 36 minutes and 11 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. They really got to sit down and figure out what they can learn from each other and what the other one can do better than the other. What are some things that I should be worried about? She doesn't have a lot of free time, right? So she yeah. dedicates a lot of her time, you know, at, at her business, making it Nightbot grow bigger. Yeah. And she does travel quite frequently. So, I mean, uh, I guess that would be my worry. Like, how are you guys going to make that work with your busy schedule, your sailing, her busy schedule, her traveling a lot as well? Like, yeah. how have you guys talked about, like, hey, how are we going to manage that and find the time for each other? Because you guys are, are going to have They've to be there for each other, other for your team now. Minutes, That's something so, yeah. that we're going to have to Probably. come at like thoughtfully like we both live very full lives currently and we're gonna have to merge those worlds together and find that good commonplace so i think i think it's something we got to have a conversation around we got to figure it out you guys can definitely make time for each other you just have to make sure you do it we're, we'll work through it you know it'll be a challenge Neato. yeah lou do you mind extending the timer on him just a little bit thank you Meeting with oh the in-laws means a lot to me because for me and Nicole, this is a huge journey for us and my in-laws are a big part of that. You know, I have another set of parents and I definitely want to make sure that their mind is at ease, that their daughter's in good hands and that I'm going to treat her right. You know, I'm definitely trying to make a good impression on them. I'm a big person, like I don't play games. Like mm -hmm. I'm straightforward, like I'm the same person now until, until the day I die. I know you don't know me super well right, yet, right. but are there any concerns you guys have? Okay, let's talk about this realistically, okay? When I heard about this, I didn't like the idea at all. Yeah. You know, it's my daughter. I don't look at my daughter as being somebody that's um, um, disposable or replaceable. My yeah. concern has always been, at what point are, are two people willing to compromise? How am I going to take my life and merge it with her life? And how's she going to take hers and merge it with yours? But you're already married. Fair. Yeah. I think it's important for me to take likes or take interest in her likes, just like I think it's important for her to take interest in my likes. Are you ready to be a husband? I think I am. You think you are? You know, you already are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think this is a good idea? You know it's a good idea. I know it's a good idea. He's a nice guy. Serial killers usually are. Does that make him a serial killer? No, because not every nice person is a serial killer. But the jury is still out on what he might be in the future. But there's no room for um, wavering here. There's no room to, I think, I'm not sure. Either you're in it or you're out. If you're in it 99%, then you're out 100%. Are you like, listen, I... <laughs> Literally, why is this man talking about serial killers? I just... Listen, I'm so so grieved that i've been put in the position to defend chris somehow <laughs> but i don't agree with so many of the things that chris says and does at least so far <sighs> but this energy is so <laughs> out of left field and unwarranted right again we can have a healthy skepticism even a level of fear or anxiety about this process, about your your child being partner to someone that they don't know that you don't know, right? But like, this is so next level. This is a level of intensity that is inappropriate, in my opinion. <laughs> also too, like my thought when stuff like this happens, when we see parents demonstrating this pattern of behavior is like, to what degree has your child absorbed that anxiety, right? Because living in a home that is, is colored by this energy will do something to children and like has this caused your child to be hyper vigilant and to have trust issues and a high level of fear and anxiety and and like anxious attachment in their relationships because i think for a lot of people it would just really odd and also like i don't know i don't want to to make any accusations here but oftentimes this level of fixation with a particular personality trait in people can feel like a projection sometimes, you know? Like, are you violent? And that's why you think that everyone else is violent? Like, what's that about, you know? And again, I don't want to make any accusations because we don't know anything about any of these people, really. But it's just a really odd accusation to make from the jump, knowing that you have, like, you know nothing about this person. You have zero context about this person or their personality. It's just really... It's a choice, 
It's really, it's really a choice. Yes. <laughs> oh, me, exactly. Okay, let's just keep going, I guess. 39 minutes and three seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. You committed to making this happen if it's if it's habitable. Yeah, I mean, yes, I'm fully Beth, committed exactly. to like making this happen. Like, I'm very serious about this. Like, it's definitely something that it's, I'm in this for the right reason. You know, talk is cheap. It's simple as that. We're talking all day now, and you can tell me anything you want. Access speaks louder than words. Like, I appreciate that, but again, it just feels like an odd thing to Juicy. say. Really quick, Beth in Discord said, "Um, where did it go? Where did it go?" Mm -mm -mm. Wow, it like really disappeared. Hold on. I'm going to find it. Oh, okay. Yeah, Beth in Discord said, it's giving, I don't trust my daughter with any men because I'm a man and I know how bad men are, which like is exactly part of the issue, I think. Um, and also again, like if you're willing to acknowledge in regards to your own family's safety that men are trash and that men are dangerous and that men are the primary threat that folks who are subjected to misogyny face, but you're not doing anything about it, then like you're part of the problem, right? Your uh, like tacit approval of these things in, in the form of avoidance and not addressing that unless it's related to your specific family members is part of the problem and is perpetuating violence against other women. And just because you're choosing to be protective of the people in your life doesn't mean that you're like being a good person, you know, like that still sucks. That's still a fucked up thing to just like look the other way about uh, unless it affects you and your family specifically. This food looks really good also. Like, can we just talk about that? I'm hungry. You guys, I ate breakfast today and I'm hungry. Like, what the hell? Okay, 39 minutes and 30 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. You see stuff like what was Chris like as a kid? Funny, what goofy. Your, yeah. Um, always big hearted. He's got a very big heart. He's a very, very nurturing soul. So he will cook for you. He will take care of you. He will lift you up. He will make you laugh. Besides cooking, he's done all of those things. He carried me into the hotel room. I was like, it's like four o'clock in the morning. He's like, no, I'm going to do it. He's like, okay. <laughs> In the past, um, Chris we tend to be a little bit consumed with his relationships. I think typically that's kind of more of his main focus. How do you feel about that? I'm definitely going to try to encourage him to have his own kind of life because I like to go out. I like to come and go. If a guy's like, I don't want you going out with your friends tonight, like you're staying home with me, oh. that's unacceptable. It's part of mutual respect, don't you think? Yes, and trust. When you know each other and you respect each other, then you don't really have to be like, He's been wanting a good relationship for a long time. He really has. Because he's committed. That. He's committed. Like, he definitely. <laughs> My biggest concern is if things didn't work out is, you know, him taking it really hard, yeah. him making it very personal, that hurting his confidence and, yeah. and having a hard time. I'm hearing a lot that, you know, he will be kind to a fault, where most of the men that I've dated have been in an egotistical way, like, so strong. So that screams to me, like, be a protector for him. I have to protect his heart, so that's very good for me to be mindful of because no, 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 I might no, not no, have no, thought no, that way no. otherwise. So if, if no, 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 no. you see that it just isn't working out for you guys, don't drag it out. Okay, 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 okay. Wow. No, no. Okay. First and foremost, the fact that his family is acknowledging some of his problematic traits here, um, to me, speaks to, like, I don't know, some behind the scenes stuff that we're not being transparent about, which like if it were me and especially if, you know, obviously this probably being on TV is part of the problem. But I would assume if this was a normal conversation, it's not being recorded. It'd be like, hold on, back up. What's that about? <laughs> what, what do you mean? Please speak plainly. <laughs> what the fuck is that? But also the like, I need to be a protector for him. I need to protect his emotions. No, 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 no. It is totally okay and healthy and kind I would say to want to be supportive of your partner to want to be sensitive towards their emotions to want to um have a special attention for their emotional wants and needs and all those things right and this attitude of like it's my job to protect their emotions is so dysfunctional like so dysfunctional and inappropriate because it's our job to protect our own emotions and wants and needs, right? It's our job to be advocates for ourselves. It is never okay for you to place the sole burden of protecting your heart. Yes, yes, Joe, protecting your heart um, on someone else. That's not an appropriate or fair burden to place because that person also has to be responsible for protecting their own heart, right? Like there's two 
too many things now that we're putting on on her plate that's not fair to her and it's just this is a problematic expectation from the outset and I hope that they're able to have a conversation about this and to release her of that expectation because that's just not fair it is giving purity culture Joe it is also I don't know if somebody asked about bingo um but just to be clear we're not doing bingo this week uh we're taking a little bit of a break because me and the mods were overwhelmed with bingo so we're taking a break but we will get back to it eventually just not for the you know somewhat near future I would say Okay, um, let's keep going. Also, I am going to pay attention, but I'm probably going to order DoorDash also while we're doing this because I'm hungry. So, um, all right, 41 minutes and 24 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. No, no music. None of that. Okay, Jasmine and Eris. So you, you, so you're the only, only child? Only child. I would be done. Because you missed out on a lot of stuff. Siblings, you know, sibling um, fights. Yeah, Lou, if you want to do a bingo message that's for that's when someone does explanation for like, bingo, like, that's fine. Fighting nobody for the shower. You had to fight somebody for it now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all live with Would y'all say, is she like organized or is it like, is it like organized chaos or? It's depending on what it is. Okay. When she coaches cheer so far. Oh, yeah. Allie, I'll do a double dash. She's, she's a sergeant, man. I mean, she's she, she on top of that. I mean, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, then there's some other things that she's a little slack on. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of us. Yeah. It's not going to be peaches and cream, Every The first year is really just learning each other. Mm -hmm. That's great, Allie. I think one of the keys to marriages is allowing Eris to be Eris, allowing Jasmine to be Jasmine because that's where the union came together. Right. At this point, you know, I'm counting on you. Okay. You know, you know, at this point, it's been me being that, that man figure, if you will. Right. But now, you know, uh. I'm counting on you. No, no, no. There's no world where a spouse <laughs> should be meeting the same role or expectations as a parent because those are different roles. The things that we need from a parent are not the same things that we need from a spouse. That is literally emotional incest. That's so... Woo, this expectation that like, oh, well, I as her father have been the man in her life. And so now you're taking up that that torch like, no, ew. And also, can we talk about how misogynistic this is? The belief that at all times, Jasmine, I guess, or women uh, need a man figure in their life or what? Or what? She's going to expire? She's going to cease to exist? Like, fucking ew. Literally what this man just said is that I don't think my daughter is capable of existing in the world unless there is a man hovering over top of her. Fucking ew. That's so gross. And also, what an odd way to say that I think I'm such a shitty ass fucking parent that I have not prepared my child to be independent at all. Like, what an interesting self-own that is to say that I have done such a piss poor job of equipping my child to be an adult that they need a fucking babysitter at all times. And the only qualifications to be a good babysitter for my child is to have a penis. Huh? Like, literally, what the fuck is that? Ugh. It's just gross. Yes, raspberry. Yeah. If there's not a penis in the vicinity at all times, then I guess, I don't know, a timer starts? Ugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Samantha. So didn't you know you have an expiry date? Apparently. Ick. It's just so gross and weird. Oh, God. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I'm going to mute it, but we're at 42.45. Pressing play in three, two, one. There's just music, 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 more music. Some nice B-roll. Okay, here we go. Let's get some restaurants right. Much as that is. Jasmine, yeah, it's definitely a long day. We had a late night, so that's the same real. Oh, it definitely it seems real. real. I felt okay. that when I was coming down the aisle. It was like my aha moment when I was coming down the aisle. Like, okay, there's my husband. There's people here. It's really happening. Cause I think it's crazy. <laughs> we know you think it's crazy. We know. So, what do you think of Eris's new wife? <laughs> it's just so funny because you say a wife. It's just like truly unbelievable. It's like crazy. Now, why is it so important for you right now to have like this type of relationship? I feel like I'm in a stage in my life right now where I'm happy with everything that's going around me. And the only thing I'm missing 
is my person. The only thing I'm missing is starting a family. The only thing I'm missing is have somebody depend on me as much as I depend on them. So are you excited to move in with each other? Have you ever lived with a yes, guy before? Yes, I've, I've lived with an ex before. My old place was with my ex. How long has it been since you walked away from that relationship? About seven months. Seven months? Oh, that's pretty fresh. Mm -hmm. Are you truly done with that situation? It is fresh, but I feel like in relationships, the breakup is just a time stamp, but mentally, physically, and emotionally, you have broken up before you actually break up. Oh, you are a pageant sister. Okay. Ready. I was up here like, what? <laughs> no, because you know if you've broken up out of a relationship, you've been thinking about it. You know, it's just like a lot of times in that pageant world, from what's portrayed to us on TV is that like you're you're ready to answer a question with the right, what's considered to be the right answer. How and I see like it is, is that fear, it's the unknown. Guess, like, but... I mean, how, you've never done this journey, this process. I just don't feel like a person can like genuinely answer every question with a, with a confident statement. That's just a little concerning to me. This is like a huge step that yeah. you're taking right now. You know, so like yeah. when you when you really processing these questions that you're being asked, or you really thinking about these possible challenges that could be coming up. You know, this this is really your life. Just be praying that it works out. I just feel like there's nothing that Jasmine could say that would satisfy Eris's family, which is odd considering that Eris is the lucky one in this equation. Hold on, we're paused. Uh, 4539. The fact that she has like all the right answers is a little bit like, I, I, I understand why that could be perceived as phony, sure, but it really does feel like there is just no world where <laughs> his family is willing to accept anything that she says which again is really odd because Eris is the one who's the red flag in this relationship having never been in a long-term relationship before like ever you know like why are we interrogating her why do they get to interrogate her when it's a done deal yeah exactly bonnie um if i ever get married i think i would want both my parents to walk me down the aisle because they both mean the most to me and i want them involved i don't know yeah that's totally valid natalie I think for a lot of people, the, like, walking down the aisle thing has become more of a symbol of, like, love and affection than it has, like, about a conveying of property, you know? I think it's possible to take traditions that have problematic roots and to turn them into something that are meaningful and affirming for you specifically. Um, okay. This is uh, Kirsten and Shaquille. We're at 45 minutes and 39 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. So, how was your brunch today? It was pretty cool. Your friends are on another level. I told you they would be. <laughs> I warned you this morning, right? Nah, they were really good, though. What about you? How was brunch? Brunch was so good. And your uncle, he's so sweet. My family is just very supportive. Mm -hmm. Like, they honestly don't know, like, what it took to get here. Mm -hmm. Like, I kind of, like, held up this guard with my family of, I supposed to be the strong person. I supposed to be the lead. And even with that, it's like going through so many silent battles. Like, people just see the good things that you're doing, but they never see, like, when you go home at night and you lay down by yourself and you don't have anyone to talk about your day with. So, like, my family just always think I'm good, and I'm like, sometimes, like, I'm not good. So why didn't you ever share that with your family, like, when you were going through the silent battles? You know, because I struggle with that, too. I'm, I'm the same kind of way. It was a sense of time. pride. Yeah. To where, as a black man, you're supposed to always be the man of the household. Mm -hmm. Don't show no emotions. It sounds like that's going to be, like, a weakness for both of us to work on. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. But we'll get there. We're going to have to learn, like, that's something we can improve on. Gestures and everything else. Mm -hmm. If I look at you and you look at me, I'm like, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. you no, know, come here. Let's talk. Like, what's what's bothering you? Mm -hmm. And being open and, you know, okay. transparent with each other. I agree. 100%. I mean, that's a surprisingly open and useful conversation. That's encouraging. It's rare to see communication <laughs> that that's that effective on this show. Okay, this is Jasmine and Aris now. Yeah. The time speed up on that made it look like she was walking so, so fast. <laughs> how did it go? Oh, oh, it went. It went. <laughs> yeah. Um, they are very like protective of you. They're like wanting to know like where my head's at. Val, she kind of, kind of basically told me that she feels like I'm too poised and put together. She, she is for you. She got your back <laughs> and she's gonna say it how it is and. Right. And she gonna it's say what she means to me what she thinks. So. Yes, a little bit. That's right. her. That's the way she protects you. So I mean, no matter what she, the way it makes me feel, that's that's her way. So okay. I, I feel like I'm being true to myself and mm. feel like I'm being authentic. So I can only go with that. 
it doesn't come as a surprise. You know, she's been like that from the very beginning. Val wears a heart on her sleeve. She's not gonna sugarcoat how she feels. And she's like ultimately trying to protect me. Like we're very close. Um, so maybe she was a little hard on Jasmine, but I'm still hopeful that, you know, that relationship just nurtures and gets better over time. But I feel like okay. between my mom, your parents, my friends, your sisters, I feel like, I feel like we got enough support. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's just us and our marriage. And right. I mean, we love our families and they're gonna protect us, but it's, it's up to us. Right. But I am gonna go get my hair braided okay. for our honeymoon. So I guess I will see you later. All right. <laughs> oh. I forgot that I have a tattoo and my arm was itchy and I was like, I'll just scratch it. Dude, no, you can't just do that. Oh, we got a gift. What is it? <gasps> We've surprised my each couple with gift like baskets a to celebrate their new marriages. We got that? a basket. What is it? We got some prom. We got a note. But more importantly, to let them know where they'll be spending their honeymoons. Tomorrow you'll be heading to the Grand Palladium Lady Hamilton Resort and Spa in beautiful Point Lucia, oh, Jamaica. <gasps> Tomorrow we are? Cute. Yeah, in beautiful Point Luca, Jamaica. <laughs> have you been to Jamaica before? I have not. I have. Oh, did you enjoy it? I, I had a blast in Jamaica. Yeah. Are these flags for the Bahamas? So these are, these are Jamaica me crazy <laughs> I need to flags. study my geography. How about that? Okay. This? I think we're gonna have sex on our honeymoon in Jamaica. Yeah, the couples are gonna meet each other once they all I mean, get to Jamaica. We'll see what happens. I think it's a very romantic spot, so. Definitely feeling the romance heating up oh, when yeah, you add Jamaica sure. to the equation. Whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen. What does that even mean? And you look very beautiful every day in the sun. Oh, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Laying next to me. Mm. We haven't had an opportunity to be romantic yet, and I think once we're in a different element, things will heat up quickly. Sure, sure, sure. Are you so excited? Mm -hmm. This is nice. This is so cute. I'm in love with this bag, honestly. I think we're gonna have a good time. But you know, I'm still in school, uh, and I have a research conference this weekend, so I have to present my research. So we are not going to the honeymoon on tomorrow. Um, I have to travel to Jackson, Mississippi. So you will be traveling to Jackson, Mississippi to actually come to class with me. What? Yeah. I'm already making major sacrifices <laughs> right now. You got me missing the beach. You talking about you want to be by some water. I didn't want to leave you out. Like, I really wanted you to see me in my element. Oh, you didn't want to ask? And then when do we leave? <laughs> We're going to leave from there and go straight there. Hold on. Let's just talk about the fact that they didn't make that choice together. He was like, you're coming with me? Ew. That's rude as fuck. That's rude as fuck. I... And also, listen, if it were me, I'd be like, I'm going. <laughs> Meet you there. Hello. <laughs> Literally, what the fuck? I wonder if the producers decided that too. Ugh. Yeah, don't go on the show then. That feels really fucking rude. Gemma, I would be pissed too. No, he didn't even ask. He just decided. Ugh. What an entitlement. That's gross. Yeah, I am on her side for this because I would be fucking mad. Okay, 5145, pressing play in three, two, one. Are you serious right now? Like, we can't go to our honeymoon. We Apparently have to go to the not, research presentation first. While all the other couples are in Jamaica, having the time of their lives, drinking their Bob Marley drink, and I'm gonna be sitting in this hotel waiting on him to finish I his presentation. so mad. Unbelievable. If this wasn't our honeymoon, I would be much more excited. You think you know, I'm excited? You. You, you, I'm a, you I'm are not, excited. I'm, I feel not, like I'm, really you are. Not, I'm not even prepared. Well, you better That's your fault. Yeah. So don't volunteer for a just, show. Just really. We got a lot of making up to do, so just we're gonna stop there. <sighs> yeah. Charge it to my bill. Charge it to my bill. I wanna love this unforgettable. Okay. Just the music. Thank you. Hey, man. Good. Good to see you. How you living? Good. Yeah. Gina, this is my husband. Hello, Gina. Nice to meet you, Gina. This nice is to meet Clint, you, Gina. Pleasure to meet you. you. Are you guys excited? About yeah. Oh, Jamaica, here we come. <laughs> we found out that all the couples are going except for Kirsten and Shaq, which Kirsten is kind of sad. Yeah. They're only missing one day. Hi, everyone. I love that everybody Hi, just has, like, wifey oh. hubby on their suit. I'm excited for all of us to get together. Yeah, I don't really see any issues. Mm -mm. But hey, you never know. People start drinking. Alcohol's involved. Secrets and truth start coming out. Secrets and truth. I'm just saying, it's, it's possible. Yeah. So how does everybody feel about going to Jamaica? Oh, dude, I, I've never been, so I'm so excited. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to some intimacy, you know, okay. spicing yeah. things up a little bit. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> All right, husband. So, you know, they say Jamaica can Ew. get hot and steamy. Oh. You know, so <laughs> I'm about to turn it up even more. Yeah, turn it up a little more, you know? Harris, he was getting pretty that? frothy at the mouth. <laughs> just talking about Feeling it. the spice. Feeling <laughs> the spice. That's super awkward. 
feels like everyone's like, got oh, like yeah. good initial chemistry. Like everyone's a little touchy feely. No one's giving off vibes of like get him away or her away <laughs> from me. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. We had sex. Though. I'm just kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> I would be so Why? mad. Don't joke. There was there was light cuddles. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're at the airport. Oh. 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 This is all weird. It is this so is evident that men just don't know how to act. trip, foreign land, neither of us have been there. First like, time, like, get to really hang out. Yeah. We really spent, like, one day together. Yeah, I'm fully looking forward to having yeah. fun and just getting to know you better. I mean, I just want to go to Jamaica. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know. I mean, that would be me. Uh, okay, also, I know, him being like, we had sex. Hello? Are you six? All right, I need Stream's opinion. Um... Do I want sweet potato wedges that come with a Calabrian chili tahini and sesame seeds and chives? Or do I want roasted mushroom fondue as a snacky? Because I'm already getting a bruschetta board with like some other stuff on it. Um, so do I want mushroom fondue or do I want sweet potato wedges? I've had the sweet potato wedges before and they're really good. Um, so I know that I will like them. I've never had the fondue though. Okay, wow. Fondue has a lot of votes. <laughs> Both. Okay, but I'm already getting a bruschetta board that has four bruschettas on it. Like, that's a lot of food already. Um, potato wedges. Okay, hold on. Mushroom fondue has 12 votes. Oh, my God. Always choose the cheese. <laughs> Now I'm like, I don't know, maybe I do want both. And I'll just shave, save the leftovers for Aaron. <laughs> Is that a bad idea? Fondue. The fondue sounds really good. I know. Well, I'm going to eat them on break probably. We'll just keep streaming until my food gets here and then I'll go get them. <laughs> okay. But maybe is the choice to get the fondue or to get both? <laughs> and I just have leftovers. <sighs> Oh my god. <laughs> okay, now Discord is like, get both, get both. I know the sweet potato wedges sound really good. Okay, we'll just get both. <laughs> All right, we're just getting sweet potato wedges and fondue, even though nobody needs that much food ever. <laughs> okay, thanks guys for helping me. All right, we're ordering some food. Um, no, I don't want to save with dash pass. Ooh. Do it. Mm, no, I don't need to. Mm, no, it's fine. Okay. Continue. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for your help. Um, I do need to change the card on here, though. <gasps> I have the one that I need. Bless. Okay, great. <laughs> Love that for me. Okay, okay. To, yeah express that thank you great all right we ordered food everybody <laughs> oh, i was gonna get a beer but i already got a, a prickly pear lemonade with my food and i feel like uh that's gonna be plenty because i do love a good lemonade <laughs> Lou, get bad tie <laughs> okay um i know i love a good dip i do love a good dip i'll just pop down to arizona from toronto to help you eat it listen you are welcome <laughs> i'll save some for you natalie just drive fast <laughs> yes express that absolutely it because listen i don't want the food to be cold what i don't need is mushroom fondue that's like room temperature Yes, exactly, Cass. Y'all would have told me to get both. And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't need both of those. Okay, great. So my food is going to be here between 2.54 and 3.06, which is like 25 minutes from now. So we have 25 minutes to cram as much Married at First Sight in as we can over my food gets here. And then <laughs> we have to take a break so I can eat. I want to go to there. <laughs> <sighs> okay um do, do, do. i'm lactose intolerant so no cheese but i used to love fries and broccoli cheese soup Ooh, that sounds so good that sounds delightful <laughs> canadian road trip <laughs> facts of the leftovers <laughs> no worries mark i hope your work meeting is quick and unproblematic thanks for hanging out with us okay okay we're at 54 minutes and 44 seconds <laughs> in three two one
I would go to Kentucky with you and oh, yeah. get a hundred. <laughs> I got, I got, I got pre-check. You got pre-check? I don't have pre-check. So I'm not gonna leave you because you're gonna go with, you you my wait. wife. I'm gonna wait on you. We're gonna get you pre-check. We're gonna get pre-check. So the next trip, we both gonna <laughs> we go skate past all these people. I you ready? wish I traveled enough to justify TSA pre-check. Well, the very, the worst seats on the plane, the very back. We did not get first class. We did not get first class. Yeah, they put me in the middle seat, which gives me anxiety, and that's why I like to fly first class because there is no middle seat. By the bathroom, which is right here. Bye. Okay. We're going on our honeymoon to Jamaica and all he can do is complain about the seat that he's in for the flight. Like, oh, look, settle, to... sir. Literally really relax. Man, I want to go on vacation now. Okay, there's so much music happening. So many people have it now. It's hardly worth it. Okay, that's actually very so good I've advice. Been stuck Thank in you, this room all day in this hotel in Jackson, Mississippi. <sighs> I am missing Jamaica, and I cannot wait to get there. I would be so and mad. He has a lot of making up to do. I would genuinely be so upset. <gasps> oh, my oh my gosh! gosh. Okay, oh. okay. Nice. Look at the dicks. Oh, it's so pretty. Cute. I love the black and gold. Oh, sweet. McKinley was wow, complaining about the middle seat. Wow, this view. Wow, that's pretty. Wow. I know okay, the music was so chaotic. Very lucky. Happy honeymoon. Happy honeymoon. We've got a pool Ooh, in yeah. here. That's Good thing spicy. I brought my scuba, t scuba tank with me. <laughs> we got a scuba tank right, here. We in the tub. Can I get fed grapes in the tub? Sure. Like, no. can you go get some grapes? You want me to go get grapes? Yeah, I'm just trying to get a preview. <laughs> you want me to get grapes right now? Please. <laughs> I feel like a king. Ma'am, okay. well, she's not going to go do that. You want grapes or watermelon? Grapes. Grapes? That's the royal treatment. <laughs> What is his Royal impression? Treated. I just want one more and I'm done. One more grape. <laughs> Anything for you. How do you Discord chat? Chat said divorce, babes. Divorce. <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. Okay, this is Nicole and Chris. I haven't been on like a real vacation in years. Yeah. I mean, the last time I was with a girlfriend wasn't exactly the best time. Um, what happened? I don't know. It's, it sucks because like I felt like I was there with a complete stranger, which is you know funny because but like it's funny now. But we're we're closer in this. Whole oh, okay, hold on. Um, I can't see your username because it's truncated on Discord. I'm so sorry. It starts with a D, and you have a delightful bird as your profile picture. Um, but in Discord chat, that person told me that they think this is the abuse conversation. Doom Kitty, thank you. Um, Doom Kitty, let us know in Discord chat that this is uh, potentially the conversation where there's abuse discussed. Um, so heads up, if that's a sore spot for you, then like trigger warning for this area, maybe mute it or take a step. Um, you know, as always, like feel free to, to step out if you need to. But just so everybody's aware, we're about to have like a heavy conversation that might have something to do with abuse. So uh, 57 minutes and 55 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one situation than I was with her at that time. You think you'd have some okay. intimate, relate, like something would happen and like nothing did. She wouldn't touch me. She, she wouldn't like talk to me. And Don't then she would that. like, just say mean things, you know, like that. And it sucked. But, I mean, you already hold my hand, so that's a better start than that. She wouldn't even do that, like it was crazy. So. How would you not? Like all I wanted to was hold your hand. My past relationships, men have really not shared their feelings at all, usually, but if they do, it's only because I've shared first and pulled it out of them. So that's making me feel really comfortable. And I really admire that because it's hard for men to share their feelings and he's actually doing it first, which is very new for me. So it's a nice change. Oh, well, fun fact about me, I've, I actually have um, vacation anxiety with other people, okay. but Fair. because when I'm on vacation with someone, that's when I'm really me. Yeah. And I never, I always had anxiety about like, well, if they see me as me for this many days in a row, there's something there's not, they're not gonna like about me. What are, you, what are you worried that someone would not like about you? I don't know, just like me being me all the time because I'm a little, you know, like I'm a little crazy. I have my moments. Have it's you had any relationships really that were like you. horrible or that were absolutely stand out? I mean, Most have you had one that like really stands out kind of like what I explained? Sorry. Honestly, I mean, this was so long ago, but my first relationship ever, I was very okay. young. Hold on, pause. Really quick. Um, Chris complaining about his previous girlfriend and the complaints being that she was not as physically affectionate with him as he would have liked again on its own that's just a nice emotional disclosure about somebody's emotional needs and i think it's important to celebrate uh especially men being communicative about their emotions like nicole was saying and in tandem with everything else that we have heard chris say it's an eyebrow raise from me right the question for me is immediately like to what degree was that past partner being pressured 
were judged for not being uh, the amount of physically involved that Chris felt like was owed to him, you know? Um, so again, this is, I think, another important PSA about how context matters and how, like, this is why I tell you guys to talk to your safe people about these problematic traits when they come up, because it's not a question of whether one red flag is enough for you to run, right? Like, I don't think that's a fair expectation, but when we create a, like, verbal paper trail (laughs) by having these conversations with our safe people who we know can help to create, um like a discourse about our safety and our well-being in these relationships, um, then when we have all of these things come up, then our community can help to sort of reflect that back to us in this mirror-like fashion to be like, hey, you know, like this seems to be a trend or this seems to be a pattern. So like notice those things, be uh, comfortable discussing those things with your safe people and know that like Voicing these things as potential concerns doesn't make you nitpicky, doesn't make you an asshole, you know? Like, this is an important thing for us to be doing. This is why, like, communal relationships are a a key factor in preserving our safety, especially as folks who are being targeted by misogyny, you know? Um... Yes, Joe, that's the other thing. Um, Joe said, feels manipulative, and then in quotes, she wasn't affectionate enough, but you won't be like that, right? And, like, very much that, right? Right. Um, this can convey an attitude of expectation and especially knowing that Nicole seems to be really apt to kind of jump in there and, uh, be like, oh, well, I would never be like that. Who wouldn't want to hold your hand, right? Like, again, it's an eyebrow raise from me, um, for us to voice it in this way, especially because like this disclosure didn't come along with like, and you know, that's fine because that was her boundaries, but I just am sensitive about being rejected. And so that hurt my feelings, right? Like, that's a very different disclosure, but it wasn't that. And so it seems almost like the statement here is that like other people's behavior is the vehicle by which I derive my self-worth. And so therefore you have to behave the way I think you ought to behave. And like that sucks, you know, just again, worth noting. Also, again, I think this conversation or this disclosure that Nicole is about to make is um, related to abuse and toxic relationships. So again, fair warning, uh, please take care of yourselves. We're at 59.27. Pressing play in three, two, one. It was so toxic. I mean, I was literally told, like, you are not worthy of love. Like, you're lucky that I even like you. Oh, my God. When I was like, okay, yeah, you're right. Oh. Stupid, but, you know, when you're so in it, you just believe it. Because you're like, this person who I really care for is telling me this. I believe them. And, and the expert's master with me this with a cigarette. You. Jesus. Like, that's horrible. Said, oh, my God. If you love me, let me burn you with a cigarette. I was like, okay. Okay, so this woman has been genuinely... It's a constant... Okay, hold on. First of all, this woman just disclosed what is actually like a terribly harrowing tale of being abused. And the experts, first of all, were like, this is fine. Let's put this woman on a really exploitative and emotionally taxing reality TV show. Instead of being like, wow, you deserve support and resources. Let's refer this person to therapy. Um, But on top of that, they matched her with this fool. This is so unsafe and like this makes me really nervous about this whole situation. This is really not okay. I mean it goes without saying obviously that someone treating Nicole or like anybody that way is awful and never appropriate. Um, But this is again – yeah. No, of course, Meyer. Yeah, abuse, point blank, period. Um, Hi, Layla. Terrible timing. I'm so sorry. Uh, Nicole just made a disclosure about uh, past abuse that she survived in her most recent relationship, I believe. But a past relationship generally. I know. That's the other thing about this. Jamie in Discord said, wow, I hate when, or I fucking hate when shows do this. Um, This is the other thing that's hard about this is that Nicole is being pressured into disclosing this on TV. You know, this feels like a violation of her privacy. Okay. She said when she was very young. Thank you, Coda. I didn't catch that. Her first relationship. Okay. So I was wrong. It was not her most recent relationship. It was her very first relationship. So this happened a while ago, but clearly is like still a, a pretty, um, poignant trauma for her obviously like you know understandably so hi facts <laughs> unfortunately awful timing uh yeah river Willman. um just because i know you said something earlier for what it's worth we're still talking about abuse and stuff that might be a button pusher for you so do be mindful of that um yes okay hattie this is such a good point hattie in discord said how does this give him uh purchase for physical contact for what it's worth as like helpful education Obviously, therapists are educated about this because therapists touching their clients at all is like really a gray area that like generally speaking, we're encouraged to steer away from. Um, 
but especially in moments like this, you don't know what somebody's comfortability is or also what their trauma triggers are, right? Like she just disclosed that she had been physically abused and his reaction is to touch her, right? Which is very human and I can understand that. And also for what it's worth, do practice being aware that like touching somebody when they're disclosing something that's really traumatic could actually make it worse. It I mean, generally speaking, it's good practice regardless of the situation um, to just ask like, hey, is it okay if I hold your hand? Or even to like just hover your hand over their arm or their hand and be like, is this okay? Right? It doesn't take a lot of time. It's not really disruptive. It's not necessarily going to create like a thing. Um, But it does still convey that like I'm not, it's a checking in with boundaries, you know? Like this is, again, pretty, I don't know, I would say like standard par advice. Um, yes, exactly. Yeah, you can always ask, like, do you need a hug? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is something that could so very easily push somebody into like full blown trauma activation territory. And that's like so not okay. Okay, uh, we're at one hour and three seconds. Again, like, you know, really loud and serious trigger warning for discussions of um, intimate partner violence and physical emotional abuse. So please do take care of yourselves. Um, okay, we're pressing play. Pressing play in three, two, one. Okay. okay. Just a constant reminder that the past is there, and he just made me feel like I was so not worthy of love. So every relationship after that, I went into it like I'm not worthy, so I have to prove myself. And then I never wanted a relationship because I was so sick of pretending. Oh. I know now that I'm deserving love, I'm worthy of it, but sure. I was once a different person, and now I am changed for the better. So. I honestly feel like you should never have to sacrifice who you are to make someone else happy. And your past matters to me. Like, I care about what happened. It's nothing I can change, but, like, it tells me about what you've been through. And that story you just shared with me, like, you probably don't share that with many no. people. No. And, like, same with me. Like, I don't like bringing up those past things because they're not easy to talk about. <laughs> it feels so good to have someone be so upfront because I've never really had that before. But I feel like I can be that with you. And that's, like, important. We're both fully committed. Yeah. And that means a lot. I admire her strength. I admire her beauty. I admire her courage. I can't say that enough. Like, I won't take any of that for granted. Like, it means a lot that she was able to open up like that to me. I know, and now we've shared My it My message to her exes, they're lost. They let her go and treated her the way they did, and it's my gain. So, like, I'm truly happy to be her husband. I honestly feel like I've known her my whole life, not just three days. It's an odd way to phrase that. Also, for what it's worth, the fact that he centered himself in this moment is really annoying to me. Again, contextually, I, it's annoying. If this were just on its own or existing in a vacuum or somebody who hadn't demonstrated any red flags at this point, fine, right? Like, it's a somewhat normal thing to do, I guess. Um, But still. um, Hold on, hold on. Um, I miss what happened, but yeah, just as a reminder, please do be careful about the things we're sharing in chat, especially because, um, content like this generally can be activating, but especially to have stuff in the chat, um, that can be like the language, uh, can be activating or triggering for folks. Um, it's important to keep in mind that the chat is like a communal space, right? Like we're all basically like in a, a large warehouse yelling at each other. Um, so if the mods have removed one of your comments or muted you or something like that, it's, I mean, I trust the mods here. I'm assuming it's because they've made a judgment call that something you said could have been, um, hurtful to someone in the comments or in the chat, not out of malice, but just again, sometimes because, um, people's sensitivities are, um, things that we might not specifically know about. So, uh, thank you in advance for being respectful and kind to our mods and for trusting their judgment. Um, do, 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 <laughs> lose it. What the hell? I must run that out loud. Oh my God. <laughs> Facts. I'm screaming from the other side of the warehouse. Uh, we do love our mods. Yeah. Shout out to the mod team here because the mods are the realest. Um, I know this is serious, but I did like the picture in my head of us all yelling to each other in a big warehouse. I mean, that is kind of what it is. Like, you know, we're all like just being loud in a shared space together. So it's important to me that y'all be mindful of that shared space. You know, be respectful of that. Okay, let's keep going. Um, One hour, one minute and 34 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Okay, we really don't need the... I physically 
<laughs> on Married at First Sight, the honeymoon heats up. Okay, we're gonna watch that, so I don't need a preview about it. Um, okay, so Tatum, yeah, I didn't realize that it was your comment, but again, for what it's worth, if the mods have made a judgment call, I trust their judgment, and so we can um, maybe not label it as trauma dumping, but also acknowledge that whatever language was used, I didn't see it. Um, Mom, oh yeah, good get call, Gems. I don't know why I have cat cam off. Um, whatever language was used was something that the mods didn't feel okay uh, having included in chat. So whether we label it as trauma dumping or not, in my opinion, is like irrelevant. Um, the fact is that the mods made a decision to remove language that could be triggering to others. Um, and so I'm like trusting their judgment on that. Um, meeting ended early. What did I miss? Hi, Eames. Um, Nicole disclosed some really, really awful past abuse that she survived. Um, Chris centered himself, which whatever. Um, and oh, I don't know at what point you left, but uh, one of the couples is not currently in Jamaica where everyone else is honeymooning because, um, because. I can't remember his name. I think it was Shaquille had like a research presentation or something. So they're missing out on the honeymoon and they're in Jackson, Mississippi while everybody else is doing honeymoon things. <laughs> We're all guests in Mickey's warehouse. Oh no. Okay. Um, boop, boop, boop. Hold on. Everybody entertain yourselves for two seconds. I want to check something. Uh, Thank you to our mods, by the way. Okay, yeah, thank you guys for that. Um, have I heard of the burned haystack dating method? No. Georgiana, please share. What is that? <laughs> Marshall DeMarcathan. Um, what gets me is how... How do people commit to abusive actions uh, even think of such cruelty? Honestly, solid question. Uh, all right, hold on one second. I like that we have an echelon pets <laughs> command. Um, we can butt and <laughs> scratch the babies. Yeah, Maria. The mods added a command in Nightbot that allows you guys to, like, virtually pet. <laughs> um, all of the pets, actually. But Olivia specifically gets butt scratches because she likes butt scratches. Okay, hold on. Um, okay. Oh, never mind. Okay, I was going to address it, but the mods took care of it. Bless up to our mods. Okay. Um, ba -ba -ba. Basically, you learn how to identify problematic behaviors and why you get the ick. Uh, so more confident in writing guys off quickly. Oh, 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 hold on. I missed the first part of that. Mm. So this guy is suggesting may go to a crappy... May go to a crappy place instead of on their honeymoon because he's using a rhetorical strategy called test and retreat oh, oh, oh okay it's basically the idea that you're looking for a needle in a haystack and you want to burn through the guys as quickly as possible interesting but basically learn how to identify problematic behaviors and why you get the ick okay huh it's the most logical and magnificent approach for dating i've ever seen that's really interesting i'm very curious about that i i'm gonna look up that article because i'm curious like what the context is or like the um, background is, you know? Okay, let me check when my food is going to get here. Ah, oh, rude. They're picking up my order now, but they moved the delivery time back. So it's supposed to arrive between 3.03 and 3.09 now instead of 2.50 something. Express my ass. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. Um... 
three minutes and 43 seconds for this episode. We're just going to watch this episode until my food gets here and then we'll take a break. Um, so we're at three minutes and 43 seconds of episode five now. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Nope, this is correct. Three minutes and 43 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. An intimate look at what their future will look like as husband and wife. First night in Jamaica, first night in the honeymoon. How are you feeling? I feel great. I think we're going snorkeling or something like snorkeling. that. Snorkeling, yes, I can't wait. Yeah, I ain't been nice since like, I was a kid, so I'm really looking forward to that. Rolling out. For the moment, excursion. A little waterfall action. Look, check out the freshness of the Jamaican water spilling out of the side of the mountain. <laughs> That's descriptive. It's going to be cool. We don't need music, thank you. Oh, Enjoying the service. Okay, that breakfast looks you good, baby. You relax. I'm like, there's paradise in front of me and next to me. And then he brought me French toast, so there was paradise in front of me. Nice. So I'm feeling all the magic and joy today. Last night was amazing. Like, I mean, I know it was deeper than we probably normally would have done for a first day at honeymoon, but it was it was nice because like obviously we had to you, talk Christine. about that stuff, kind of talk about each other's past. It's important to know what we've been through. I'm excited to create new memories that can, you know, make those other ones just disappear. We both did this for a reason. We wanted to find our person <laughs> that we're meant <laughs> to be with and no, kind of wish. build a life with. Yeah, I mean, it's not she like... She actually is named after Imogen Heap, like, the wife. music artist. But, but like, we are, like, it's, it's weird because we are married. I feel like we are <clears> dating, <throat> but we're just hitting the important things first, which is good because, honestly, that's what I hated about dating is I would talk to someone for like three months and then we'd have those tough conversations and realize we're not on the same page about anything and I felt like those three months were wasted. I hate to say decision day because three I don't even want to think about that. not a long time. On decision day I don't want to say well I didn't really get to know him. Like I want to know both of us. I want us yeah. to confidently know each other and we won't know everything but I want us to make a confident decision oh. based on that. You know, right now I'm just enjoying getting to know you, like building up our relationship, and you know, hopefully then it'll be an easy decision. Oy, oy, oy. I wouldn't say I'm in love with Nicole yet, but I definitely can see myself falling for her. I think she's pretty great, and it's been a long time since I felt like this happy about somebody. So it just it feels amazing right now, and like I'm just enjoying the moment and hoping it continues to last. I just am really annoyed by this rhetoric that like I got married at first sight because I didn't want to have to have this like three month in realization that we're not on the same page. Like, so you wanted to do that while you're legally tied together Morning, instead? Morning, got some breakfast. <laughs> yes. We'll make some mimosas. So to our first, to first. make it. All right, that was kind of dangerous. Hey. <laughs> we still made it. <laughs> There's your smell of bacon without eating it. I smell it. You can smell it. I'm curious what his dietary restrictions are. Oh, good. Does he just not like it, or is it like a I love bacon. sensitivity thing? You eat it every day? Bacon? <laughs> I mean, it sounded like judgment. I didn't mean no judgment. I'm just asking. No. You ate it yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. You not... ate it the day after the wedding. Oh, it is a religious thing. OK, Georgiana got it. You eat it every day. Not every day, but. What? Oh, 75% of the time? We'll say probably like 50% of the time. We're gonna save some more pigs going forward. <laughs> Maybe we'll do two days. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just so, let people make their own choices about their own what food. What have been like, how have like your previous relationships been? Like why do you think they didn't work? Oh, probably 80% me. Just timing, like, you know not being ready to be married. Like, maybe if I had met them later, or if I was more mature, like, it probably could have worked out. Aria, that's so exciting. A lot of times in the past, like, Congratulations, friend. it could be like the most minute thing that would like throw me off and I just like give up. I met like amazing people. It's yeah. Just, it was just me. What about yourself? Um, that felt I feel like, like a well, dishonest answer. For, Hold on, can we talk about that? Because he, yeah, Lilybug. <laughs> Lilybug in Discord said, wait, is he lying about having previous relationships? By his own admission, he's never been in a serious relationship before. Also, I just realized the speed is not at 1.3. Rude. Um, by his own admission, he said that he's not been in serious relationships before. But then when she asked him about them, to be fair, he did take accountability to say that it's mostly him. But that feels like a misrepresentation of what he's told the experts and the cameras, which is that he hasn't had serious relationships. 
that feels like kind of a misdirection. I don't know. I just don't know that I love that. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah, Miss Mothman, you're not wrong. Yeah. It was like a strange kind of, like, skirting of the issue. Um, yeah, also, for what it's worth, just leave people the fuck alone about their own food choices. It's none of your good goddamn business what anybody else chooses to fuel their bodies with. Um, and unless it's something that's, like, actively creating a danger for you because of a food allergy or something else, like, we don't really need to communicate about, like, whether or not something you're eating is okay or whether we want them to eat more or less of that. Not your business, not your body. Just, like, shut up about it. Um, but, yeah, this, the way that he... Which, like, Scanlan, valid. Maybe he is embarrassed. And I would argue that if we've made the decision to legally, financially tie ourselves together through the virtue of this experiment, then you owe it to the person who has also taken a leap of faith on you, to be honest. That, like, you know, 80% of my past relationships probably haven't worked because of me. But to be honest, they weren't really very serious relationships anyways. You know? That, like, you don't have to disclose all of that up front, right? That's, like, maybe uh walking the middle line of like at least you're being more honest but you're not having to be like super upfront about it but like feels less i don't know less like you're skirting the issue i guess um i'm super sensitive to someone commenting on my food because of my ex alexandra yes like and you are allowed to have all of your feelings about that because people are sensitive about their food being commented on for so many reasons, right? And especially in a world where we're acknowledging and honoring the impact of things like diet culture and like especially the way that misogyny um, informs social and cultural rhetoric about the way that uh, mostly women, you know, like eat food, or I guess people who are targeted by misogyny um, eat like, ew, again, just shut up about it. Uh, the wife in this couple is Jasmine. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Jasmine and Eris. Okay. Seven minutes and 49 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Me, all of my previous relationships, I walked away from as well. Yeah. And I think it was just so much of me not fully getting everything that I needed out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I know mm -hmm. another thing that I did was my schedule, like, I'm a workaholic, so yeah. I know that at some point in our marriage, I'm gonna have to scale back, and I'm not used to doing that. Yeah, so like, you know, you got a super busy schedule, and then on top of that, you know, you have to help your mom out. So I mean, I'm willing to be there, like whether that's getting food or bringing food to the hospital or walking the dogs, walking <laughs> these 20 dogs, you know, while you're going, like, you know, whatever way I can be supportive, because that's a lot, you know, so I don't want you to like have all that going on. Litter box here, I hope your yard work me. goes yeah, good. I'm down to do that too. You like my mom, and so. She loves me, so oh. that'll make her feel better too, you know what I mean, so. I don't mind going to the hospital, you know, lifting her spirits up. For like the five hour chemo yeah. process. Right. Sometimes I will get into my shutdown mode just mm -hmm. because seeing my mom go through that is right. hard. So I'm just, I'm gonna have to be very conscious to make sure that Thank I'm not you shutting you out because I don't want you to see me more vulnerable because I don't right. really show people that, you know, that side of me. I mean, but just the fact that I know that ahead of time, you know, if I kind of see you, your energy levels coming down because of that. You know, that's what I'm here for, you know, to balance it out, like help you feel better, lighten that load. The fact that he said, you know, I'll help out any way I can. I'm not used to having that help, so it's definitely needed. I'm just hopeful that he stays the true to that, so low. but the fact that he's all on Hi, board, Kylie. I love that. All right, we got it. Him being willing to help while she's in the middle of like family difficulties is so not impressive or noteworthy. This is basic ass. I'm not an asshole territory. I am, I'm starving. Hopefully some mimosas. Some champagne. Yeah. I like it. It's never too early to drink on your honeymoon. I agree. <laughs> first night with my husband on our honeymoon. It was great. It is my first time out of the country. I am so excited. Uh, apparently there's an outdoor shower, which is so new to me. Every time I wash my hair, I just feel like I'm in a Pantene commercial. So it was great. We just relaxed and talked really and it, it feels really natural. Cheers. Here we go. Here's Here we go. to today. Yeah. And, our honeymoon. and to you. And to you. So how did you think our um, our second night together went? I thought it went good. Like, you're not like a crazy, loud, obnoxious sleeper. You're not like taking up the whole bed. Yeah. I think I was on top of the covers instead of under them. Yeah, did my body pillow get in your way? No. Yeah. Was it in between us? I don't remember. Yeah, no. I didn't I'm think so. so. Jealous. We had a little cuddle up. Yeah. We had night cuddles, morning cuddles. Yeah. I was satisfied. <laughs> good. What are you looking forward to today? 
What's the best case scenario today for you? I mean, honestly, I just kind of feel like if we're together, then we're going to have a good time. Okay. I like that answer. Yeah. How are you going to top that answer? Okay, yeah, I'm not going to top it. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm looking for today. I just want to be with you. Finally Arriving to Jamaica is like a relief. School is finally over, and now it's time to enjoy our honeymoon. And at the airport, they asked, are any newlyweds in the house? And we both looked at each other and said, oh, shoot. Like, that's us. Yeah, us, us, us. <laughs> so it really feels amazing. Thank of course, he's wearing this shirt. This is, and it's black and gold. Look at that. Yeah, they got some fruits. It looks delicious. And champagne. Let's, yeah, Thank let's you. check out this view first. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is what I've been waiting for. Look at this ooh. view. It's so pretty. Nice. Lovely. I am so excited. We finally made it to Jamaica. I was stuck in Jackson. I'm like, Lord, please help me get to Jamaica fast. Last week was I a lot so you know, mad. school. And having to split my time between you, meeting you mm -hmm. for one, then having to say like, oh, I got to go run off to school. So now it's kind of like, OK, I got a lot of making up to do, devoting my time and my commitment to you here. I know education is important, so I was happy to be there, even though I wasn't initially. <laughs> you was happy, like, but at not first, happy. Yeah, mm. at first I was like, oh my god. It made me I feel was... better that you were there, honestly. I felt like well, she didn't have a choice. Just knowing so... someone is alone the journey with you now, it's kind of like, oh yeah, I gotta finish the race. Like someone is on the side, rooting for like, you, rooting me on, yeah. like, and saying like, can't wait till I reach that finish line. So it really made me feel good. Good. That's you what did, I'm here you, for. You did that. I got mad at first sight because I was looking for someone like Kirsten. I actually needed not wanted, needed someone to come in my life and just be the person that she is. Like, someone supporting me, like, actually showing up. It's one thing to say, like, you know, I wish you well, I'm gonna check in on you, but actually to be there in a moment. Yeah, Jess, like, he's in whoa, school. whoa, that's like security that I needed, that someone really cares that I'm PhD. going after my goals. I really, really like her. And I think, I think we're gonna have an amazing time in Jamaica. Here's to us getting to know each other. Cheers, Cheers to the Dylan. To the Dylan. Hi. This is going to be a really good honeymoon. No, oh, what music? No, Christine, that's valid. Uh-huh, yeah, the producer influenced so, me. Uh, I feel like you're probably So, we're right. well into our journey, about an hour and a half. We've asked for directions four or five times now. We have seen a lot of bars along the way, so we might just pit stop there. Yeah. We saw a billiard, play a little pool. Yep. Maybe do some goat yoga. We have seen a lot of goats. A lot of ox, oxes. Lots of things going on. Oh, man. What an experience. Well, well, it's always an adventure, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to get through the road, and water eroded the road. So now we're detoured. Yeah. I don't oh. know at this point. This I feel like that movie, Touristas. What is that? You know, where they harvest your organs for profit. Oh, amazing. Let's not go there. Yeah. OK. Well, at least it's pretty out here. Yeah. We've got a storm coming in, And we too. got a storm brewing. Amazing. Yeah. Jamaica. OK. Let's be clear about a couple of things. First of which, I don't want to devalue what can be a very legitimate anxiety for some folks about being in like a country you're not familiar with, where you have very few resources in terms of like, like formal support for yourself, right? Like you're not driving yourself. Um, but also, right? Like, this situation, though, first of all, it feels very racist. Yes, Christine. Uh, but second of all, it's important that we acknowledge the fact that they literally have like a team of producers and cameras. You know, like, in my opinion, I could understand this anxiety a lot more if you were like renting a car and just driving around in some neighborhood in Jamaica that you had never been to. Right. And you're just like a group of people. <laughs> like, Sure. But you have literally an entire production team who's dedicated to like not just your safety, but also like literally organizes all of the logistics for you. So like annoying. Sure. But the the insinuation that you're gonna have your organs har harvested is like it feels racist in nature it also just feels prejudicial and gross i just know that this man posts on facebook about the border crisis and stuff it's just it you know it's giving that energy and i don't i don't like it literally it's not like they don't have a gps or something just ugh. um <laughs> the, yeah the charmingly awkward situation music okay I think my food is getting here. Um, 
<laughs> Mapine, exactly. Yes. Um. Bam, bam, bam. Okay. Uh, 15 minutes and 16 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Oh, I was like, hello. Bianca Boop, literally. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Dominique and McKinley. All right. I'm a little skeptical. Yeah, I don't know. Are we going to fall out of this thing? I've never been on, I've never operated or sailed a sailboat. Me don't neither. tell Clint so that. So I say we don't go past that buoy. This one or the far one? Well, I say the far one. <laughs> I say the close one. I say the far one. If we fall out of this thing. We'll be okay. Are you a good swimmer? I'm a great swimmer. I can swim. It just seems Wait, Ali, seriously? Ali said this man trims his chest hair in the exact shape of the neckline of his tank top. It's deeply unsettling. Stop. Does he? Hold on, we're going back now. We have to look. Okay, my food got dropped off. I'm definitely going to get that in a second. But we're going back to look at Clint's chest hair, first of all. Okay. We're at 14.36. Pressing play in three, two, one. Lots of things going on. Oh, man. What an experience. Well, well it's always an adventure, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to get through the road and water eroded the road. So now we're detoured. Yeah. I don't know at this point. This I feel way. like that movie. Oh, he was shirtless in bed. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on. Fast forwarding. Wait, when were they shirtless? Where was that? <laughs> you must show YouTube clips just. Okay, hold on a lot. I'm trying to find it. Like, when was this? Like, a long time ago, probably. Hold on, I'm rewinding. Yeah, it was way early. It had to have been. Okay. That's them. Day three of marriage. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, <gasps> oh no. Okay, hold on. Rewind. And that's scary. Are you ever afraid to kiss me? This is like the I preview really thing. Bread. Oh no, he kind of does. <laughs> it is a weird shape. Maybe his chest hair just grows weird. I don't know. <laughs> oh no. Does he have weird chest hair? Hold on, we're fast forwarding some more. It's a little hair tank. Uh, he, yeah, he either does and it's patchy uh, or it looks like there's some right in the middle. Yeah, Lupine, I am inclined to agree. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go get my food. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my food. We'll figure out the timing of this when we get back. Um, it is 3.08 right now, so we'll be back probably in like 15 minutes so that I can actually eat, um, which will be like 3.10, 3.15 from now is like 3.25, right? Yeah. Um, make sure that you go to the bathroom and then you get some water and take care of your bodies and uh, we'll be right back, okay? Um, okay, I have to press all these buttons by myself because my stuff doesn't work. Okay, I'll be back.
Hello, friends. <coughs> that was such a comment for me to walk in on Nailfire. Okay. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Sorry, Christine. <laughs> um, do, do, do. <laughs> Facts. Who are you antagonizing? Are you yelling at my bot again? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, beep, boop, boop, boo. Hi, thank you. I was playing a game on my phone and then Mickey talked and I jumped. I'm sorry, Christine. I feel so bad when I jump scare you guys. I really don't mean to. I don't mean it. Um, how was the fondue? Oh, so good. Okay, yes. Thank you for reminding me because um first of all y'all were right and you should say it about the fondue it was delicious um but also i am glad that i ordered the um potato wedges also because the dressing that comes with the potato wedges is just so good my bruschetta was delightful loved it <laughs> Hellfire, that's okay no oh, travis i'm sorry i feel like i jump scare all of you on discord so much Okay, that's valid. Apples terrify you because you had braces for too long. Yeah, the sweet potato wedges are so good. They're like soft uh, sweet potatoes, like really big sweet potato wedges that are soft and cooked, obviously. Um, but it's this like spicy tahini dressing and it's delightful. <laughs> Bless you guys for tagging each other and letting people know that I'm back. Mm -mm -mm. Fondue, oh my god, and no one invited me. I know, facts, I'm sorry. It was really good, though. The Although, I will say one beef that I have about the fondue, actually, is that there was entirely too much fondue and not enough bread. Or maybe that's, it's, there was the right amount of fondue, not enough bread, though. Needs more bread. I need more toast, because I enjoyed the fondue. I still have some leftover bread, to be clear, but, um... Hellfire, what the hell? Is my audio off? Please don't tell me that. Is it? Can you all hear me in Discord? No, surely you can hear me in Discord. Because um, I jump scared y'all. Yeah, it looks like it's on. Okay. Um, it might be uh, malfunctioning, Hattie. So if you need to hop out of the room and then, and then come back. Um, sometimes that does the trick. Mickey got mushroom fondue. Yes. Oh yeah. Sorry. Um, the food that I got was from a place called Postino. I don't know if you can see the bag back there. Nope. You can't. It's behind the overlay. Um, but I got a bruschetta board and mushroom fondue and sweet potato wedges from a place in Tucson called Postino. That's like 
their whole shtick is like charcuterie basically they make like little snacky boards and shareable foods and stuff and it's so good so what highly recommend do uh endorse postino <laughs> but no on the sweet potatoes i can't do the texture that's valid honestly I'm so glad to have this community of people happy about food. <laughs> I just worked my last day at a job where there was some serious body negativity and diet culture and my brain needs to be cleansed. K okay, Berg, that's terrible. I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm glad that you're here too because we love food and you should. Like food is a necessary part of survival and it's also like a really enjoyable part of our emotional satisfaction. Yeah, the bruschetta is so good. Yeah, I didn't know they had fondue either, Eames, until I looked on um, DoorDash. And lo and behold, um, they had mushroom fondue and it was delightful. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Your sushi was bad. I feel like you should get like a credit, like when that happens on DoorDash, um, that like it wasn't good, like not bad enough for me to return it, but bad enough that I should get a coupon or something. Give me a sweet little treat. <laughs> so an apology. Homie, I love snack food too. I always see the finger food on Real Housewives. My brain wants to cry because I know it's wasted on them. You know, I think that all the time about people who are so obviously not going to eat food that looks amazing. Like, you're wasting it. Give it to me. Fact said we need a girl strip. Where to? Popcorn chicken. <laughs> Mickey made me hungry. <laughs> I mean, listen. Wow, you can get Postino in 45 minutes. Okay, dope. Wait, is that the, I wonder if that's the same Postino. Hold on. I'm so curious. I kind of want to look it up now. Is that invasive? I want to know if there's Postino in other places. <laughs> Locations. There has to be, right? Yeah, there is. <gasps> Fun. Uh, Mark, highly recommend. <laughs> I live in Portland. It was a joke. But I think there are other locations, though. <laughs> it looks like that's a real place. I'm telling you, if you can get it, you should. Um... We go into the countryside. Have you ever tried Ha Long Bay? No, I don't think I have. That sounds fun. Also, relationships with food are so complicated. If you have a problem with alcohol or something, you can just not, but you got to deal with food every single day. Absolutely. Hi, bye. For people who have problematic relationships with other substance, abstinence, abstinence is an option, uh, but it's not with food. So you end up having to do uh, a lot of like really overwhelming work like every day, all the time. Um, and I feel like people don't appreciate that. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you, Miss Mothman. She said, um, that the locations for posting are in Arizona, California, Colorado, Georgia, and Texas. Texas. <laughs> it's because I read the word elitist after that. And then I put all of those all in one word. Hi, Mundy O'Reilly. So excited to catch your first live streams. I listen to your videos in the shower. They really help keep me motivated to keep me in the shower. Oh, to get in the shower. Yay. Uh, okay, Mundy, I feel so honored. But also thank you for coming to the live stream. Um, it's a Vietnamese restaurant in Tucson. Oh, I loved going there when I was at U of A. I've never heard of that. I'll have to look at it. I um, am woefully ill-educated about Vietnamese food outside of like pho, basically, um, and would like to learn more about it. Um... Oh, thank you, Fax, for the trigger warning. Okay, everything's biggest in testis. <laughs> uh, all right, are we ready? I think we should get back into the show. I do need to figure out where we were at, though, because we... Okay, there's the school stuff. Okay, Clint being racist. Oh, okay, great. This is, like, uh, about the vibe. Mm, sailing... Okay, great. Um, Y'all made me so jealous when you and Aaron talked about a soup plantation. I wanted to go so badly, but they didn't have one open in LA anymore. Christine, I'm sorry. If it makes you feel any better, we didn't actually end up getting sweet tomatoes because the line was out the door and wrapped around the building. So we tried to go twice now and both times the line has been out of control. So we ended up going somewhere else, but... I know. I miss sweet tomatoes, too. I want to go. I want pizza bread. I want soup. I want to get a little teeny tiny little cone of ice cream at the end of my meal because they're so cute. They're adorable little waffle cones. But as it were, I'm going to have to wait a few weeks, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I've heard that they closed the 
soup plantation slash sweet tomatoes locations basically everywhere except for the one here in Tucson that's reopened just recently. Um, it's a restaurant, Scout. Um, but word on the street is that they're judging whether or not to reopen the other ones based on how successful it is here in Tucson. And judging by the fact that the line is wrapped around the goddamn building every time I try to go there, <laughs> I would assume that hopefully that bodes well for other locations opening. I'm about to go to bed and then I'll be gone for two weeks. Oh, Christy, don't tell me that. Oh, I'm not ready for that. I'm excited for you, but I'm sad for me. I hope that you do have the most fun, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> what a beautiful drawing. <laughs> Leo, I love it. Um, I know I haven't had fun in a really long time. My 10 girl ducks lay 60 to 70 eggs a week. That is an absolutely ludicrous amount of eggs, Natalie. Oh, my. That's wild. Uh, no, I know, but you added all of the snot stuff in there. I see you. Um, the restaurant is, or you, oh, oh, about sweet tomatoes. I love fresh tomatoes from the garden. I make sure we do at least one cherry tomato plant just for snacking. That's smart, snacks. <laughs> snacks. <laughs> Your name is Socks in the Dryer, but I almost called you Snacks in the Dryer. Um, regardless, I wish that I could grow plants like that. I don't, I'm okay at being a houseplant person, but um, like actual growable crops is, it, it, I have a contentious relationship with those. Okay, I think we should get back into the episode. We're at 15 minutes and 57 seconds. We're going to press play in three, two, one. If we were on the kayak, I would full blown probably not go. Oh, that's so if loud. If you say that one more time, I'm just going to be like, fine, stay here. I'm going. No, 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 I'm going, I'm going. I got you. Hey hello, guys. hello. How are you doing? Hello. How are you doing today? Hi. <laughs> Socks, Great. that's true. Mac. Matt Stedman. Nice Tell to meet me. you. Nice, nice to meet you. I like the bright yellow in case I fall out of this thing. Oh, kind of a oh, tight okay. squeeze that's there. Cool. That's, cool. that's not a bad problem to have. You say you're a boob guy? Yeah, that looks perfect to me. <laughs> Don't ever get a boob job, just get a too small life jacket. Your husband will love it. <laughs> Let's do this. You have a great view. First of all. I have a good view. I have no complaints about this view. What oh, the I'm fuck? I'm so glad you're coming with us. I thought Mac was going to be driving us. Okay. I, like, sure, I guess, but I would be so off put no if a random you man just said that about go, me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this music is so embarrassing. Just watching them on their little boat. Like, this looks fun, I guess, but life jackets are the worst boobs. Yeah, you can see right to the bottom. Yeah. They're not sharks. You can see no sharks. sharks. Huh? What sharks? Nurse. You guys are messing with me now. That's so I'm scary. learning that Mac is very vocal with the things that like make him nervous. He is a little less adventurous than I am and a little more closed-minded than I would like. But maybe I just need to just like block those comments out because I know he's gonna do it anyway. <laughs> wow. Okay. Perfect day. Perfect water. Perfect wife. Perfect wife. <laughs> that was that was <laughs> Also, really quick, just to be nitpicky and annoying, can we just talk about the fact that they could adjust the the belts on her life jacket? Also, this is not at 1.3 speed. It reset itself again. I just turned it up to 1.3 speed just now, to be clear. Um, yeah, this is, I don't know, like, it's fine. It's, like, kind of nothing burger. Oh, hi, bye. Thank you for the $5. A summer recipe I made up. Mango pineapple salsa. Find the cubes of mango and pineapple, fresh mint, lime juice, and salt. Optional chili powder. Okay, delicious. I do love a good uh, fruit salsa. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, pineapple and tacos. Also slaps. There's a Mexican place by my house that makes, like, a really good uh, mango, pineapple, salsa kind of thing. It's delightful. The music is so obnoxious, Rosie. Yes. Uh, but the hi, bye. Thank you for sharing your recipe and uh, your $5 with us. I appreciate you. So these headphones are smashing my fucking ears. Okay, uh, 17 minutes and 54 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Let's go. Okay, 
They said from one royalty free B-roll right into the next one. Perfect, I love that for us. At least it's at one. I have to get down now. and dirty. No, you can get dirty. I've rode several ATVs. This is what I love to do. It excites me. You just held me hot. Well, at least okay. you got my hand. <laughs> I would not have oh, guessed shoot. that. But this is Shaquille's first time riding ATVs, and he may not be as thrilled as I am, but I see a smile on Shaquille's face, so let's just let loose. Ready? Oh, look at the music. Person is way more adventurous than I am. Woo! Riding ATVs, it's not something I was really looking forward to. The trauma comes from the accident because I'm always trying to be careful. Yes. And that's like my yeah. life. Like, a lot of accidents have happened in my life, and it's kind of like I'm always trying to like walk on eggshells. I feel like that's so different, though. Shaquille having a legitimate trauma about like moving vehicle accidents is so not the same as him being like not adventurous, I feel. Very cautiously right now. I have a need for speed, so pushing the throttle down as far as it can go. And Shaquille is so far behind me, and I'm like looking back, like, hey, yes. are you gonna keep up? Are you keeping up with me? He's traumatized. <laughs> this music is so shady. I'm really scared. This but poor hey, man. Every day is an opportunity to learn something about yourself. She wanted someone adventurous. Let's do this. Okay. Okay, like now I'm starting to get excited. This is a uh, kill totally different. It's just taking him a little bit more time to get out of that shell, but I am proud of Shaquille for doing that. I waited for you to like go further. You hit a rock and it like almost flipped back and I was like, whoa. No, no, I said, she's know. trying to take me out already. Now, now okay. you know you're not. <sighs> oh, this is beautiful. Wow. That was the first adventure. The first of many. I can appreciate, real quick, I can appreciate this like, I don't know, symbolic meaning of like, I don't know, him being willing to try adventuring things and things that are more her you know type of interest and also I don't know feels a little bit like tone deaf to tell this man who almost died in a car accident whose whole family almost died in a really traumatic car accident that like he's not being very fun for not wanting to drive fast like yeah you know I don't know I feel like this is different than someone just being like nervous like that's I don't know it feels a little judgy to me um good night Annika thanks for hanging out with us uh okay 20 minutes and 52 seconds pressing play in three two one that's all we're all good on the music thank you though okay. a waterfall today well, we're not in, giving up hope we're in the mountains now so there's a better chance of us getting a waterfall and hitting a vehicle <laughs> you know yeah the, the wheels are going Just right up on the switch <laughs> Extraordinary. Definitely an adventure. Yeah. I am appreciative of these the, the handles. The handles on the front. Of they, now I know why they're. They're here. not just open handles. These are. Yeah, I know why. For the here. love of God, I'm going to yeah. die. Handles. You're going to fall off a cliff. Hold on. Yep. It's kind of how I envisioned it all ending. <laughs> In death. Okay. What an adventure. <laughs> oh, okay. That's literally all the footage they have. <laughs> Nice to do some oh, thank you, thank yes, you. Yes, we're excited. Don't, don't let me drown, Gregory. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, we're doing snorkeling. Is that what's happening? Be okay. I only want to do one honeymoon. I want to have to put over. <laughs> this is our first full day. We just had a delicious breakfast. I might have had one mimosa too many, Dream but we're about to go snorkeling and enjoy the water and spend more time together and just continue to, you know, vibe and get to know each other. So I'm super excited. I'm going to lead you. Follow me. Okay. There's not a lot of instruction there. My husband is distracting me over there in the water because he looks good. He looks good without his shirt on. That's really fine. I don't need that. Okay, that's uh, so cute. A little snorkel kiss. That's lovely for them. Natalie, thank you for the six ninety nine. <laughs> Anyone need to relax their shoulders or their jaw? Me always. Thank you for the reminder and for the six ninety nine. <laughs>
I was struggling a little bit because the mask wouldn't fit in my beard, so I was getting like salt water in my mouth and my nose. Uh, but my wife, you know, she kept checking on me, showing her that nurturing side. No shaving the beard. She's still a stranger, but this is the very beginning of like, hopefully like a beautiful, you know, 30, 40 year marriage. Like we're making those important memories like right now. So hopefully 20 years from now, we can look back and be like, hey, you remember that one time when you were in Jamaica and the salt water was getting in your beard, you know, ha ha ha, all of that. But it's happening like right now. I would do it again, but do I would all, you would do it again? I would even just shave my beard down. Oh, no. I'm saying down, like trim it. No. Okay. Or we'll just have different equipment. We'll come right, up with our yeah, own yeah. equipment so that. Is that equipment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this wasn't beard safe. It wasn't. <laughs> we'll come with our own equipment. Okay. Yes. Finally. Let's see. I still don't see a waterfall, but it's only a two mile hike into the jungle and then you'll see it. I didn't bring my climbing okay. harness. There's no water falling. <laughs> I can't believe we actually made it. All right. I feel like Clint and I have been through the ultimate challenge, the ultimate honeymoon challenge. We got lost for a couple hours, um, and it took what felt like my whole life to get here. But um, it's been awesome having Clint by my side. He keeps me cool, calm, composed. Um, so we've had a good time, even in the midst of some crazy, bumpy, unexpected adventure. Beautiful. Look at this. This is my first time in the jungle. Is it really? Yeah. This is considered a jungle, right? Yeah, we'll call Rainforesty. it. Rainforesty. We'll Him being like, really? Yeah? <laughs> Are, are you hanging out in the Jamaican countryside like a lot of the time? Hello? Clint is so annoying, I swear to God. <laughs> um, do, do, do. Yes, I know that I think that all the time about people who go for like walks and hikes in their swimsuits. Like, I have entirely too much of my skin rubbing against itself to, for me to be doing that. Also, I'm not taking any length of a walk in fucking water shoes unless I'm being forced to. Unless I'm being coerced to where there's like a big pile of fucking money at the end or something. Like, I'm not doing that. I bet in 50 odd years there will be science to support that. Latin Americans store all their stress in their head and neck. Source vibes. Okay. Yeah. Hi, buddy. Let me know how that works out. Um, are they... There are, Scout in Discord said there are really awesome water shoes. And like, listen, I appreciate that. I do. But facts, I wish I could. I, you can touch her nose just as much as I can. <laughs> um, Yeah, I just, you know, I, they're basically like hiking sandals. Okay, yeah, like valid. And also my feet have <laughs> like no arch <laughs> like none whatsoever so if i don't have shoes that build in support for my feet i will be in trouble <laughs> i know what my feet are about and it's it's not survival that's for sure <laughs> okay um 25 minutes and eight seconds pressing play in three two one jungle you know i'm part okay, tarzan oh, okay. Okay. Thank Thank you, you, complexion yeah i'm gonna take this cover up off so we can Go wade in the water wade for a little in bit. A little easier. Got a natural little close up here. Yeah. What kind of close up was that? Ready? Yeah, let's get in. Why are they zooming in on her like, like that? I'm holding you again. I'm nervous. Yeah. I don't want to slip. Everything's slick out of the water. Yeah. Look at this. We made it. We made it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Worth the view, huh? Yeah. Our whole journey here. Yeah. I was surprised at how. Calm and relax. <laughs> like you had your cool glasses on. Yeah, you got a good poker face. Oh, is that no, what it was? No, no. Honestly, I think I just. Oh, Allie, thank you. I don't know. I've just learned to not stress over the things that I can't control. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you just uh, kind of being boss lady. <laughs> okay. I want to see you in your business because you're so wrapped up and enthralled in it. It's been your world for the last. I was doing payroll this morning. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you can help me calm down and not work as much. I've been looking for a little vice. I don't really sure. love to drink or go out. Anything. Maybe my vice will just be adventure. Okay. It's not a bad one to be addicted to. That's what I kind of love about stuff like this is, you know, maybe this is the path that's less traveled. Yeah. But I like things to be a mystery and like, you know, untouched. I'm not, I'm not shocked. Untainted. Yeah, you love to like live on the edge, not really know. Yeah. Mysterious, what's gonna happen. But that's I'm, like a little, I'm a little more structured, but I feel like you can get me out of my box a little bit. Yeah. You know, I like to go down the path least traveled, maybe a path not traveled at all. So this absolutely is, is completely what I was looking for as far as like sharing these unique experiences with somebody else. So yeah, I'm realizing more and more like Gina has her professional thing, but outside of that, like she's totally adaptable to whatever circumstance she's around. So yeah, we're working on some good okay. stories. They really drove all day to stand in this water and not swim in it, like hello? I would be so mad.
Like, my ass is finding a waterfall to swim in. I will be running around in the water oh, thing right now. That's rum tasting. Wow, well, welcome. How are you? To our private oh rum tasting. Oh my god. Especially for you guys. Aww. Wait, Nicole's bike shorts are so cute. Hold on, look. Look at these shorts. Those are so fun. Where did she get those? Need, need, need. Yes, Sid, literally. I would be under the waterfall. Um, Still a snake, still... <laughs> There is a snake, or is it one of uh, Fax's snake S snakes? <laughs> I know, Captain Casey. Internet activate. Where does she get these bike shorts from? Because I need them. They're so fun. Um, I know. I hate that Clint was talking about her like a dog that he was training. That's a really good point, Bianca Boop. He talks about everybody like through the lens of how they fit into his life, which is like very. I don't know, on par for like the cis white male. <laughs> I don't know. What are UFOs? That sounds familiar. I feel like I've seen an ad for those before. Aren't they like big ass, squishy, like foamy sandal things? Aren't they like slides? Sounds like me uh, about not stressing over fireworks in July. Wait, what? What, walking everywhere? Oh, yeah, how unwalkable the United States is. Yeah, no, it's impossible. Uh, da, da, da. UFOs are great. I wear my UFO sandals almost exclusively. Really? Oh, snake cam. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Let's keep going. Twenty-seven forty-five. Pressing play in three, two, one. Are you ready to start? Yeah, yeah. we're ready. Want awesome. some rum? There we go. I'm loving that vibe, and I'm loving that energy between you two. Thank you. Yeah. Loving that. All right. So this is forty percent alcohol. Oh well. Wow. We can sip this, right? It doesn't have to go down all at once. Well, I want you all to really have a grand time here, so we can take it all down. Cheers. Cheers. No, I will not be doing that. Oh, it's good. So how's that one? I'm it's awake good. now, sure. You're awake now? Oh, definitely awake, sure. All right, so we do have six more rounds to go for. Oh, wow. All right? My God. So now you'll try this one? Down the hatch, right? Ready? Down the hatch. All right, so cheers. 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 <laughs> Just you know, I thought it would be more than a few days before my husband would see me drinking this much in such a short amount of time, but I'm not a rum shot girl. My First of all, taking shots of anything <laughs> like that many times in a row is like really a lot. But second of all, the fact that it's rum just feels <laughs> rude. This is so fucked up on so many levels. First of all, this really feels like a producer orchestrated, like, you guys are going to get fucked up, <laughs> like, right now, which is, like, okay. Um, but also, like, that this is a thing that, like, we're just, like, seven shots of rum in the span of, like, I don't know. I don't even know how long we're going to be there. That's wild. That's so, so, so much alcohol. The, yeah, Scout related to that, yes. Um, there's so many jokes <laughs> down that rabbit hole. Oh, no. Yeah, I just am not a fan of this at all. It also just feels really unfair that they're, like, pressure Because she was like, we can sip it, right? And he was like, mm, no. Like, okay. This feels like producer interference to me, for sure. Uh, yes, yeah, seven shots is a lot. Yeah, that's like really, really a lot of alcohol. I might throw up in the beautiful ocean. Poor Nicole. Also, neither of these people like are are large people either. Neither of them are like particularly tall or like plus sized. So let's hope their alcohol tolerance is really high. God. Okay, let's keep going, I guess. 28 minutes and 42 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. I might uh, throw up in the beautiful ocean, but for now I'm living my best life. Third one's the charm. Cheers. Cheers. I was impressed. She's a small girl, and she was down in those shots just like I was, so that was pretty impressive. This no, was to 63%. Yeah. Awesome. I'm starting to feel a little rough, I think. <laughs> Take a whole foot off of you and imagine. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I'm not not drunk. I definitely would not drive any heavy machinery, just pretending we're at, like, a frat house in college. I thought it would be sip rum, sip rum, but it was, like, shot for shot of every rum they've ever made on the island of Jamaica from all time. All right, so look at this one. It says one, two, one, two. There you go. One, point, one, Can you go do that? One. Yeah, sure, why not? I'll yeah, do it with you guys. It. Our rum guy like today, Prince, showed dance. us some dance moves. A little bit of this, and then a point, 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 and then a little bit of that. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Oh. Uh, and you sway, sway. sway. 
a little bit of that. And it was, it was, good, it was a good time. Like, I'm feeling a little loose, feeling good. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll go dancing with Nicole tonight. This brings me back to a time I call old Nicole. What's old Nicole? Old Nicole was drinking a lot. I was pretty selfish because I wanted everything to be about me and me enjoying my best life. And I was out at bars all the time and, you know, just drinking and really living it up. And once I hit like 28, that's when I started my whole that? personal growth journey. Drinking. Moving to Nashville was part of that. And ever since I moved, I call her new Nicole. I know, I don't know why I do that, but I feel like it's cute. <laughs> you don't like it. Ugh. I feel so bad that she is in this situation. But also, can we talk about the fact that they didn't give them any food? Like, there's no, we didn't, not even like a, a little fruit platter, a little charcuterie, a couple of snacks. Like, we just took seven, eight shots of rum and like, no food for you. Hello? This is so unsafe. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I wonder if it's a requirement to be on the show to be willing to drink. I feel like, yes, Scanlon. I know that some sober people have been on kinetic content shows before, but I would not be surprised if they revise their casting choices moving forward because of that. Yes, yeah, grilled cheese, some pizza, sandwiches, anything. Yeah, no, not even, not even cheese squares, no fruit platter, not even sweets, no chocolate, no nothing. Hello? Like, come on. Okay, 30 minutes, 34 seconds, pressing play in three, two, one. No, it's cute. I probably won't stop, but. No, I mean, um, like, I'm very laid back. I like to be very calm, collective, even keel. Like, and it's not that I don't care. If I know I'm right, I will fight tooth and nail for that. But it takes a lot for me to get frustrated. Cool, calm, collective, Does it huh? bother you, and tell me the truth, I will not be offended, but does it bother you at all that I lose my cool a little easier than that? Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. Okay. I mean, I honestly don't know. But like, if you're taking it out of me, like, I'm not gonna stand for it. I promise I, just I wanna let you know that right it. now. Like, I'm not gonna take it. You shouldn't, like, good. I feel like old Nicole would've been a problem for me, to be honest, like, the selfishness and her being a little hot-headed and a little intense, you know, it's definitely something in the back of my mind that I'll keep an eye out for because I've dealt with that before and it's something that I definitely don't want. I don't want to be in a situation where like, you let your emotions get the best of you. First of all, that music was so ridiculous. But second of all, this like, how dare you, like you should never let your emotions get the best of you. Sorry, what? It, like, oh no, for sure. We're, you know, in my relationships, I like to draw the line at people being people. Disgusting. Having emotions, yuck. People having having trauma activations and, and temporarily <laughs> losing control of their ability to be perfectly in control of their emotions at all time. Disgusting. Oh, I could never be in a relationship with someone like that because what are they? A human? Like, be serious, Chris. Just look. The thing, the thing about this that gets me is that he was perfectly validating of her crying earlier and of her like talking about something that affected her. But because it wasn't directed at him, it wasn't anything to do with like a criticism or a critique of him. That's all fine. Right. It gave him the opportunity to grandstand about how wonderful uh, he is and what a supportive person he is. But as soon as the conversation was like, oh, you know, sometimes Nicole is selfish or sometimes Nicole would struggle with like being in charge uh, of like or like being you know, like, oh, I'm right. And like, I'm going to like, not let this go. Then now all of a sudden we have a problem with that. And like, how dare she have emotions? And if she does that, I'm keeping an eye out for it. And I'm not going to stand for it. Like, okay, so you have an issue with control. Like, that's what the problem is. You have an issue with not being able to control other people's emotions to make the situation feel most uplifting and empowering for you. That's a you problem, though. Like, that's not a Nicole problem. The truth is that being in relationships will mean that we are sometimes present for our partner's worst moments and emotional outbursts. And it's not that we should normalize being treated poorly or your partner being a jerk to you, right? That's not appropriate. It's never okay for someone to weaponize their emotions or their trauma activations to heap abuse or, or shitty behavior on you and just be free of consequences. But to pretend like partnership is like, just immune from <laughs> hurting each other like other relationships is like so disingenuous and not helpful like it's not helpful um 
do 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 i've never played bingo i saw yeah that you guys are enjoying the show more without bingo and like same <laughs> i'm glad we're on the same page because it's been nice to not have to worry about it honestly we're just chit chatting i feel like we're talking about the show a lot more too which has been nice mm-hmm. michelle yes feels like someone is not emotionally secure especially because like it is an act of emotional maturity and emotional intelligence to be able to see that like my partner right now is activated, right? My partner is experiencing emotions that are overwhelming for them. And that means that some of that emotional blowback is coming out at me, right? Um, being able to recognize that and then to set our own boundaries around that and to say like, you know, the way that you're talking to me is hurting my feelings. So we're going to take a break or like the way that you have behaved towards me doesn't feel safe. So, you know, I'm not putting up with that or we're taking a, a few minutes to regulate or whatever is so very much an act of emotional maturity and intelligence and like a thing that not all people possess, right? But when you have those skills, then your partner being a person is not quite so threatening. And it's also not something that you would feel the need to set these like, oh, well, I'm leaving. I'm not going to be in a relationship with you if you're that way. These kinds of like ultimatum type statements about, you know? I used to be a stickler about not hurting anyone around me ever. And honestly, it just made things worse. <laughs> I'm still working on it, but being human is okay. Okay. Uh, very much so. Yes, actually, is your username, <laughs> which is really funny. Um, but there is a lot of discourse about this, actually, in regards to, like, the the fixation with being, like, a good person and how that actually kind of makes you a bad person <laughs> sometimes. Um, or it can cause you to, to fixate on stuff that's not good for you. Bye, Eva. I hope you sleep well. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, yeah, this fixation with like needing to be a good person all the time is not helpful. And it can also cause us to do this thing where we're being not genuine or where we're like trying to covertly manipulate the people around us because we need everyone to perceive us as this good person. The truth is that we all possess parts of ourselves that are, you know, good and worthy and uh, valuable and also parts of us that are hurtful and parts of us that are toxic, parts of us that are wounded. All of those things exist simultaneously and freeing yourself from this expectation of being like a good person all the time means that you can show up so much more authentically in your relationships. You can be more honest. You're also much more receptive to feedback, right? Being told that you fucked something up or you made a mistake or that you hurt someone doesn't activate an immediate shame for you. It just comes in as part of this regular discourse that you are already comfortable with, which is that sometimes I'm, you know, my best self. Sometimes I'm a flawed person who hurts other people. Um, both of those things can coexist in me being a good person who is still worthy of love and belonging. Could source some scratch and sniff glow in the dark stickers. You guys want scratch and sniff glow in the dark stickers now? What are they meant to smell like, Mark? <laughs> Um, I'm straight up willing to pay for them. Wait, willing to pay for what? The, I just really wanted those stickers. <laughs> um, listen, I am planning on putting the stickers up in the sticker shop eventually. I just haven't gotten around to it. Okay, maybe we'll do that while we're taking a break from bingo so that you guys can just buy the stickers. <laughs> yes. It's so funny that your username is yes, because I'm like, yes, yes. <laughs> I like to be a trying my best person. Absolutely. I feel like that's a much healthier perspective. Again, because it frees you from that feeling of of expectation, you know? Hellfire, yeah, I relate to that. I love to win things. <laughs> Winning things is so fun for me. Smells like chicken nuggets, banana pancakes. Actually, that would smell delightful. <laughs> Facts, get out of here. Okay, chocolate chip pancakes is also a vibe. All right, fair enough. What do snails, snails smell like? Yeah, not good if I had to guess. Okay, um, let's keep going. 31 minutes and 46 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Oh my God, that music was so aggressive. Jesus. Mm, how are you feeling? I'm feeling a little exhausted and hot and hungry. So you're tired? Yeah, a little bit. I need to take a break. I'm good. What about you? I'm good. Are you still going to go work out? Yeah. Even after riding the ATVs? Yeah. I'll catch you in there another day, another you time. You can come with me if you want. Mm -mm. Why not? We have plenty of time to work out. We're in Jamaica. Right. And we got body got to look good. When we get back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just hoping Ew. I don't have a, an additional 10 pounds going back with me. Oh, girl. It look good on you, though. Mm-mm. I don't think that's something you have to worry about. I want you to know I'm attracted to you. Yeah. Like, I still get butterflies. 
Like, well, it's been five like minutes, that, so. For that first time. I still feel that st that same, like, I'm glad you butterflies in my stomach when I first saw you. Like, So what about now when I wake up in the morning next to you? No makeup. I think that's hair my, I think that's my, a little bit. I think that's what I like you the most. You're definitely growing on me. Growing? I know. What? <laughs> most women say this about their husbands, so. What? You weren't attracted to me at first? At first, I wasn't really attracted to, you, your, to your bald head. Yeah. But once I, you know, continue to spend time with you, I definitely feel a little bit more attracted to you. Honestly, I did feel awkward in a sense when she said that she wasn't initially attracted to me. I mean, fair. But I think the physical attraction grows, and she's finding things in me that she really likes, and she really embraced, you know, my bald head, you know? Like, she always, like, placing her hand on my head, like, rubbing over my head, so I think she liked the bald head. Are you ever afraid to kiss me sometimes? I know you think that I'm beautiful. And I know we kind of talked about intimacy a little okay, bit. This is a good I told you I'm not really actually. a good kisser and I don't really kiss much. Like, how do you feel about that? I'm patient. Like, it's, it's taking a little time with you. Yeah, it's just taking me a little bit of time. Like, like you? more time. I'm glad you're being patient with me, though, because it is, like, the timing for me, too. I mean, because it'll help with, like, the connection and the chemistry. Like, I know you kiss me the, on my forehead, forehead sometimes, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like when even, you kiss me on my forehead. Even I think that's sweet. Does it make you feel less connected to me? Sometimes I feel like it's a push-off. Yeah. Like, I feel like you trying to, it's a guard up that you're trying to, like, no, I don't want to cross that boundary yet. It's, it's not Shaquille, it's, it's definitely me. Like, I can be very affectionate, but I've never been big on kissing. But we're, we're working on all of that. It, it takes some baby steps with me sometimes, so. It sounds we're like a sensory steps. issue. We have our intimate moment. Yeah. So holding hands, that's intimate for me. Yeah, it's physical touch. It's yeah, real. physical touch. So I love I think that. We both I like I think I like physical touch more than kissing, honestly. Really? Yeah. Like even now, I'm on you. Yeah, like <laughs> every time we're together, it's kinda like we have to touch. It's a sense of security. It is. Like it to is. make sure like I got you. And I love that feeling. Yeah. I love feeling secure. So I've learned. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I know what I gotta do. Mm-hmm. That's right. Look at me now. I mean, listen, I don't hate this conversation. I do think they're probably gonna run into issues eventually because I can feel it. Um, but I do think this is a good conversation as far as examples go, um, that like normalizing what me, high body or them, cause I do do that a lot. Um, but normalizing that certain parts of physical intimacy are just not for you, you know, um, is very helpful. What? Do I feel it in my fingers? What? What are y'all talking about? I'm so confused. <laughs> Anyways, um, but having a conversation where you can be uh, upfront that like you said, you oh, 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 I can feel it. Okay, got it. Um, Anyways, that certain types of physical intimacy are just not for you, I think is really helpful. And especially in honoring like people's sensory issues and stuff, you know, I've talked about this before on the channel in a ADHD video, I think um, that like kissing with tongue grosses me out. It's a sensory issue. It's just not something that I enjoy. Um, and people can be really judgmental of themselves for like whatever their sensory issues are regarding physical contact and intimacy and things like that. Um, and it's just important that we platform having conversations about it in a way that's like upfront and honest and like non-judgmental, you know? Um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Uh, no, I meant the show. Your move has never bothered me. Okay, good. I'm glad I'm not giving you motion sickness. Um, Bianca Boop, I'm so glad. I know I wish people that, or I wish that people would talk about it more because it really is like a thing, you know? Um, yes, exactly, Mark. Judgment comes from trying to cram a normal thing into a fucked up societal construct. Absolutely. Because it is very normal for people to have differing opinions about different types of physical intimacy, you know? If something doesn't do it for you, then like, it doesn't have to do it for you and you and your partner can have conversations about ways that y'all can feel connected and seen and valued and close without having to force somebody to do stuff that is just not for them you know i'm not saying that that's her issue specifically to be clear we don't know what her stuff is um but just for the sake of having the conversation generally i think it's important to just give yourselves the space to like you know not push yourself into stuff that you don't like bye olivia thanks for coming um i just get way too get distracted way too easily and I start thinking about random shit. <laughs> okay, socks. That's also such a thing, especially for me with like terrible ADHD. Um, I lose track of my thoughts all the time and I just will get distracted and like out of the moment so easily. 
Um, yeah, Natalie, don't worry. You can always take your space, even if there aren't people actively modding, you're good. Um, <laughs> do, do, do. Okay, let's keep going. Um, oh my god, Samantha, I don't know what I was expecting when I looked at Discord chat, but it wasn't that. <laughs> Bye, Natalie. Uh, I'm assuming you're still going to be here, but just like in the background, like you said. So uh, we'll like talk to you later, I guess. Okay, 3537. Pressing play in three, two, one. Oops, it's muted. Sorry. Oops. <laughs> to uh, to the struggles and adventures. <laughs> yeah. So this Clint is, is like, really um, acting extreme glamping. What we're doing. Clint is really acting like he has survived a trauma. Like, sir, you were not a victim of Firefest. You weren't stranded anywhere. And also for somebody who yams on and on and on and on about how much he loves adventure and how he could never be married to someone who doesn't love adventure. And he's so adventurous. Uh, a slightly longer than planned car ride. Absolutely unnerved this man. And he is just... And so, you know what this reminds me of? You know what this reminds me of in that really, like, it's a shitty movie, to be fair, but it was on the TV all the time when I was in high school. Um, couples Retreat or Couples Resort or whatever. Um, when Vince Vaughn's character <laughs> scrapes his leg getting in the boat and he says that he's been the victim of a shark attack. Like, literally, that's Clint right now. <laughs> literally, that's Clint just being like... We've been like just completely <laughs> victimized by these trials and tribulations today. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? What is going on? Gemma Bell, I know. As soon as I said that, I was like, somebody's going to say it. <laughs> somebody's going to say it. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Clint does probably have an ego with issue for sure. I feel like Clint would be eating it up if he was the one who was driving the bus, but because somebody else was driving him around, we don't like it. Clint's being victimized now. <laughs> oh, he's so frustrating to me. <laughs> um, ooh, what is going on? <laughs> Discord chat. Oh my God. Okay, it is kind of giving Clint from Stardew Valley a little bit. <laughs> Okay, we're going to keep going. 35 minutes, 52 seconds, pressing play in three, two, one. We're currently not eating food in a posh hotel room. You thought I was going to be high maintenance, didn't you? I didn't say high maintenance, just... Maybe a little bit? Well, you never know. It was the, um... Okay, Mark. It was the litmus noted. test. Okay. I did leave y'all I think for me, I definitely know that I need someone that's, like, patient and just someone that's supportive. Like, my life right now is, it's stressful. Sure. Yep. I'm not needy. Like, I've never been a needy person. I've always been pretty independent. So yeah. having someone that can, like, handle the independence and actually, like, appreciate it rather than see it as a, a negative. Well, I mean, have you ever had somebody that was also a contributor? No. Hi, <laughs> Pumpkin. I haven't really been in a relationship since I started my business. But before, it's almost like I would feel almost bad. It's like I was almost doing too much or, like, this person felt inferior because I was, like, going after dreams and it was like bringing out their insecurities and yeah life. so i mean what these these guys just sit on the sidelines and they're like yeah man my girl's super successful and she's crushing it well, and i'm just crushing really... some beer cans pretty much yeah. yeah pretty much yeah my picker's been off i guess <laughs> i would say that i definitely have admiration for clint i don't know if we're quite there yet on like a physical level but i'm actually really thankful that we're taking the time to talk through um, what we desire oh in a person first before we're getting into the physical part of it. It's, it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time. And really, we just have no idea what's about to happen. No, no idea. <laughs> no idea. <Abby. laughs> okay, 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 okay. Enough with the music. <laughs> okay, Jasmine and Aris. Aris, excuse. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Wow, that looks delicious. Yum. Thank you, Thank sir. You. <laughs> I'm about to feed me some of that. A little bite. I can't. Reach, reach, come on, reach. <laughs> you want to? You going to eat the whole thing? <laughs> the lobster tail good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. So, what else do you want to know about me? Um, I'm sure there's a lot. What's your favorite sexual position? Oh my gosh! 
Yes. I, I believe the bit. I'm not. We'll, we'll tone it down a little bit. <laughs> um, so what's your no. favorite color? Lavender. Lavender. Did you know that women whose favorite color is lavender, their favorite sexual position <laughs> is downward facing dog? <laughs> it's a yoga position, but it all trans it's also translates into sex. It is. <laughs> I cannot. And that's a little known fact. Is that really a known I hate this man. Literally, what the fuck is this in front of my salad? Truly, what the fuck? River Woman, it's the ADHD. I am so irritated and annoyed. The fact that she rebuffed him and communicated really clearly, like, no, we're not going there. And then he was like, okay, I'll ask you a slightly different question, purely for the purpose of redirecting the conversation to a topic that she so clearly indicated that she was not comfortable discussing. A, completely fucking inappropriate and like unfair to push somebody's boundaries, but B, not funny, not interesting. And also, can we talk about the fact that this man... Basically, what he's trying to say is like, oh, I think that we should do X, Y, or Z and use this opportunity to try to pressure her into being okay with that. Like he assigned a favorite to her basically for the purpose of saying like, oh, well, this is something that I like or something that I'm interested in. And so also <laughs> betraying the fact that this whole conversation is designed to be about him trying to coerce her into doing the things that he wants to do. This question of like, what's your favorite sexual position wasn't even about her to begin with because he used the first opportunity that he had to try to push his preferences onto her. Fucking ew. Oh, it, besides the fact that it's gross and it's a, a blatant push on someone's boundaries, it's also childish and embarrassing. Like, this is sad. This is so sad and embarrassing and fucking weird. This is also, I think, an eye-opening moment in regards to his past relationships, right? I don't think that this man understands or is comfortable with emotional intimacy. I don't think he has any experience with having an emotionally intimate or deep conversation with someone. And so we default to this hypersexual place that also seems to be like loaded with jokes a lot of time. Bye, Raspberry. Thank you for coming. Thanks for the fun time. Thanks for coming. Um, yeah, this attitude that he has is like, it's more like an affect. This affect of his is really off-putting. And again, I think just betrays a lack of emotional maturity and like readiness for what is actually like a, a really trying and emotionally intense experience for a lot of people. <laughs> Mark, now the lavender fields are ruined. Uh, Eris, yeah, his name is spelled A-I-R-I-S-S, -S, I believe. Yeah, just uh, divorce, babes. Oh, yuck. Okay, let's keep going. 39 minutes and 16 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Okay, yeah. did you make it up right now? It's a known fact. I'm not saying it's true, but from my years I'm not years saying of it's research, true, but it's a known fact. Years and years of research. It's one of the things that I remember. I cannot with you right now. <laughs> you know, my wife, she was a little bit more reserved, but I feel like she got a demon side, and I got to kind of, like, pull that demon side out of her, you know what I mean? And that's going to be fun, you know, like, like a... I've never been, like, a sex mentor, but, you know, I can show her the way, so I'll just add that on my resume. You know, software engineer, sex mentor. I hate this. I thought that this couldn't get any worse. Literally, what the fuck is that? Ooh. The mark literally jinx. <sighs> Again, all the things that I just said still stand, but also this... Yes, Arya, him p placing himself in this position of power over her is so gross because also what this seems to be conveying is that my wife hasn't been hypersexual with me up to this point. So clearly there's something wrong with her. She is damaged goods and I will be the one to fix her. Ew, 
the fact that this man has no concept that the the lack of physical or sexual intimacy between the two of them might have something to do with a lack of emotional closeness, with a lack of intimacy, with a lack of safety, with a lack of familiarity, with a lack of open and clear communication and discussion of boundaries and likes and dislikes and preferences is so fucking revealing about the way that this man proceeds and, and perceives relationships. This is so off-putting because, again, the perspective here really seems to be that unless you are a hypersexual person from the jump, there is something wrong with you, but you're welcome that I am so kind as to not divorce you and then also teach you how to please me because it's all about what I want, what I need, what I think is appropriate. Never mind the fact that he has absolutely not one time expressed any interest in being curious, uh, interested, like respectful, caring about her wants, needs, interests, emotions, thoughts, feelings, values, beliefs around sex. It's mind blowing. The selfishness and, and the level of conceited that this man is actually boggles my little mind my silly gay genderless little mind it can't wrap itself around the amount of cishet fucking audacity that's inside of this little man it oh oh it irritates me oh it makes me so mad uh, oh. <laughs> literally so, too much gender and <laughs> Not enough gender. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> oy. <laughs> Mark. Oh, it makes me so mad. Do you guys ever think about how different your life would look if you had the confidence of a cishet man? Like a mediocre cishet man? <laughs> because I do. I do all the time. Ooh, it, facts, it's both. It's this head audacity and also misogyny. That's all been whipped up into a fucked up little cocktail that that resulted in this, this, this. <laughs> Woo. That's a divorce, babe, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Mark. Okay, but that doesn't count, though, because you don't have a blind and and disgusting audacity mark you're a normal person that's why i think snot knew it would be unstoppable (laughs) audacity probably you're probably right it we would explode oh literally okay beth excellent question what redeemable qualities could possibly fucking offset this egregious level (laughs) of out of touchness I can't think of one. I can't think of any. Nothing is coming to mind. <laughs> Mark. <sighs> Sorry, Mark. I think you're better than normal, to be clear. But I just mean that you're not. I don't think you're stricken with the same disease that most <laughs> cis men are. Oh, my God. Yeah. I just... I hope that this that this is the thing that especially gets me is that I know for a fact that Eris does not appreciate how beyond astronomically lucky he is to have just been through happenstance and and through sheer uh, luck been partnered with a woman who is not out here knocking his dick in the dirt for being such an idiot like he's so lucky that his partner is not more vocal because because anyone else that was more vocal than jasmine (laughs) would have absolutely clowned all over this man and he's so lucky that he got partnered with someone who didn't absolutely eviscerate him on camera in front of god and the whole world like (laughs) facts we're not sacrificing the night bot the night bot does nice things for us yeah the 4b movement is looking pretty smart right now uh 
yeah, the Nightbot does nice things <laughs> for the channel, Fax. <laughs> no, uh, I buy. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you, Jade. Exactly. Okay. Um, let's just keep going. 39 minutes and 54 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Hell of a resume to me. So like, why don't you want to talk about sex? Why is it so like taboo? We're both adults, we're both grown. It's really not that it's taboo. It's just, I'm just a little more modest when it comes to that. And I just, I'm not the best at expressing the things that I like and that I want in that aspect. So I just don't really like to talk about it. It's giving lady vibes. Lady, I it's am giving, a lady. It's giving class. We needed to give horror. <laughs> oh my god. How does it keep getting worse? We're never gonna make it through this section. We're never gonna make it through this section. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about a couple of things. First and foremost, this is so obviously and transparently. Uh, fucking Madonna whore complex if I've ever seen one but besides that fact she has so clearly indicated to him that like she's what she described it as more modest to me it sounds like this is just not a thing she's comfortable discussing openly probably on camera I would guess also and so he said great the solution to this is push the issue push it push it push the issue no, it's not, actually. That's not at all how people are made to feel comfortable and safe in relationships. Like, there are 3,000 other questions that we could have asked in response to her saying this that would have been useful, interesting, valuable, thought-provoking in regards to this conversation. But instead, we went with this. Let's also just be clear about the fact that someone not being comfortable discussing sex has nothing to do with them being classy, with them being a lady. This is literally just misogyny, right? That like you are classy and therefore more worthy of respect and not going to be subjected to my blatant abuse uh, and ridicule and shaming because I, through my misogynistic lens, perceive you to be more valuable because you are not vocal or interested in sex question mark but also i want you to be vocal and interested in sex because i want to have sex not with you specifically but just you know with anything that's willing to stand still long enough and so therefore you need to be more sexual but also i'm going to shame you and tell you that you're uh, a lady when you don't talk about sex literally pick a side <laughs> literally pick a side Ugh, but also don't right like <laughs> Don't pick either of those sides because both of those are fucking terrible. Yes. Hi, bye. Exactly. I just, oh my God. I know. We are, <laughs> we are all entitled to financial compensation for having been subjected to this conversation, but Jasmine is entitled to three times as much as the rest of us for having lived through it. Okay. 40 minutes and 32 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> what? I definitely enjoy sex. I just need someone to help me enjoy more. <laughs> like my husband, since we're married. <laughs> I'm on demand. I'm at your service. OK. <laughs> I don't like that at all. Also, listen, I don't want to speak for Jasmine because that's her experience and we can't know necessarily. But I do also want to draw attention to the fact that, like, I'm sure this always happens. People are going to be in my comments on the replay of this saying, well, she was laughing and so therefore it's fine. No, no, it's not. Because you know what a lot of people who have been mis subjected to misogyny for their entire lives have learned how to do in order to diffuse tension and in order to try to preserve a feeling of safety in moments where our boundaries are clearly being violated and where we're being judged and pressured into discussions with things or about things that we're not comfortable with, we laugh. We learn how to do the polite laugh and the little smile and the <laughs> so that we won't get hate crimed. It's a thing that a lot of people who have been subjected to misogyny do, and I'm not fucking interested in entertaining the conversation about how if you laugh or smile or don't 
basically say, go away from me and pepper spray someone that therefore you deserve to be harassed and subjected to having your boundaries violated and having yourself coerced into a conversation that makes you uncomfortable or feel unsafe. That's not fucking how it works. And it irritates the fuck out of me on all of these shows. Every time we fucking encounter a situation like this, there's always people in my fucking comments who are like, you hate men because she was laughing. So clearly she enjoyed it. No wrong that's not fucking how it works and it's so like besides the fact that this is like a well understood phenomenon for a lot of people who have survived marginalization in some capacity it's also not up to you right like you don't get to decide as a random bystander on the internet whether or not people are are deserving of being subjected to having their boundaries and wants and needs completely violated and and disregarded and and subjected to abuse then like how about no that fucking sucks. And also, if you think that that's true, you also suck. <laughs> You're a person who says if somebody laughs when someone's harassing you that you deserve to be harassed, you should take a deep look, deep, deep look inward about your understanding and concept about boundaries and consent. Because like something's not mathing, like the math's not mathing there. Fucking yuck. Ew. It irritates the shit out of me. Listen, whatever. I know. And then Mickey went on another rant. Whatever. We're not playing bingo this week. Okay. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's just my personality. Misogynist when they're confronted, literally. Ugh, exactly, Litterbox Hero. As if these people have never awkward or uncomfortable laughed before either. Like, no, you're right. It only applies to you. When other people do it, definitely they deserve it though. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Facts. I'm glad that my anger soothes you to sleep. <laughs> uh Yes, Gemma Bell. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you do uh, say get the fuck away from me, then you didn't fight hard enough. Yeah, Lou. Um, and then if you do do that, then you're potentially rolling the dice about being uh, assaulted, endangered, physically, emotionally, verbally harmed, literally killed. It's terrifying. It's terrifying and it's a thing that no one should have to make the choice about, but a lot of people do. And so they choose to do the thing where we pacify the people who are subjecting us to abuse. Ew. Okay. Anyways, 40 minutes and 54 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Today's going to be <laughs> but weather's great. What else we got? Um, can we bring your boogers on? Not only thank you for the gifted membership. That was excellent timing. Facts, you got a membership. <laughs> it's you, dog. <laughs> you won the gift. <laughs> you can't escape us now. You're welcome. Welcome to the green party. <laughs> All right, 4107, pressing play in three, two, one. What you looking forward to today? Eating. What'd you get for breakfast? I got pancakes and bacon. Yeah. You got bacon again, bro? What them little pigs do to you? <laughs> They're on, on the vacation. Oh my God. Hello? The adventure That's like continues. The bake we made it through breakfast food. a mountainous thunderstorm, through a hike, got lost for several hours. And if that wasn't enough, now our batteries on the TV remote don't work. We got no juice. Puppy is still resting, as he should be, because it will take me about an hour to go through all of my bathing suits and make a choice. We are running late on it soon. Fair enough. Let's get it on count of three. Who's going count? <laughs> Four. Two. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if Aaron and I tried to do that, we both just sit there and lay around and do nothing. <laughs> okay, Gina and Clint. Ready to watch Clint be victimized some more. Got a lovely beachside oh. bed cabana experience. My tattoo was so itchy. Though. Yeah. Take a take a seat, me lady. Take a load off. Take a load off. Take the sunnies off. Her bikini yeah. is so. Cute. I think I can live in the Caribbean. What do you think, Jamaica? Second home. Second location for the salon. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Hello. Oh hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good afternoon. Sober. Sober. That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> no, I'm gonna change it later. Though. Oh, good. Okay. Good. All right. So my name is Odin. I'm gonna be your butler for the day. Okay. I'm here to get you guys drunk. I mean, drinks, lunch, <laughs> everything. Okay. All right. Amazing. We like that. Ladies first. Something um, colorful. I'm a pina colada man. A pina colada with extra sauce. Extra sauce. Hit him with the sauce. Fun, ready? All right. Booyaka. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. More sauce. So um. Hi, punk. We're the second episode. What a nice vacation. This is turning just like 40 this minutes. has exceeded expectations. Twenty of just minutes. Good yeah. lounge time. Good exploration yeah. time, not only just 
around the island, but a little bit, you know, into into you and me. Yeah, for sure. So like we click, right? Just back and forth. It's been good. Yeah. Um, but at the end well, of the this day, this is our second like, episode, y'all. I know. I don't know how you're feeling. I'm not feeling like this overwhelming physical like chemistry for sure. Um, I don't want to force anything. Yeah. So I don't know. Oh, how do boy. you feel on that? Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, the experts match us up for a reason, and so we'll see what happens. We might go through something, and then all of a sudden, it changes our perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like physical attraction is definitely something that is unexplainable. I don't think it happens overnight, but I've been in a relationship for before where it wasn't like... The oh, hold on. Can we just talk about his chest hair tan line? Or his... his ch I can't tell if he has just like spotty chest hair. I know I am the bean. Now that someone pointed it out, I think it was gems. Now that Jen, <laughs> it, it kind of looks like it's shaved, but like he just shaves it in a little circle. Allie, it was you. Okay, like <laughs> I just and like whatever, it's fine, right? Like shave your chest hair, don't shave your chest hair, but it's the like circular shape of it. Yeah, it does. It matches his tank top perfectly. <laughs> it's just so odd. Because if you're uncomfortable with your chest hair, then why not just shave all of it? Or like, I don't know, just like trim it, you know? I don't know. I, like, <laughs> the shape of it when he's not wearing a shirt is so odd. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But also, like, okay, so, I mean, clearly you know that you're going to go to a place where you're wearing a swimsuit, though. I would just be like, I have chest hair. Lots of people have body hair. Who cares? You know? <laughs> yeah. It does. I think that's the thing that gets me is it does kind of look like a shirt or, like, a hair tank top. The shape of it, <laughs> it is grocery bag shaped. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Samantha, lots of people don't get chest hair in this area because there's like rubbing of your arms, so it's common for the hair to not really grow there. So that's probably not shaved. It's just the neckline probably, but <laughs> <laughs> he wears the tank top while he shaves. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's just keep going. 43 minutes and 58 <laughs> seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. Yeah, I feel the same way. I mean, the experts match us up for a reason. And so. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. We'll see yeah. what happens. We might <laughs> go through layout. something and all of a sudden it changes our perspective, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like physical attraction is definitely something that is unexplainable. I don't think it happens overnight, but I've been in a relationship for before where it wasn't like the first initial thing that hit me. And I, I think it can grow over time just with spending more time together, like how someone treats you, like you watching them okay. in your day-to-day -day life and being inspired by them or someone this making you laugh nice or you like, I don't you know, enjoying this. their personality. I think those things can bring physical attraction. I've seen it grow in previous relationships. Bye, Katie. So Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah. For her to verbalize that so early in a relationship, I'm disappointed. But we're married, so I mean, we're, we're committed to this and we're going to do whatever it takes to try to make it work. We do get along really well, and that's unmistakable. Sorry, disappointed about what? She just voiced. <laughs> she just voiced that she is not super attracted to him, but she does believe that it's possible for that to grow over time. Like, generally speaking, as far as the like, I'm not attracted to you conversation goes, this is like best case scenario. I just don't, uh, yes, yeah, G, G. Ray said I really like the concept of being inspired by your partner, that's really sweet, and I think that's true. I think it's true that it's entirely possible for attraction to grow and change over time, especially because the relationship, or the nature of relationships is that they're not static, right? They're constantly changing and evolving, and that our interests or availability, for those of us who have an interest in sex, um, our interest and availability for that will wax and wane over time, you know, like, that's, I don't know. Yeah, his ego is hurt, but this is like so very much a him problem. 
Uh, I think it's legit to have immediate sexual attractions to some people and to have a demisexual attraction to others. Yeah, absolutely, Coda. Especially because people put sex in this box where, like, it either is this one thing or it's not. And that's not true. The types of sexual attractions and intimacies that folks can experience is vast and complex and is dependent, in my opinion, um, on context, on the situation, on our, again, emotional and uh, mental availability, right? Like, for some people... Uh, it's entirely possible to be in a relationship that is very sexually driven uh, with a high amount of sexual chemistry with very low emotional intimacy or safety or vulnerability, right? And like, generally speaking, I would say that's not a super healthy dynamic for us to be in long term. Um, but for some folks, that sense of safety and security and vulnerability and emotional intimacy is going to be really high and the sex uh drive or attraction might just be lower and that's fine right it's possible to have both of those things exist at the same time like th yes fabian thank you it's a spectrum that's very normal we should just really integrate that into our understanding about sex and relationships generally as a culture because it's that really should not be like a hot take this is such a soft male ego issue okay forty-five, eleven. pressing play in three two one and undeniable i agree um, I'm in this for the long haul. Um, I think the one thing, it's interesting, the one thing that I was like, just I don't really vibe with redheads or like gingery features. Mm -hmm. And not to say you're unattractive, it's just that's what you are. And so I was like, okay, he's a gin, like gingery, like not my typical, just like. It's hard. Okay, you're clearly wounded by that. Wait, that was the whole conversation? That's it? This show irritates me. <laughs> okay, Dominique yeah, McKinley now, I guess. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that was so nice. This is so pretty. The way that I would never wear heels, I mean ever, but especially on cobblestones, this I've so learned nice. my lesson. This is nice. I set this all up myself. I built the table, I put the candles. Oh, you built the table. Yeah, I even waxed the candles. Yeah. Okay, um, what'd you think of today? Selling was great. I thought it was amazing. I was so proud of you because I know that you were a little apprehensive at first. I was. This, these are things I want to do. I just need to have that extra push sometimes. I know that you joke about like, I'm like I'm not doing that, but then right. you end up doing it. I know, sometimes I, I joke about it, but I want you to push me as much as I can take. I do want to go DC fishing, or fishing in general with mm -hmm. you. I know that's big. Am I going to have okay. to bait your hook? No, I'm a, I'm a fisherman, I'm a sailman, I'm a fish. I'm just a natural Are you? ocean sea guy. I'm just Are you a fisherman? Being, I'm being coy about it, and I, I'm trying to surprise you. With so it. I don't have to bait your hook. We'll see. <laughs> I can probably do it. Ooh. I, oh, oh my goodness. Okay, the seafood yes. looks yes. sick. Looks delicious. Thank you, sir. Wow. This looks good. It looks Damn. So Look at that. I want seafood. That looks delicious. Okay, 4731, pressing plate in three, two, one. Good. I actually put the candles together too. So, so you made the candles, you made the table. I caught and the lobster. Oh, and, and the chef? Yes, mm -hmm. and I let the chef put it together. I was just trying to impress you. Well, it's a joke, I think. I think I'm late to the pickup line, but uh, his actions are speaking louder than words, and ultimately that is what I've asked for. Um, yeah. You've seriously been such a good match. I know I'm a lot at times, and I'm, I goof around maybe too much, but I think. That's why I am looking for someone like yourself to kind of ground me, humble me a little bit, make me go do these things out of my element that I typically wouldn't. So mm -hmm. okay. I'm thankful for that. Aww. Well, I appreciate you. I, I don't think that I, I could have asked for a better match at this point. So basically, I'm your dream, yeah. your dream guy. I or am I taking so. too much credit here? Mm. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I would say you're doing pretty good, you know, like, we'll see how things go, but I would definitely say that you're, you're on the right track. Lifetime is not satisfied unless they can put trite music every 30 seconds in the show. Okay, Nicole and Chris. Right now with you in that dress. You look amazing. Thank so, you. Let's move these candles. Give away my view of you. Oh, you're complimenting me. My head's going to explode. There we go. You can't see what I'm seeing, but... It's like, just magical. Do I have a nice little aura? I, it's really beautiful. <laughs> it's like the light is saying, this is your dream husband. I'm like, yes, thank you, light. Am I? Am I your dream so husband? So far. So far? So far. Why, well, what about me? Am I your dream wife? So far. <laughs> Do you love me yet? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> the but nose wife guy. I can see it. 
have a lovely bottle of Pinot Grigio. Yes. Yes, thank you right. so much. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. Cheers to the most beautiful wife in Jamaica. Cheers. Happy honeymoon. I really honeymoon. do not like white wine. If you brought oh, yeah. white wine on my vacation, I'd be personally so, offended. Not meaning to go too serious, but... <laughs> we love going serious. Why not jump right in? <laughs> oh, gross. But, I mean, obviously, we haven't really talked about kids and, like, what we're expecting Isn't there. That, ew. I mean, I know I'm Hi, 36, Trey. so I'm getting a little bit older. You're 32. We'll be 33 soon. So, like, what are, what are your thoughts? Like, how are you feeling about it? Honestly, I grew up never wanting kids because yeah. I always thought that I would live this big, grand life where I'm almost a nomad and I'm always traveling and always going on these adventures. And as I got older, I still didn't really want kids. And once I knew I was ready for marriage, I was kind of like, why don't I want kids? Like, what is it about kids that I'm so against? And now I'm kind of open to them, but I'm not dying to have them. How do you feel? My thoughts. Okay, listen, just, just real quick. I do want to draw some attention to this um, because I appreciate the, I don't know, perspective here. Um, I wish that people would be more introspective about this desire to have kids because people who say they don't want to have kids get interrogated and put through the ringer about like, are you sure? Is that a good idea? Don't you think that you'll regret it? Is that really how you feel? Don't you think your mind will change? And like, we don't ask any of those questions of people who have kids. And like, in my opinion, having kids is a, a really big deal. You know, I think it's something that people should think more critically about. And I'm quite honestly just really refreshed to hear somebody talk about like having thought deeply about having kids. But also, yeah, the like uh, you're getting a little bit older thing. Is she <laughs> like 32 is hardly old. Like I, it's just ugh. yes, Allie. Thank you. Don't have kids if you're ambivalent about them. Yes, exactly. Um, Being a parent is like such a, a serious and sacred calling, you know? Um, it's important that it's something that you actually want to do. Like there are so many people who have kids solely out of a feeling of obligation and then go on to regret that decision deeply and then therefore deeply resent their kids and treat them poorly. And like that sucks, you know, kids are great. Kids are wonderful and magical. Um, and again, being a parent is like a sacred calling and also being uh, a parent is something that you should be sure that you want to do, you know, because being a parent is also really, really hard. It's just not, uh, yeah. I'm curious to see what his response is to this. Okay, 50 minutes and 56 seconds. Pressing play in three, two, one. To be fully transparent, yeah. I always envision two. One boy, one girl. That's not how it works. It's one of those things that we definitely want to make sure we're on the same page about because That's like, not how we're not getting any younger, so it's one of the things we have to think about. When do you think we need to revisit this conversation? Like a year? Yeah, like a year or two. I don't think anytime soon, no. unless you get baby fever. <laughs> I'm open to kids. I'm not against them, but I'm not ready to make a decision. I mean, I am very career focused, and by the time I might be ready for kids, it might stop or halt my career at a really good point. So it's a lot to think about. I don't even know if we will have children, but but are you more so leaving it the ball in my court? No, overall, I think it's something we need to make a decision on together, you know? Chris seems to be on the same page as me, which sounds great. Does but he? I just don't know him well enough yet to know if he's just appeasing me. I do have a fear that one day he will want kids, and because yeah. we were so lax today school, we won't be able to have them. So it's something I really have to actively think about, and I'm just like, let's try, and if it happens, great. I believe if I'm meant to have kids, we're gonna have them. This was like a bingo card of all the problematic things that somebody could ever say about having kids. First of all, First of all, this, like, <laughs> there's so many things that are, I know, the experts not addressing this is really irritating to me also. I know, I know we're not doing bingo, but truly, like, the amount of things that they've said one after the other consecutively in a row is so, so fucking off-putting. The, um, if I'm meant to have kids, I'll have them thing. That's not how it works. Like, that's just straight up not how it works. And this perspective that, like, the universe will just manifest children for you if you're meant to have them. Like, that's a very nice thought. But the truth is that especially for folks uh, after a certain point in their life, if you aren't consciously making the choice to have kids, then, like, it might be difficult for you to have them. But also, too, at, at any point in life, really, if you don't want children, but you're not actively preventing children, then you're trying. You're trying to have a baby. Like if you are are having 
consensual sex between someone who can get pregnant and someone who can get other people pregnant and we are not explicitly preventing said pregnancy you're trying to have a baby that's just how it works <laughs> i don't understand the like well we're not trying we're not not trying like then you're trying then you're trying to have a baby that's how it works but also this like oh well i've always envisioned two kids one boy one girl huh <laughs> they're not fish they're not puppies like Besides the fact that you can't guarantee that you'll be able to biologically create your own children at all, you certainly cannot guarantee what their sex is or their gender identity. Like, none of that is true. And this unhealthy attachment that people have to this idea of, like, my family won't be complete without children of X, Y, and Z gender identities is so toxic. Like, that's not how it fucking works. That's not how it works. And also, if the only reason that you want to have kids is because you want this perfect little family that fits into this, like, cookie-cutter vision that you have about the way to fulfill you and to uplift your ego, go back. Back to go. Don't collect 200. Start again. That's not how it fucking works. You should be thinking a lot more deeply about what your attachment is to having kids and whether or not it has something to do with your ego and your fantasy about what a perfect family looks like rather than about a genuine desire to be a safe adult for a child. Just back. <sighs> I just... <laughs> Nuclear family has been blown up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> is my period a crime now? No, yeah, exactly. G Ray, it is very like 1950s nuclear family thing. Yeah, and the boy mom or the girl mom thing. Just, I know, Alabama's the fucking worst. Fuck all of those legislators for real. Okay, let's just keep going. 52 14, pressing play in 3, 2, 1. You looking like a mess, brother. Hey, I wanna rock your body no, thank you. No music. Oh. Ooh, our dessert. Oh, I can't really see it. I can feed it to you. What the fact it? that they have oh, glass here, cups in the pool oh, is so okay. stressful. Here, I'll show it to you. How cute. This is what I want. <laughs> Things are going great. We're building that uh, rapport, somewhat of that sexual connection. The physical attraction is great. Her boobs are awesome, and they're screaming at me, so my eyes are drawn to that, along with everything else in her gorgeous smile. Uh, clearly a boob guy, so I was all giddy. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen. I... <laughs> If I have to listen to this man talk about his wife's breasts to the camera one more time, I'm going to throw something out the window. <laughs> Just... Yes, it does sound like something that a 15-year-old boy would say. And listen, listen. I like boobs just as much as the next guy, okay? <laughs> All boobs are good boobs, okay? And also, this fixation that he has, this inability to speak about his wife without mentioning her breasts in such a childish and offensive way is so off-putting. So off-putting. <laughs> Anarchy mode, great time. <laughs> great timing. Oh, Erica, I feel that. I relate to that. <laughs> Dr. Pepper was like, I'd like to see that. Ooh, yo, yo, yo. I know. Uh, Allie, she is like such a kind and interesting and funny and beautiful person. <laughs> Emily, yes, that's exactly the energy. Look at this cool toy I got. It really is like a child. Like, Okay, Sweet Lemon Tea, yes. <laughs> Sweet Lemon Tea in Discord said boobs are great, but everything is about, but everything about his comment um, at this moment is coming from him and it's all just wrong and not okay. In this context, yes. Um, I feel like this is just such a nice PSA that like 
time and place, you know, time and place. Context really matters. And there's nothing wrong with expressing an appreciation for your partner or your partner's body or parts of their body even. Um, But like it's a time and a place thing. It's a context thing. And like if you can't read a situation, then like, A, you can just ask, right? (laughs) But B, if you're committed to just mentioning things that are off-putting at any old time of the day that you want to, like we're probably gonna run into problems. This is just not a helpful or kind way to proceed in a relationship. (sighs) Michelle, yeah, it is giving that energy. Like he's definitely the kid who spells out boobs on his calculator even now. Okay, 5314, pressing play in three, two, one. What? You said you want to bang in this pool? We can't. We're, 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 <laughs> I did they don't not allow say it. that. I will not have sex with you in this pool. <laughs> Clearly. I'm a gentleman. At this point, you're only convincing yourself that I, I said that. <laughs> I think you're funny. Well. This is what your family was talking about at the yes, wedding when they said he thinks he's funny. Insane. This is just a fact. I, I'm funny. <laughs> You hear that bird sound? <laughs> no, all the birds are like, like, oh like, like crickets. They're tripping. It's, it's, it's like the Jamaican child. version. Of I hate that. Mac thinks he's funny. But he's kind of right. funny, but please don't tell him I said that. You're the best. Listen, also for what it's worth. Um, <laughs> okay, Lou, fair. I take it back. Um, <laughs> Moonchild, that meme is something I could have lived my whole life without seeing. But second of all, Miss Mothman in Discord said, as a large Yeti person, your boobs are so big. It's not a compliment. Um, very much this. We talked about this last time. Um, but as a person who was like formerly part of the big Yiddy club, it's really insulting and off-putting and dehumanizing to have people view you as a pair of boobs. Um, and it's something that like, I feel like I can speak to now, um, because I don't anymore. And like, I was literally talking to a friend about this yesterday. I do. I feel like people see me now as a person rather than seeing me as like boobs, which is so incredibly fucking disheartening, right? Like it's just really, really sad and off-putting to realize that the world was perceiving you and viewing you as a secondary sex characteristic rather than as a person. And it sucks. It sucks and it's dehumanizing and it's just fucking gross. And people like this who center all of their attention and compliments and feedback about somebody's physical appearance on one singular secondary sex characteristic are gross and like also try harder try harder like your wife is an incredibly interesting and funny and kind and adventurous and cool person who is also beautiful and it really would it would take zero effort to think of a compliment that was meaningful and touching and emotionally intimate and kind and the best that he can come up with is is well i can't stop looking at her boobs neat Ugh. Okay. Uh, facts. I'm sorry. I'll send you small boob energy. I don't know. Maybe the universe will shrink them or something. Okay. Uh, fifty-three, fifty-two. Pressing play in three, two, one. <laughs> I think you've said that every day <laughs> since we've gotten okay, married. Well, I'm, getting, I'm getting less to handle though. I, I'm trying to do that. Maybe I'm just learning. We'll see what tomorrow holds. <laughs> Allie, yes, exactly. Should we just stay here all night? Yeah. Facts, yes, that's such a good compliment. Like, your laugh is so contagious. Because that's true, she does have such a good laugh. She's also funny and cool and, like, so many other things. Ugh. Thank you. This is nice. This is beautiful. Yeah, you look beautiful. I was about to tell you the same thing. That I look beautiful? Maybe. No, that you look handsome, honey, not beautiful. Well, not the same thing. You look beautiful. Thank you. Can we just unlearn the idea that you can't call a man beautiful or that you can't call a woman handsome? Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so reductionist and sad. Okay, anyways, pressing play in three, two, one. This definitely is starting off the tone for us. Yeah, it's, it's an opportunity to block off the world just for us and actually hone Not in on bugs, who though. we really are. We talk about, like, me in school and how I have a passion for it and the many talents that I have, mm-hmm. but it, it often leads us to just talking about me. Right. I agree. And I want to talk about you. Like, I want you to open up your heart and pour out your heart of who you really are. I don't know if it was the pandemic or what happened, but 
I just became closed off a little bit to myself. I would say like one thing that I would need from you is to continue to be like emotionally connected with me because I'm just used to being so independent. So now that I have you, I can lean on you a little bit more. Just having that emotional support would be one of the biggest things for me as well, to receive from you. I want you to be more intentional with yourself. And I always say, you got one life to live. Right. Like, we can both say we pour so much into others through our lives. I know. And I think that's where I get joy in, you know, even with my, like, mentees. Mm -hmm. If I can impact one, like, when I seen that you've grown, you've matured, you, you become this person that you never imagined you being, that brings me so much joy. And I, I think the same for you. Like, how can I, you know, as your husband, be there to support you? The only thing I need is just, like, for you to just naturally talk to me versus presenting your thoughts. And at some points, I feel like you're just talking, like, at me more so. Yeah. It's fun. Like, it'll come natural the more we continue to talk to each other. It won't, actually. And maybe I have started off with like listening to responding because I want the answer to be like perfect. Why would you think that way? Oh, that was the overthinker in me, but it's okay. Like I think it's yeah, like neither one of us are perfect. Yeah. Like, I don't know. You don't have to try to be perfect. I don't want you to think that you have to do that. Like just relax. I do a better job. Let's toast to that. Yeah, we're at one point three. You got me. That's also why we can toast to that. To not trying to be perfect. To not trying to be perfect. And enjoying ourselves. And enjoying ourselves. Cheers. Cheers. I just wanna get to know Okay, music is over. Or the weird oh. background noise is over. Just normal music now. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Are you a lefty? No. Nope. No? That's another thing I just found out. I didn't know you was left-handed. I'm left-handed. You right left-handed? Yes. Everybody in my family is left-handed except my dad and my sister. Okay. My young... Sorry, what the fuck was that? What was this throw? He was left-handed. I'm left-handed. You right left-handed? Yes. Everybody in my family is left-handed. <laughs> it looks like he threw it on the ground so that she had to go pick it up. That was weird. <laughs> he said, go get it. Like a dog. That was really off-putting. <laughs> Ew. Okay, anyways. 5803, pressing play in three, two, one. Except my dad and my sister. Okay. My younger sister. She's like my pride and joy, my little baby sister. <laughs> Everything he does is awesome. What well, if she start getting more closer to me and now she got a brother in law? Huh? You'd be okay with that? She's not gonna get closer to you. <laughs> what? It's not happening. Yo, I already got your parents. Well, I mean, you know, everything always starts out good. Right. <laughs> so you wanna go over here? Go for a yeah. walk? I mean, I wanted to hike, but you know, this terrain I guess is the closest this option. This is the we closest got. thing to, to hiking we can get. Yeah. Ask the producers. I'm sure this they can is organize This a something. great way to start a honeymoon. <laughs> like, still in shock. All of this is, like, crazy. Like, just thinking of, you would have told me this would happen. Like, a year from now, you're going to be married on a honeymoon in Jamaica. In Jamaica. It wouldn't even have made no sense. They all this happened with this huge change in a year, like, a year's time. Like, yeah. drastically. Like, you weren't even living here. I wasn't even living here. You was in a whole other relationship. relationship. Yeah. So, I think, I definitely think the stars have kind of aligned for us, like, just to fit into each other's lives perfectly. In a way. When's the last time you've been in love? You were you were in love. Yes, yeah. I would definitely say in my last relationship, I was in love. Yeah. So recent. Yeah. Hi, love Rachel. So I never been, I've never been in love. Thanks for coming like, to never the been live. Woman. Never been in love with a woman. Okay. I've had love like just from, you know, if I'm around you for a year or two years, I'm gonna love you. Like I wouldn't want nothing bad to happen to you. I would help you out in like an emergency. Like I love, I love. I've never been like in love. Like head over heels, blinders on, only thinking about this one person. Googly eyes, yeah, that ain't never happened. Why is his shirt? I bet his shirt has a brand on it or something. It's on backwards. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Or inside out. <laughs> okay. I'm processing right now. Um, I guess just knowing that he's been in like a year and a half relationship, like there's no way I can stay in a relationship that long if, if I'm not in love. So does he like just going through the motion just because he feels like it's the right thing to do? If my way of giving love isn't enough for him, then he could possibly not fall in love with me either. And that's scary. I don't think I've ever... Met someone who's never been in love? Yeah. I guess I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. And... Discovery, what the fuck? I don't know. Like, that's weird for me. Like, but it, it, it definitely gives me a sort of pressure. Like, you, Good pressure. You're 39 and you've never been in love and we're married and we have this short 
time frame to figure out if we want to stay together or not. So like, do you have to be in love at the end of this to say yes? Yeah, him being 39 Dude, he might not makes be this love much more of a red flag. I know, yeah. but do you have to be in love to say yes? Well, I don't know the answer to that. <gasps> Does he I've know the answer to love, anything? You don't expect to fall in the It pretty week. hard to fall in love, yeah. I'm not um, saying that it's, it's impossible, I'm just saying, like, you never know. Well. Next time on Married at First Sight. Thank you for understanding me. Our newlyweds will finally come together as a group to share their experiences so far with oh the other boy. couples. Like, our biggest struggle has been physical chemistry. Yeah, but I mean, the girls that I have dated are very athletic, slender. I mean, that's just the mold that I'm attracted to. OK. I don't feel awkward. I don't feel like there's anything I can do to make it less awkward. I don't know if I'm doing right or if I'm doing wrong. It's like, damn. Don't complain. I'm like a no kind of person. I don't want excuses. I want results. I didn't even say Athletic slender is, enough. You did say slender. That's not what had happened. Well, if you feel like you've said nothing wrong, I think it's best for us to just spend some time apart. I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You should be done. Have a good day. What an unfortunate turn of events. Yeah, OK. With his, Look at this man. Look, <laughs> look at the audacity oozing out of this fucking man with his tourist t-shirt being like, you're just so lucky to be with me. A high value man with my hair tank top. <laughs> I couldn't be serious. Be fucking for real. <laughs> Next time on Dragon Ball Z. <sighs> literally, Christine, that's the thing that blows me away is that like we literally heard it on camera. What are you talking about? Just ugh, whatever. Um, okay, we're gonna unpack all of that next time. But yeah. A high value man is an urban legend. Yeah. Because <laughs> no one who would actually call themselves a high value man is actually a high value man. I'm fucking yuck. I know, only five hours. <laughs> what a quick stream for us. Um, listen, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I am very relieved that we didn't do bingo today and i'm also really happy that y'all enjoyed it still and that uh it was still <laughs> fun for you guys because it was fun for me uh so thanks for being patient with us while we're in process and figuring stuff out we will absolutely bring bingo back at a time that makes more sense but again for now we're just gonna watch the show and hang out and i really enjoyed it today so thank you guys for hanging out with me it was very fun hattie it was I value man is my duck timbit. <laughs> Hank top. Ew, Alexandra. <laughs> yeah, facts. I agree. I think bingo should be for special occasions. It is. Bingo every week is stressful. It really is. Like for me, for the mods, for you guys. <laughs> I felt like we were just like grading all of our nervous systems raw. Mickey being the dude asking, was that good for you too? <laughs> Christine, hateful. Oh my God, that's so mean. <laughs> oh my God. You guys are so mean to me, but honestly, I don't know what I would expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on it, Natalie. I'll check it out. Um, except that if Christine is there, I'm not coming. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, it, listen, uh, Christine, I know I said it, but I didn't mean it like that. You guys are being mean to me. <laughs> you're hurting my feelings. No, not actually. You're fine. But okay. Um, I will see you guys on Wednesday. If you're in the Patreon, I will see you on Wednesday for our couple to thruple streams. If you didn't come this Wednesday, by the way, the replay is up on Vimeo. I just haven't shared the link with you yet because I got distracted. Um, so that will be up later today. But if you want to come watch with us live next Wednesday at 5 p.m. PDT, my time, uh, we're doing that. Um, but otherwise, I will see you guys uh, next Friday for more Married at First Sight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you, mods.
thank you. All of the mods are the best. Thank you, best asparagus. I think my cat is awful cute too. Um, enjoyed lurking and crocheting for this stream. Low battery lifestyle. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay, y'all. Uh, I'll see you next.